Hello, everybody, and welcome to the final day of the Dream League qualifiers. That's right. By the end of today, we're going to know everybody from every region who are going to be the teams at Dream League Season 23. And of course, we're going to figure things out here in the MENA region because we have three teams left. Enigma Galaxy and the side of Falcon. Uh, no, not Falcons. Quest. PSG Quest, who are waiting in the grand finals. And Copy Bearer. Um, now, you know, you might you might think that one of these teams is, is not quite on the same level as the other, but Name of Galaxy are working really, really hard to kind of improve on their performances, and uh, no, I'm joking, I'm joking. Of course, Capybara, nobody knows who uh, these guys are, uh, so we are expecting them to probably get beaten here, but uh, Name of Galaxy, you know, they've had a rough time of things lately. Um, they got kind of eliminated from the open qualifiers for the PGL in the first run, um, you know, by a team maybe a little bit more star-studded than this one, but still, you know... I think all the Nygma fans probably probably hoping for just a clean 2-0 here. No, 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 nothing crazy going on, right, T? Yeah, like I'm looking at the MMRs, right, of, of this team, and there's like a rank 4,000 in Europe, which is, I think, like, let's say around high 6k, maybe like 7.1. They've got some 2.6k players, which is going to be like high 7k. They've got uh, some rank like 1700s, which is you know, around you know, some 8k player. So it's like for for the stack at least it is going to be like a you know you kind of like your normal open qualifier qualifier style stack right like a mixed varied bunch of immortals i think they have one rank 800 which is going to be like 9k uh, you know hopefully they're on the core right so that they have yeah. some, some big fighting power in, in one of the positions but yeah it does look like it's going to be of course you know, very much enigma favored coming into the series um the region has suffered quite a lot i feel um, the last qualifier we had for Dream League Season 22, I was actually really excited for you know the, the future of the region, not because of the quality of the teams, but just seeing that like you know the community turning up to play the qualifiers. Because when they first got announced, it was like five teams playing. Then it bumped down to like four, and then it came up to eight. And I was like, damn, there was eight teams, and they had the open qualifier where there was like another you know three or four teams that didn't make it, of course. And now we've kind of taken two steps back where it's gone only to four teams in the closed qualifier so i really hope for this region because it obviously it's not it's not just something to disappear i really hope that we are finding more teams that can play in it because i understand that there's a top three power ranking of falcons psg then winter bear then nigma top four power ranking um but when they don't really turn up it's it's a bit unfortunate so i do hope that we see more teams and of course uh copy bear or bebra is a good example of that they are just like a, a oh, decently bebra. immortal stack no expectations of qualifying, but they are here for the spirit of competition. They're getting to play up against some you know, incredible players. They're going to learn some yeah. stuff, and maybe that helps them improve in the region at some point. Yeah. Also, <laughs> with strange shout out for me, but shout out to Iran as well uh, for uh, for rocking up. They've got they've got eight players what? out of the ten yeah, players who are outside of PSG Quest and Nick Galaxy. These yeah. guys are turning up, so. Uh, you know, like shout out around. You guys have got uh, you've clearly got some uh, ambitious Dota players, and uh, we respect that for sure. But uh, yeah, no, it would be great to see more teams turning up. I mean, in the previous qualifiers, we had some decent teams here in the uh, in the MENA region. Like, you know, there was there was that Winter Bear stack. There's a few other ones uh, coming through, and you know, maybe trying to make a name for themselves with some uh, notable players. And it made these qualifiers kind of a little bit scary. Um, you know, you don't want to get knocked down to the lower bracket on Quest, uh, Nigma or Falcons. So uh, always pretty scary. But of course, no Falcons in this one. They are they are directly qualified because uh, you know they did kind of win the last one. So uh, straight on through to uh, to the next Dream League. So it's going to be PSG Quest, Nigma Galaxy, and Copy Bebra left. Um, uh, amazing, amazing logo for Copy Bebra. By the way, I was hoping it was uh, a weird way of saying Copy Barra. Uh, capybara <laughs> it is so that's nice no flag though it's unfortunate yeah you um, capybara enjoy it i mean it's a happy little animal so sure okay well, is, there any, is, there any, there, but, uh... is it a is it a, i mean it's just an it's just another animal in our very Expansive animal kingdom. Just another animal. <laughs> All right. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> I think you're going to make some people annoyed already. So uh, good, good job starting things off today. People are passionate about this animal. This is... Uh, but but this, why? This guy's a hot give me some... Uh, uh, okay, to so be fair though, I say that my girlfriend of... does love them. <laughs> Yeah, everybody loves them. I mean, basically, there's loads of videos like going around, like viral videos of capybaras just being friendly with everybody and like, you know, like them with other animals, chilling with monkeys, chilling with like mm, lemurs, okay, chilling okay. with, you know, other marsup uh, marsupials. 
Rodents. Yeah, I'm seeing it now. I'm Googling um, it now. Yeah, they look, they do look but, incredibly wholesome. Okay, but here's a big twist, right? I met a capybara. Remain. And the zookeeper told me that they're pretty mean. That they oh. actually, so they, they thought they could put them just with anything. So they put them with ta uh, a tapir who didn't really get along with other tapirs. He was a lonely tapir. The capybaras bullied the tapir who, was, who had just been rejected from his, like, his family, bullied by his sister. So this guy went to live with the capybaras because the capybaras like everyone. Nope, they don't. They bit him. He has, he has, he has oh. red scars on the backs of his ankles from oh, the capybaras no. biting his legs. So don't believe the lies, people. The, copy the capybara propaganda has spread too far, and I'm putting a stop to it. What type of capybara do you want our copy beverages to be? Do you want them to be the, the friendly... Well, I do oh, want them to be... Welcome to no. Or do you want them to be the, 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 the loud, maybe not aggressive, <laughs> yeah, but yeah. obviously... No, I, I, I would name the... the galaxy to turn up to the grand finals with scars on the backs of their legs. From okay, where? sure. Team you want them, you want them to, them. To, to mold them? Sure. Okay. Anyway, moving on from this really random conversation, um, they may have Lashrak, uh, which is the first picker of the patch, it seems. From SEA to Western Bracket. Europe, now to MENA, it is yeah, a hero that is really yeah, just taking off, of course. Remaining. As much as I want to say there's flexibility in the uh, item build, it's only really two variations. It's Kaya BKB or Yule's Bloodstone. Uh, I do like the fact that there is slight variation available. Yule's is a little bit more punchy and a little more early fighting. But Kaya BKB is more you know, farm stack centric. Scale yourself to get that BKB as early as possible and then run for your team. Uh, depending on what your opponent is trying to do, you can you know, play the dash rack slightly differently. And of course, putting max points in Edith as early on. You don't put any points in Spread Earth. It's just like 0 4 2 build. Uh, or zero three two build, and you Five just seconds, poke really? yourself at tiles the entire time, but you don't overplay your hand. I've yet to really see a Leshrac where they're like desperately pushing towers. It's more like they tastefully do it and then go back and farm jungle with your pulse nova. Mm hmm. Yeah, pulse nova, edict, hit ancients. You know, the, the fact that this guy can hit ancients just because the amount of damage he pit pushed out is uh, is, is pretty crazy. So you will see some stacks being made with a Leshrac on your team, and you know, he's just gonna farm it all up. <laughs> I feel like Lashrak is also kind of enabled by the um, BKB changes of like many, many moons ago, many years ago, mm -hmm. that he can still damage you through it. Yeah, no, it, it helps for sure. I think BKB was... Remaining. I mean, I'm kind of happy the general position of BKB and like what it has become. Like before, conceptually, it was too good. Like you press it and it's just like you're you're done for the entire fight. I do like this idea of like stuns having this like lingering effect that you're temporarily I think I think there's like some good skill to it, of course, like when and where to use the BKB. Uh, before it was just like a cheap item, like cores can afford it, supports can't, they live, we don't. So yeah, I'm opposed to it. Also, what do you think of the bans from Nick Galaxy in this game? Like do you think they're going to be doing this in the grand finals, or do you think this is a little nod to the uh, copy? Bear I believe breath? this is. These guys have first faced IO. Maybe they want to pull out some cheese with it. What's the cheesiest things you can do with IO? And uh, the answer is Marcy and Slider. Marcy, because sidekick in the kind of new core potential of this hero is kind of ridiculous. Really nice, just run around with his IO and, and mess people up. And then uh, the Slider, because uh, you know they can just go really fast together. This is like the classic, like liquid, liquid twenty nineteen strategy yeah. they used to love running. So yeah, just uh, get an IO cheese out of here. And no, they won't do this in the uh, in the grand. I, I, unless they first. I like. Them. I respect the two bands. The two bands you mentioned, they're like they make sense. They're good bands. But the undying Huskar lean in the first phase. That's what had me giggling just a little bit. But... Oh, I see. Yeah, Gosh. those 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 are again ban out the cheese, ban out the heroes, which are like just a little <laughs> bit kind of too much. Overtuned in one aspect of the game, they can't be the one to deal with it. Getting a bit hey, so toxic up in, in these here games, as comes out. Like when we see these two types of teams, where one team is a team that has all the backing in the world, you know, previous you know, TI international stage history, blah 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 blah. Like you expect the team that they're playing against to often. Remaining. Kind of crumble under the pressure in a draft, right? They look a little bit disconnected. You see some random stuff. Um, because this is kind of like a round of one, round two open qualifier type matchup, right? If you had to summarize it. And I feel like for Copy Bearer at least, the draft they're presenting us 
hasn't been the most like volatile. Like we've been in MNA now a couple times, and some of these matchup drafts, it looks like the PSG quests or the Nigma or the Falcons, like they have what looks like, you know, some some stable draft. And their opponent is like, wait, why why do you have some random position five cotto oh it's a comfort pick okay sure like i'm not really seeing that at least for radiant where you know they've got some tusk viper lane most likely they've got some mid pangolier io still yet to buff up their last pick carry like it, yeah I, i'm not opposed to it it's very skirmishy they can never really end the game right now but they can get kills from laning phase they can move around the map they can annoy nigma galaxy at least i still would like to see them have one aspect of now that we've got these kills what are we doing on the map but um, this should be uh, at least a couple kills going their way. Ten seconds. What do you want to see as a final pick from Copybara? Like, what is that really big IO combo which you're looking for? Because of course, Luna's going to get banned out. I wonder yeah. if they're going to ban out like another IO. Denizing here. You Maybe Gyrocopter do... goes here. Yeah, there's Gyrocopter. Oh. There's Nigma instantly ban uh, pick. Sorry, so disruptor. Good. If Nigma, they, they've answered this like aggression with just a lot of. Kiting, right? You've got Brew Split, you've got Kinetic Field, Glimpse, Windrunner on the Windrunner, of course, potentially yours and Leshrunner. There's a lot of ways for Nigma to bait Copy Bebra Ten into them remaining. to then turn around a fight. And I think for Copy Bebra at least, um, like remaining. Sven carrying, like I Sven could work out quite nicely. Just have that large amount of damage, jump on the Leshrac and get that kill. The issue will always be no matter how aggressive you are, at some point Brew will press split. Cycling up that IO, and you won't have continuous assistance from him in the fight. So you do need a carry that can be independent of the IO, and isn't like, oh my god, all my damage is, and, you know, it lives or dies by if I have this overcharge on me. And they're gonna go for an Argus Iron. Oh, so oh. not really going for a, a carry uh, utilization of the IO, but you pair the IO with a Viper, then you can of course buff him up and utilize him in some way. But yeah, it's a uh, Hmm. The carry pick that, of course, can annoy when running. The IO pick. The IO just kind of it now just exists hmm. a little bit in the draft, but an early game IO with Tusk Viper, it can can do quite a lot of aggressive moves. But I am uh, a little bit worried now because of the Naga pick. It is slightly out of sync with what the other heroes want to do in their draft. So it kind of feels like it's going to be maximum four v five in these fights, and Nigma, of course, with their heroes. They'll happily bring five heroes to any of these early fights, and that could be an issue for Copy Beber as Naga needs to catch up and farm whilst the rest of her just wants to fight. Yeah, I'm kind of interested to see if there's any chance they're like changing maybe like the Tusk to off lane and Viper 5 to maybe enable the IO, give it like a better laning partner than just like a, a random Viper, but I feel like they won't. I do feel like this is, this is just going to be IO Viper running around and Maybe it's an annoying combo. That sounds all right. Uh, doesn't, doesn't sound amazing, but sounds all right. But uh, yeah, we'll see if this IO chooses to combo up with. I mean, uh, another issue I see is that if you do want to connect with the uh, Naga, then obviously the big problem is that you're like giving a big old arrow to uh, to to Nigma Galaxy to say this is the real guy. Uh, also, Naga Siren's going to go in pretty deep, and you look at these heroes, and you don't want to be going into the fights as a Naga here. You want to be staying as far away as your tether will allow you to stay. And Nagasara is not going to be the hero to kind of allow you to do that. So I think Viper's not particularly, but it is a little bit better. So yeah, I feel like he is just going to be connected to the Viper. But interesting to pick Naga into the Lash Rack as well. I do feel like I would consider this a counter matchup. Am I am I wrong and stupid and ugly to? Which question do you want me to answer first? Sorry, you asked me quite a lot in that in that sentence. Uh, I think they will all have the same answer. So. Oh, okay. Um, well, you are beautiful, um, and it is somewhat a counter, but of course, we uh, know from previous See? experiences of like uh, Skitter and Naga that you can play into a Lash Rack based on you know, constantly dragging out the map. You can get a mage there if you want. You also have you know, the, uh, the pure, the, the pure damage, but the overwhelming amount of damage that a Pango and Viper can provide when Lash steps up front. Oh, that's a bunch of all. When ret Ooh. Come on, man. Oh, All right, he's playing for social media, baby. Okay. Yep. MJ, he wants he's engagement. a fan favorite up here in Twitch chat. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Yeah, it's like we've got Twitch chat playing the game this time. What the hell? Okay. With bated breath, will Nukma Galaxy respond? 
There's no chance. There's there is zero chance they respond to this. I'm saying. I'm calling it now. Tw Twenty seconds time. He just randomly thanks a tip as well. The thing is that they're, they're poking them here, you know, they're playing a bit of mental mm, games, trying to yes. trying to get under their skin in the least sportsmanlike way possible. Yeah, it's pretty awkward, for sure. Yeah. Which chat will like it. If this was actually Maybe in any yeah. way a close and competitive game, I also probably hey, would be a little I, bit... Oof. I like it because now I, I, don't, I don't have to soften the blows on these guys at all. Like They just made themselves a baddies for me, so that's all right for me. I mean, he's pretty. He is like six k, I believe. I think four point four k mortal is literally six k. I'm sure there's a joke in there, but again, it's nine yeah. in the morning. I couldn't pull it off. Um, you can uh, couldn't put it together. That's all right. You were no, yeah, back exactly. To us. But oh boy, <laughs> all right. Um, all eyes on MJ. Can we just always... make sure every one of his deaths is caught on camera, though. <laughs> I think so. I think so. What's the um? Is he the lowest <laughs> MLR on his team? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect. That's that's such a classic. I mean, that's that like an unranked Dodo. stat classic, isn't it? It's so good. It's like the worst players always yapping in these games. Kuro yeah, yeah, go yeah. for the TP out and we'll be all right. Thing and Rasmus getting a bit. Okay. Uh, oh no. That sentence you kind of connected it a little bit. You know, the worst players is always yapping. Kuro. Nah, 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 like, nah, 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 there's there's oh, no yapping going on here. Don't you pull you me under careful, like that, boss. You. <laughs> So, you know what the script is says for this qualify? This is the one that Nickel qualifies, man. I don't know if you read it yet, it's been early, but we got it forwarded to us last night. Oh wow, that was the very last minute. Yeah, it was, it was, it was, was a slight change. After after they lost the open qualifiers, it did there was an amendment saying they gotta win this one now. Um Okay, right. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't really been practicing my lines, so sorry if I got a, a few things wrong. No, it's okay. And MJ's following the script beautifully so far. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <he is. laughs> Good job, buddy. So I feel like oh. we won't see a ton of aggression coming out from Nigma Galaxy until they've got like a, a decent start on Samael. Once Samael's maybe killed this guy like three or four times at mid, then we might see them moving. But Kuro is actually the first one to drop up in the top side. Ding brings him down. They do get the return kill onto Rasmus, but uh, yeah, first blood going to the tusk. It's such a. Uh, in top lane is going to be very aggressive. When you put Tusk with any ranged hero, you're always looking for a kill. You can utilize that tag team beautifully. Uh, he doesn't even have it yet, so that's even, even better. He's used shards and snowball just to continue it, but I kind of expect him yeah. to have Edge even just shards tag team right now, but alas, he doesn't. And uh, the fact that they... Of course, tag team isn't very good against Windrunner, but with Disruptor naturally wanting to get some right clicks off, it, you have to be careful on Kuroki. If you step up too far, you are just going to be jumped once again, and this lane is just getting pushed into the offlane uh, right now. Crookie now going back to G-Ward the camp, but... It, I'm not going to say it's a little bit too late, but it's more... You're already hitting soon level 3 now on this Viper and Tusk, and you should just expect them to be even more aggressive as the levels come in in mid lane. We just looked at it, doesn't matter. Let's watch it top again. Oh, back to mid. <laughs> I'm baiting Mid lane's a bit of a beatdown, I won't lie. <laughs> I'm like, so sorry. Uh... It's it's not looking ridiculous yet, but uh, Leshrac has just been able to grab both uh, water runes, which I feel like for a Leshrac in particular is kind of illegal. So he's now going to have plenty of mana to, to just spam out this this Pango, and Pango is going to have to go all the way to the bounty Ooh. rune, but Matthew oh. says, oh yeah, I can pick that up. Happy That's to rough. do so. So yeah, this, this Pango doesn't really have a game anymore. Yeah, and it does look, because of the, the lanes that they have set up, Matthew will be able to contest this water rune as well. So at four minutes, if Leshrac takes top rune, Matthew comes back for the water rune, then yeah, it is going to be quite a difficult one. And I kind of feel like I expect there to be more aggression coming at some point on this map. Like we, we keep looking around and bot lane, I don't really expect any kills, right? Naga Siren, Io, that's like one of the most passive lanes possible in Dota. He's just getting shoved into to FBZ and Matt, uh, he's just chilling, happily hitting the creeps with no real uh, contest, no real pressure. And the same thing, like look at the CS right now. It's 21 to Leshrac, 18 to Winona, 18 to Brewmaster. Anger has 13. That's the top of his entire team. And like sure and top they were getting some kills, but it's not really uh connected into fight. And you gotta ask yourself the question, like Rasmus, he's he's had multiple crit waves in his face. We didn't really catch it, but how's he only got seven CS? Like he's had what, at least four or five waves. 
under not under his tower, but right in front of his tower. Yeah, so nearby. Not the yeah, best yeah. CS from him. We expect this. Now he's in trouble as well. Miracle just running him down. Kuro getting low as well, though. So they're looking for the trade here. Shackle shot comes out. Kuro is still just kind of manning up on this tusk here and trying to force him out. They won't be able to get the kill, but they will be able to force him away. And yeah, Miracle having a very free time up in the top side now, throwing a kill to his name as well. Oh, the Super Cook are doing a slightly different build to all the other players we've seen. He went for that point in stun, thinking potentially he wants to have independent kill threat. Of course, when you go for the three points Edict, two points Lightning, don't really have that, but he's diving quite deep. Tusk is now TPing, Io's TPing in as well. He could be in trouble here. They're fighting up into him. Two heroes coming on in, but of course, the eye rotation is not the scariest thing in the world. Let's see if he can combo up with the Pangolus. Mel trying to get away. Swashbuckle is available, but he's not going to throw it out. Matthew coming across, looking to help out here, throwing a Tango the way off to Mel. Observe Ward gets taken out by Sting as well. Crazy that British singer songwriter Sting has now tried to uh, qualify for a Dota tournament through the MNA region. But at the top side, Miracle takes down Rasmus once again. Viper getting a little bit destroyed right now. Mm -hmm. I don't expect this hero to have a good lane, so a little bit worrying here for, uh, for, for Capybara. The, the lane comes from pulling up the carry, right? You often pick it against melee heroes, but when you're with Windrun, you don't ever tank up those uh, poison stack uh, stacks, and yeah, the Windrun is a very good counter to the, the Viper. MJ boss man, you're losing the game, you're 3k down, you're level 3, what, what's this tip? <laughs> Leave him alone! He's, he's, he's trying, isn't he? He's trying. He's... He really is trying to be, I don't know. Maybe he just has like of, 1 million Twitch Reddit color Reddit. points. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let me load up Twitch chat. Let me see what the vibe is for MJ. I want to know if MJ, if he's got fans or if they're like, oh, this guy's an idiot. Let me look. All right, you do the research. Meanwhile, we'll watch this. Uh... Leaning phase continues to go very, very dominantly here. Every single player on the side of Nathan Galaxy having a wonderful, wonderful time on their heroes. And they've got some pretty heavy heart timings, but they're not going to hit for a long time. You've got Brewmaster looking for the Radiance. You've got Wind Ranger. You know, she's going for the, like, the full Gleipnir. And Lesh. We'll see what he goes for after this Arcane's, whether it's going to be a Kaya game or the Yules game. Already got a point in Splitter, so could just queue up the Yules and, and go for the second point in Splitter early, but... All right, I've done my research. No that he wants to roll. Someone in chat said he's not like us. He spoke to Kuro face to face. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they respect him in a strange way. Alone in the bottom side, getting beaten down by FBZ. First split of the game is going to result in a kill. We'll get that enemy carry taken on down here. Pretty big title kill here for Nigma Galaxy and for FBZ. You're on the top side, Rasmus, just getting focus fired out and completely taken out of the game. Removed by Miracle, who's just killed him three times back to back now. Yeah, all three lanes have been absolutely demolished by Enigma. It's exactly what you expect when you when we uh, when we think about this game and you know, the teams that are playing, you've got incredible matchups as well. Les Plit beats out the the Pango, Brew doesn't get pressured by the Naga, and of course Winner of first Viper, so on paper, if this game was a little bit closer. I would have expected Nigma to be able to win all three lanes, you know, equally. And uh, yeah, 6,000 gold lead, eight minutes in. It does help that they have this Lesh, right? They will be able to utilize any early advantage and pressure it even more. It isn't as if Nigma can win lanes and have to sit back and farm just to ensure they don't make this game a little bit more you know, volatile than it needs to be. They really can just slowly force the objective. Sumo also poking his head into the top jungle. Just to clarify, this is not Rasmus as in Danish player misery who coaches bleed. Like, this is just another Rasmus. Because misery did rebrand to Rasmus. Like, oh, Rasmus Kuro getting low down to the bottom side, but going to be able to make himself out away to safety. FBZ sneaking in around the sidelines here, looking to finish off this IO. And he is going to get clonked. It's around on the sidelines. Samel catching out the Pangolier. Pangolier getting up to the high ground. He's got a Rolling Thunder available and a Shield Crash. This should be able to escape this one. Going for the TP is going to be successful. But Samel, he's just found himself a bunch of stacks here. Matthew's been busy making these, as we mentioned before. He's going to be able to farm these up and uh, continue consolidating his advantage. And 
Hey, the top side, Rasmus is dead again. Yeah. Turn up to lane. Get shackle shotted. Get focus fire. Turn up to lane. Get shackle shot. Get focus fire. So, what do you want to talk about, though, man? I, this game is kind of, in a professional sense, it's kind of over. Um, well, earlier I mentioned about Capybaras being overrated. I'd like to propose Tapirs be the replacement for everybody's eyes, because they're really cute. I got to scratch one, Tika. It, it, it enjoyed it a lot. They're very straight, oh. very... Oh, wait, they're not soft, the they're very the, rough, but they... The unique nose? Yeah, that's a very sensitive way for... of putting it. The way that social media, you know, power ranks the, you know, the animal kingdom, I kind of feel Tapu is already on kind of a mid to low tier. Yeah, because people think it's got like a silly face and an ugly nose. And it's, it's unfair because they're just lovely guys. It's more like, could you uh, cuddle it? Absolutely. It would love it as uh, Q just kind of running into his death here, QJY, uh, not really respecting the four points of Diabolic Edict under the cover of Rolling Thunder and just just roll into his own death. Sting trying to get away as a common and the Shackle to heal him up a little bit. Sting might just escape this yet. Up to the high ground he goes. MJ trying to lead them in another direction and allow his tusk to escape. And well, he's going to be successful in doing that. Oh my god, Power Shot almost catches out the tusk. Very close for Miracle there. Uh, what, what, what timings <laughs> do we Go have on, on the radio side? Try, man. <laughs> Please. <laughs> What's their comeback potential here? <laughs> I absolutely adore the concept of, uh, you know, some qualifiers and stuff, but sometimes, especially in MNA, <laughs> you are going to have these games. And I don't think, I, okay, so if I can ignore that, if I can filter through that in my analysis, then... You need the Pango to push out waves. You need the Naga to just get out on the map and try and get some type of farm. But they don't have any pickoff potential. They can't take towers. The Viper has no game. Like, no one has anything. They're just all like the equivalent of lane creeps right now. MJ dying as well. Moonwalk himself back to the, to the base. Like, they need to just exist for like half an hour to feel good. And you're not going to do that against Nygma Galaxy with a Leshrac. But unless Nygma really decide to, to yeet themselves into the the enemy tier fours then yeah um i'm gonna sit back and enjoy the show for a little bit it's i think so yeah yeah and also it is kind of funny that the guy who all chatted of course he's you know, trying to meme but at least match it up with a little bit more than this your only kill was on Koro. Oh no. I think that's all he wanted. <laughs> True. I'm sure he just came into this match being like, I have one girl. I'd like okay. to kill Kuro and tell him to retire. And he's you achieved it. You know what, it. actually, like, it would have been incredibly toxic and I would hate to see it. But you know, Reddit would have loved to have seen this based play where as soon as they kill Kuro, MJ does one more all chat into then they GG. Like, that would have, that, that could have been like a, a social media angle. Which I really hope I, I never see. And clearly it didn't happen as Naga does die, but... I'm really scratching my head, boss. I... I mm, don't know what two. to talk about. That's alright. That's alright. I mean, uh... What's your, what's your favourite build right now? Your favourite un unconventional build? Ooh, Ogre buying Orchid. Is my favourite build right now. Yeah, because a lot of people like to buy Midas on the hero. Um... We're going to be seeing Sting die in the mid lane, so it's fine. Um, no, but I, I think... Or are Orchid... we? Oh, hold on. Oh. Oh. Yeah. It's... Oh. Snowball is huge. MJ does get bought down and, wow, Sting's going to die as well. So anyway, back to this really important conversation. Anyway. Um, so yep. Midas costs like 2200 gold, but then the payoff for it, even with multicasts, will take some time. For 1000 gold more, you could get an Orchid have HP regen, mana regen, and then in the fights, you kind of become like a pressure point for your opponent, because instead of it just being the hero that has a fire blast and one stun and ignite falls off, you then become the, wait a second, if, I, if I'm a puck and I'm jumping in, this ogre can orchid me. I could also accidentally get multicasted in the fight. And for a thousand more gold, you become just a nuisance. You force your enemy's itemization, whilst Pango jumps into death in the mid lane, while Sting dies in the yeah, top buddy. lane. Yeah. Yep. It's 16,000 gold lead. 
And yeah. Top tower is under it's just it. That's 40 it. minutes in. Only one kill being gained by the entire side of Capybara. 17 by Nick Megaxi. 16k gold advantage at 14 minute mark. This game, Hano Jova. But I'm sure we'll be locked in it for the long run here. I don't expect Capybara to lose any second of that limelight here. They're going to milk it. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> The Naga Siren, she's um, not kind of doing what I said, right? She's on the enemy side of the map. She, there is no Dire Ward here, so at least her ability to skip through will come into play, of course. It is minute 15, and they're down about 1,000 gold per minute right now. But Oh, Azuma doesn't even want them to farm. Already comes back. Oh, come Smith's on, Azuma, leave perfectly. him alone. Don't leave him alone. Delete his bloodline. Oh. Yes. Oh, I think really my favorite build here. at the moment. Yep. Um, What's that? It's, kind of, it's, it's fallen off actually since the Mage Slayer buff, but nerfs. But when Mage Slayer was really good, uh, you go, you go Enchantress, right? You get the Shard, you get Mage Slayer. You got the physical resistance, untouchable. You can like, like bounce away. You, you become super elusive and tanky. Mm. Very silly. You opposed to it. You opposed to it. Do any damage? You need Hurricane Pike or something. You can work there. Uh, you, you go you go after, yeah. You... Okay, okay, cool. Yeah, it's not too bad. Yes, yeah, so it's Mage Slayer into Hurricane Pike. Um, you know, it's one of those things where it, it, you got to make sure you don't have like any like Ursus or you know annoying heroes on the enemy team. Basically, mm, make sure they don't, the enemy team don't have a carry, and you're fine. So use your four back. Oh, actually, chat, chat, please, please, I have a question for you. What are your four heroes you banned for your rank queue? I want to see what the, the general vibe is for our Twitch chat. Just type the four heroes, and again, I, I will be I will be looking in the future, so we can we can talk about it in our in, in future content of this game. But what about the most base thing you could do you could have as your four bands, like most the four most base bands are having no bands. Just that something. You're... No, I know, I know, I know. I know the most base bands actually. You ban the yep. four lowest win rate heroes to bring up your Sh game quality to make sure neither team can have them. Oh, and GG's you get the been best cool. game possible. Hey, are we are released it? from our immortal prison. Excellent. <laughs> game number one. 22k value at 60 minutes into the game. Hana Jova. They said good luck. Hold on a second. You don't say good luck Wolf after game, two. game one. Wait, why are you wishing your opponent good luck in the game that you're going to play against him in the second game? Hmm. We did say good luck at the start of the game, but... Uh, yeah, but at the end of uh, the game, it's very different. It, yeah, yeah, it's weird. It's definitely a weird good luck. Um, we might have a fourth. We have. We might have a forfeit. I don't know. We might. We might. We might. Uh, we will find out. Anything. Um, hold on. They're okay. They're in the lobby already. They're ready to go. Ah, okay, uh, it was so. just a happy good luck. They're just wholesome players, or at least alone is, but not MJ. It's very conflicting. Mixed messaging from that team, but yeah. That game was a really hard game to cast. I think everyone everyone watching saw that all three lanes were won, saw that Nigma Galaxy just kind of slowly just did their own thing. And uh, yeah, the only death in the game was Kuroki, but that was the level two advantage of a Viper Tusk in laning phase, so nothing too crazy. Um, so yeah, very one-sided game. I really don't expect anything to change uh, for that next one. Yep, 11,000 net worth on the Wind Ranger, 11,000 exactly net worth on the uh, on the less rack and uh, 11,000 net worth on FBZ as well uh, kind of cute but uh, also kind of cool that maybe this is like them showing that you know if you play absolutely efficiently in this game then you will hit just like the same net worth as everybody else so uh, I don't know probably not too much to read into there I'm just trying to try to milk a talking point out of this uh, out of this game when, when there is none to be oh, had because it's absolute cat? slaughter then we are see oh. you go see a cat we'll go throw it to a break <laughs> and uh, we will be back uh, pretty shortly with game number two of uh copy debra oh. versus enigma galaxy and uh, we'll see if uh, uh... Here you go. have a look at a cat hey, Pips, hello look at the cat camera. hello you're prettier than teacup whoa damn that cat's seen some things that, that cat's seen the other side that was, uh, that was quite the look. All right, guys, we're going to throw it over to break, after which we shall be back with game number two and see if it's any quicker or slower than game number one. We'll see you guys in a bit.
Welcome back to Dream League Season 23 Closed Qualifiers. We're here in the MENA region and we are into game number two of Enigma Galaxy versus Copy Bebra. A matchup for the history books as being one of the fastest, maybe, of the uh, MENA region so far. Um, yeah, being these guys has kind of become a bit of a, uh, you know, a bit of a, a speed run. And uh, in fairness to Enigma Galaxy, they're, they're winning the speed run game because uh, when PSG Quest beat uh, Copy Bebra earlier, uh, they took 21 minutes and 30 seconds, then 20 mm. minutes and uh, 54 seconds. But Nigma Galaxy managed it in 60 minutes and 58 seconds. So, uh, you know, everyone, like most speedruns, you know, they're, they're kind of improving each time and getting faster and faster. So we'll yep. see if Nigma can uh, can manage the uh, Copy Bebra skip around the 10 minute mark to uh, speed things up. Would it help, though, in the grand finals? So if Nigma Galaxy complete the speedrun by beating Copy Bebra, you know, let's say like sub 16 again you know let's get or sub 17 again let's get some you know, world record timings in play will that be able to give mm -hmm. them a bigger advantage going to the grand finals enigma galaxy they've not really seen a grand finals in the mna region at all but getting this qualification sure. through a speed run uh route it, it could be just new territory for them to be able to actually muscle up against uh new regional favorite ps2 quest because falcons of course were invited so yeah we'll see if they can do it sub 17 to give them all all the all the chips and marbles into this Ooh, final confidence. game as we do have a draft because i'm gonna announce it because why not haha uh -huh, i did your job nomad thanks 
thanks making making it easier for me uh very very mm. uh very very grateful that uh, send you, you some of the draft. Later. yeah because i mean if it's up to me i'll you know i was gonna give us at least like 15 minutes of talking before we could have broke down that game draft. yeah so much more yeah Radiant yeah no i like to uh I, I like to really talk about it and uh, you know I, obviously they only start the draft when we ask them to so i would have asked mm -hmm. them to start it in uh in another and the players minutes, were like so. just stop talking please like we need to start yeah, yeah please we want to play Ten we were like no remaining. we need to talk about speed rims and uh Bobby Bebra. what's the what's the fastest draft you could possibly imagine which doesn't just die um in the let's lanes. say pugna support the galaxy the less mm -hmm. rack mid pugna position mm -hmm. four mm -hmm. i would say you should get a chen in there just assuming nothing's banned yeah yeah chen position five remaining. okay so we've got then... chen pugna less rack Maybe even like a juggernaut carry just for like the healing ward and to keep you going. The Pugna gives you the mana uh, to the Leshrac. So you have like healing and mana sorted. Yep, yep, yep. And then you're off lane. People might be thinking monster? it's just a little like you need to go dominate. And like when we're talking speed, guys, we're talking like 15 minute win, right? Beast Master often gets Helm Dom Overlord around like 17, 18 minutes, right? So I think you kind of need to go more for aggression on your off lane because you already have the push locked in by the, by the Leshrac and Pugna. Um, so I think your offlane it can just be a little bit more aggressive potentially, um, and I would go for maybe like a cent or something. That's, that's a full full kill. If you wanted to go super obnoxious, you go like lone druid in the offlane, and then you have like lone druid mm -hmm. in one lane, Chen in the other, like less wreck in the mid. Pugna can like pivot to any of the three and like push him out. But that would be yeah. I guess I'd go lone druid. Um, that just that feels like it could win a game in like fourteen minutes if the opponent. Had MJ on it. Team Radiant team nice shade. I like it. I appreciate it. We, I mean, we have he, one guy we can bully on the side of Copy Bad where it's we great. Can do it, right? <laughs> we, like, come yeah, on. Of course we can. Of course we can. Yeah, 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 exactly. What are people going to do? Stop, stop uh, arguing you know to the what? guy. He was, just, he was just expressing his feelings. <laughs> so am I. I know, I know that there too. is going to be people like that. And, yeah. Exactly. Five oh. seconds remaining. Well, it's funny when you, know, you, you all are dash, don't worry. Moving on. I mean, I, I always, I never, I'm never like, if people want to be like, kind of yapping in, in, in pro games, you know, like, e even when like Amar did it and such, right? Like, you know, obviously he's calmed down a bit lately, but still throws in the cheeky one as well. To me, it's always like, I don't dislike the person for doing it ever. I'm always just like, yeah, I mean, whatever. You know, like, uh, pe people are going to talk. People are going to... Maybe yeah. it's a little bit, like, it's definitely unprofessional and stuff like that, but that doesn't really kind of matter to me so of, like, much. Um, what it's, what it's degree, just straight right? up yeah. disrespectful. Yeah, it's kind of like, all right, bro, what are you doing? Like, there's, 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 there's definitely lines to be crossed, but uh, also... It's like, you know, like in football, whatever, people imagine free. I, I don't, someone... I don't, Right, like imagine that like you're a defender, right? You just tackle someone who's about to score a goal. You know he's injured, and then you just start like Fortnite dancing above him. You know, just emoting like, "Way, yeah. look at you." That's basically <laughs> yeah, and exactly. And then there'd be like a investigation, like a FIFA investigation, yeah, and we'd have yeah. like press releases, and it'd be so lame. And like, and don't you're allowed to do this stuff? You know, that's kind of yeah. part of the magic is like you're allowed to just be an idiot and and, and get away with it. And you know, that's kind of like the free for all that uh, makes. I guess uh, uh, I'm gonna say makes esports different, but it kind of sounds weird. But screw it, it. We'll, we'll go. We'll go with that line, you know. Like, but it doesn't though, because in League of Legends you can't do any of that stuff. If you if you accidentally sneeze into the microphone, then they'll launch an investigation on you. So they're kind of crazy. Really it's just like no one talks in League in case they get banned. I have no idea. I I'm just a Dota guy, mate. I have no idea about that game. Yeah, I know. You you are probably one of like the most Puritan Dota people I know, where you just like you you don't play any other game. You don't <laughs> like. I, I've never. I, I don't like think I've ever seen you the in my Dota in my Steam list. I've never seen you on anything other than Dota. Is that correct? I just recently with my girlfriend started playing Stardew Valley, but that is in moderation and around about point <laughs> zero one percent of my weekly gaming uh, quota. How many games are in your Steam library? sub 20 probably and then and they're not even ones i probably no way I, yeah, I, there's a lot of free ones that i've just never played let me check i can load it up if you want uh library okay have these days so 
There's a lot of. How do you get the filter by the, the duplicates? Because there's a lot of. Ah, oh, here you go. The actual games I play. Oh, I if would you go about... to if you hover over your name and go to profile, then it says on the right hand side the amount of games you have. Yeah, it says I've downloaded a lot of free games because I was just kind of bored one day, so it's inflated. That's fine, but that's I, fine. I would say counts. it counts. Right, I'm uninstalling them though, so it looks cooler. Because it currently says eighty, <laughs> but I know about fifty of them are all just free games that I don't many. play. Yeah, eighty, but I've, I don't I've... like. For example, it's like uh, uh, what's a really terrible option? Gwent the card game. I mean, it's a pretty good game, but I just never played it. Right? Oh, I, I, it's yeah. there for two minutes. I think my total playtime on these 80 games is probably like 100 hours compared to Dota, which is like 24,000 hours. Yeah, I've got 325 games, Ooh. but I think over 100 hours is like, let me check. Ten seconds uh, I got like Okay, I got more than I thought. I got like 10 games Five over 100 hours. Remaining. Just to update you guys, if you are just tuuning in, um, Nomad <laughs> and I aren't just randomly ram uh, having a... We are, to be fair, we are just doing this. Oh, we are. <laughs> but we are going to be waiting for the game to start to really provide you the, the best analysis possible um, because the last game ended in 16 minutes and there was no real major contest. Um, so we are just going to be savoring the picks as they come of course, Nigma they have a delicate amount of tower siege, not as much as last game. So the game might last, you know, naturally longer because of that. Only the DK really is there pushing power in the early game. And for Copy Bebra so far with the four heroes that they have, mm, maybe some some okay lanes, right? You got a timber saw, you got a life stiller. But timber saw into disruptor gyrocopter early on can be a little bit annoying if you get run out in level one, level two. And life still, yeah, in theory, should do pretty good in, in most of these lanes. So I like the life still pick. The winner and a profit, not really a fan of. It doesn't really connect the timber saw to the life stealer. They just kind of seem to be just picked. And there's still another pick for Nigma Galaxy here. Potentially the mid, potentially the off lane. We shall see. Yeah, they got a little bit of flex potential here. Not going for any like turbo push lineup here in Nigma Galaxy, just just really stable, kind of drafting pretty seriously into uh Copy Bebra. They have already experienced losing against one of these stacks. They lost Ten game one against remaining. fun gamers, which uh you know is gonna haunt them for the rest of the qualifiers, that's Five for sure. So remaining. yeah, no, you know, they don't want to slip up on anything, they don't want to give them the chance or make the game longer than it needs to be. So they're just gonna draft very stably, very carefully, and uh stick to what they know. Be better, meanwhile, looking for their final pick here. Finish up this draft. Some damage would be nice. They don't really do any damage right now. Like, they exist in lanes. Sure, Timbersaw has, in any Timbersaw game, can pop off a little bit with that just blink dagger build and jumping people, but... Yeah, I'm missing... I'm missing a little bit of that go do something type hero. We shall see. I think predicting this pick is probably the hardest thing in the world right now. <laughs> I wait. I'm going to take my mind into the mind of a pub player. Uh, I will pick Meepo. No. I will pick Anti Mage. There you go. Found it. He had that hovering the entire time. <laughs> this team's still picking. He's not changing his opinion. <laughs> yeah, 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 he's not changing. Um... The life stealer's already won the roll for safe lane, but it doesn't matter. Go roll again. Didn't see. Sorry. <laughs> I love that one actually. If you roll before, like when we had the old ban system, before the bans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you roll pre-ban, it's like sorry, I didn't see the roll. It's like mate, you can just scroll up. What are you doing? He rolled ninety-eight. Just accept that you've lost. No roll or accept it, but anyway. Using a lot of time to pick this hero. Um, rolling is a good, like... You know, like, the trolley... Uh, it's not the trolley problem, it's like the, the trolley hypothesis or something where, like, uh, a trolley is a, a good indicator of whether someone's a human is capable of self-governing. 
Yeah. Because if they put the trolley back in the trolley park, whilst it's absolutely no benefit to them to do that, it's an overall benefit for society. And obviously, if everybody does that, then it's just better for everyone. But if you just leave it randomly in a car park, then... But then I feel like we don't really have that in the UK because everybody puts their trolleys back. Yeah, they always have those little sensors in them. But that means that when you go too far, the wheels lock. Yeah, they explode, don't they? Well, only if you take them more than two miles. Yeah, first the wheels lock if you keep going, then the C4 goes off. <laughs> oh, it's more like, it's like, oh, okay, you went that far. I was going to say you could have been like, like a paint or something, like the money paint, but okay, you just went, you went bold. Yeah, no, full detonation. Okay, no, fair enough. Hmm, Lada coming out to finish off the draft for Nigmi Galaxy. That'll be your FBZ hero, Queen of Pain, coming out for Copy Bebra. So uh, that'll be your um, big new can hero here which does stuff on the front lines like yeah it ticks the boxes but uh no, i mean i honestly yeah no i would hate this draft for copy Bebra even if I, I wouldn't hate it but i wouldn't like this draft if uh if copy Bebra were like a real team I'd, I'd be saying things like your support duo looks sort of a bit underwhelming they don't really have good spells and who okay, goes so... in who starts these fights they're very lacking in stuns, to be to be to be very basic. If I ignore the teams and just try and focus on the drafts and the approach in that regard, it's like your early game pressure is not really in in play because you just put Queen of Pain into Dragon Knight, and Dragon Knight is one of the better heroes to deal with Queen of Pain because you can just level up your 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 passive to have regen. Um, sure, you still get annoyed, but it's not as if you're fully bullied out of the lane like other melee heroes versus quad matchups. Uh, on top of that. Nature's Prophet loves to be able to play the map when there are heroes that can't really kill you in return. Already somewhat squishy. But this time around, he's going to be going onto a DK mid. You might be able to get the kill uh, if DK steps up the river for sure. Um, but then Slada probably going to kill you in return. You got some, what? Garrycopter in top lane that can flack you down and stuff. It's like, it's just an awkward Prophet game that. In the first 15 minutes, yes, you can kill any of these heroes. Is, I don't think I'm good. But as soon as you get is, to like 20, it's impossible. And they've asked for a 5v5 bottom. Let's see if Nigma honors it. FPC did confirm to go for it. No spells, 5v5. Oh, Nigma, let the fans be happy. They're not Remember, do I'll it. go I in know, there. I... They are honest. Wait. Come on, Nigma. You said you would do it, but you went top. Don't lie to them. Oh, they're reversing. They place the ward, they go back, and it looks like they they, they might consider it. They're considering the, the but the I think I, they might just use spells. Like I wouldn't I, I wouldn't even blame them. Just they don't want to waste like time, waste people's time and waste their own time by like ooh ooh. Ooh, let's, see, let's see what happens. Oh, Kuroki, the spell has spell. been used, <laughs> and it had to be Kuroki. I, oh. I, I almost guarantee that Kuroki's just being right now saying, oh, oh wait, they wait, use wait, spell wait, too. Okay, one, oh. one, two spell shoes. Four, five, yep. okay, six, spells seven. are being used. Eight. Yeah. There's Nine. No hesitation. Oh, it's oh, terrible. Alone, getting blasted right now. Power shot's coming through and doing a decent amount of damage, but, uh, you know, it looks like Life Stealer is going to be able to get away. Matthew killing off MJ. And I mean, like he might get another one here as he's just chasing Rasmus with the Thunder Strike available. A lot of damage coming through onto the Timber Saw, but he's going to now back himself away. So, uh, it's going to be three kills for Nygma Galaxy, and uh, only one going the way of, uh, of Copy Bebra. Oh, okay, let's look at the fight recap. Um, it did look like Nygma did use a... Oh, you don't see it? Oh, no! Okay, for mine, I see one, two... Eight spells were used for Nygma, and five were used for Copy Bebra. So, it is indeed at least... Yeah, Nygma did use more spells in that fight. After they agreed to do a 5v5 no spells fight. But the the all chat says, sorry, my teammate has no honor. He used spells. So, I mean, I can't mm. remember claiming responsibility for breaking the no spells truce. But uh, Pro, of course, did start things up with a wave of terror. I don't know. Yeah. If got one to break down, we'll, we'll have to leave it to the uh, post game analyst panel to uh, really go into the replay of this one. Oh, yeah, we'll have a replay for that. I assure you. I haven't got them for anything else, just to <laughs> load up my phone and we can just break it down. Oh, they're dying bottom. Oh, they're dying top. Yeah, they're dying top as well. Rasmus going to go run down here as well. Plus one. The miracle. Beep, 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 beep.
Who's the one death in this game for? Oh, I assume. Okay, just to double check that. Because last game there was only a single death. Uh, yes. Yeah, Sumo. Taking the mantle this time around. Not on my watch. Things Not the mantle of intelligence, good. like the mantle, like the, the, the pillar, yeah. just to <laughs> clarify. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just ready to go. To I'm 90% it. sure. I mean, I, I imagine them like muted, the surely. Yeah, I was gonna say either the communication in that was like either we've got them muted or act as if we do. You know, we don't we don't care. We're. Uh... FPZ clearly doesn't because he responded, but everyone else probably muted them. Yeah, but FPZ, he, he comes from a little bit more of a. This is a normal region. SCA game. Man. Yeah, like this yeah. is. <laughs> FPZ is just like hey, this is normal. <laughs> Nothing out of yeah, nothing different here. Have you seen the, uh, the SCA drama recently? It's, it's getting spicy over there. We were talking about it, but... Uh... Yeah, let's do an M.E.N.A. Love Bracket Finals cast. <laughs> Talk about the yeah. SCA drama. <laughs> Just saying, go on, go on Twitter if you haven't seen it, and uh, go, go, go and have a look. How the last hit's looking? I don't know, because I've got uh, KDA up instead. Well, double digits. Uh... Or... Oh. All of Nigma Galaxy. Right. It was like a repeat of last game. Like Nigma cores, farm all three lanes. The off lane player for Copy Bebra just struggling to really get himself into the game. He's already jungling the hard camp at minute two. And if you want, we could just watch this for like a good minute just where so you can all feel the the unfortunate reality that the Timbersaw lives in. Oh, we've already no no no. Back to Timbersaw. You don't need to watch this kill. I know you have pride in catching every kill, but we need to watch this. This is what happens, guys, when you lose your lane again. We don't care about that death. We are learning here today. He has been hitting this half, uh, not harpy, sorry, this oh, ring ripper it. for so long. DPM through the roof right now. He's this losing. A, this his is a master tower. tier timber saw as well. So uh, this guy was like, "Oh yeah, let me let me play my timber. I mean, let me show these Nigma guys what I'm really made of." But uh, hero levels are yeah, based on you. volume of games. You don't know how many times he's played jungle timber saw in his in his games. Like this could be his specialty right now. <laughs> he lost his tower at four minutes. He really did. <sighs> I'm. If Scrims I'm really gave being tested levels, with my cast today, think... guys. I'm trying to be professional. I promise you, but oh, this is really real hard. If if Scrims gave you hero levels, do you think like players like pro players would be mostly grandmaster on like? For example, if you're like deep into a lifestealer patch, you know, would, would like pretty much all carry players be Grandmaster on lifestealer? I think to get Grandmaster, you need around like 400 games, right? It's like between 360 plus, right? I just don't know, like with scrims, you play like maybe six a day, four or five days a week. That's like, what? Not a lot of games. I think they would have decent levels, but I think people always overestimate how many practice games these pros play like they do play a lot but compared to let's say like a pub player who chain queues like 10 in a row a scrim yeah, is like you play you play you two games draft. you take a break you analyze it you then you play two more games well, don't you? exactly so i think if pro players use that like sure they'd they'd be decently high level they're probably gold tier and stuff but yeah they wouldn't be like level 30 and stuff unless they were only picking one here the entire time and mj's got guns back to base bye bye Oh boy. All right, now we can watch MJ walk back to lane. Shot, yes. Oh. Nice. Just to clarify, we won't be doing this in the grand finals, okay? We're just this is some, some spice of life for the for the game that we're in. Press one if you have to do this uh, in your Dota game. QJY guys. getting killed in the middle lane. No, nope, doesn't matter. We are right. locked in. Man, huge rotation from Kuroki. It was it was massive. He came through the trees, some males like dragon form, like done, poison. Only lasting three seconds now. <laughs> and MJ's back to lane. Thank you very much. Alright. Let's see what the state of the game is. 5,000 gold lead. Yeah. Mid tower has fallen by some out. They are just autopilot themselves. To a very commanding position. And what will be the move to make? I don't really know. Rasmus is still jungling, by the way. He's gained one level. 
Okay. Better than no levels. True. Oh, Scroggy vs. MJ. Oh, the sweet revenge. Blood grenade available. I want to throw it down just yet, FBZ. Oh, well, Sting just TP'd side. in, though. Oh, no, uh -oh. Sting. No. Not like this. Should have stuck to making music. Oof. I think the silence feels uh, really good right now. <laughs> <laughs> it felt right for the game. It did, it did, yeah. You know, that's uh, not having fear of, uh, of blank space or something no, I read about. No. Uh, some uh, commentary theory. Oh, okay, Miracle's so... going for a Meteor Hammer. That's cool. Yeah, oh, nice. He wants they, out. They, yeah. Again, we spoke about the world record aspect of this... Uh, Qualifier, a speed in which it can be Copy Webber, and they found MJ once again. We should easily Copy have the damage in full effect. Yep. Ding! Every breath you take, this will be your last. I'll get the double. He's not going for anything exciting. No Desolator Dragon Knight. I want to see Sladar Desolator. You know, really, really double up on the minus armor thing. Ooh. Nini gets to kill top. Nearly, yeah. Uh, Infest into the creep. He's hanging out on the life stealer. What's well, going to regen here? FBZ still trying to chase him down, though, as uh, UJY falls again. And I, I don't know if Slardar's winning this, you know? FBZ is going to die. <laughs> oh, yeah, get your tips in. What? Miracle tipping! Friendly fire! Hold up. Oh, my God. How are they going to be in good form for the grand finals? They're tipping each God, other when they're clearly, dying. Oh, no. He's furious, FBZ he's, is. Yeah. Thank God we don't have player cams. You'd have seen such I know, a stare. It's scrapping right now. Uh, he can take the swings. How far away is Dragopter from Hammer? Okay, he's one recipe away. But he'll need to then send his career back from him, back to base, back to him again. We aren't going to see the Hammer too quickly. This... I... Off the top of my head, I'm pretty sure this is for a carry gyrocopter. This has to be at least sub three games total for like have me to have a bot on this hero, right? I think Miracle's gonna be inflating some stats somewhere in the world. The official game it counts. Ace Prophet being clicked down under his tower. Dares to show himself okay. against the male. Important oh, wait, question. He got, he got an urn. That was incredibly bold for the nature of Prophet, but it pays off. As FBZ being chased on the top side. Yeah. All right, I got a concept I need to need to break down, but we can see if FB, FBZ sorry survives first. Oh no, alone. That's he didn't go through that. No TP17. Found his friend Matthew. Okay, so concept is, Emmy and A doesn't have the de strongest depth in the region. Is going to the lower bracket a detriment to you because you have to play this type of game where it is like an entire different skill bracket to what the grand finals will be. Will Nigma Galaxy be so relaxed from this gameplay that when they enter the next one, they'll just be like slightly a little bit too slow. They'll be making incorrect moves and stuff. What's your, what's your, what's your take on that one? Mm, depends on your vibe because some players are like, they play best when they're just like chilling in the zone focused, which means this would be good. But then some players, you know, they need to be riled up. Uh, some players, they're not into it and if yep. they're not into it then they're not playing they're playing good enough you know like i i think that's good for everybody not just pros as well i think everybody plays better in different circumstances and sometimes that can be the difference between vibing with a team and, and not really working out with them you know maybe something like i mean it's very hard to kind of analyze this sort of thing but i feel like gaming gladiators are very like they play best when they're calm focused you know, they're not like hyping each other up and going like ah kill them blood uh, but meanwhile, maybe someone like uh, Spirit, perhaps. Oh, maybe Spirit's not a good example. Um, OG, I think, is probably a, a pretty, like, 
vocal team who kind of go ride the wave always have been it's always been their mentality so basically if this were oh if, if this Nigma Galaxy are like an OG team, then this would be bad for them. But if they're like a Game of Gladiator team, it wouldn't make a difference. That'd just be like, maybe even help them out. Already thinking about the next game. Already writing notes. Doing their homework early. In the back of the bus. Miracle's gonna get dumped, but it's a bait. Uh, it does seem like they're not moving anymore. Yeah, they're just following Miracle around. I, I do think this is uh, kind of weird in the bottom lane. <laughs> I think quite, there's some sort of truce going on between Alone and uh, Miracle. This is this is yeah. This is some strange uh, some strange truce going on because alone occasionally just takes a swipe out of him. Yeah, I'm just sitting back enjoying the the very uh, final moments of the Dire team having their all chat. They're playing into their idols as they are going to be eliminated. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Yeah, they're, they're milking it, but it does look like a speed run might be. Uh, might be even better than last time. They are gifting miracle, uh, miracle items here. Oh, Rasmus, Rasmus! <laughs> Tried to go for the BM kill and missed the, uh, missed the timber chain. <laughs> and now he's, now he's pretending. He's, this guy's a liar. This, he literally tried to kill him, but he missed the timber chain, so he didn't kill him. MJ dead in the base. The rest of Nick Galaxy. Well, they're trying to go for the high ground. Unfortunately, towers hit pretty hard. Fortification plus Wrath of Nature takes out uh, FBZ and brings Kuro very low indeed. Oh, Verduous Dale. I love a Verduous Dale. Yeah, he does get killed off by uh, Alone, who just chased him down forever. Dyer's middle barracks are under attack. All right, so Mail of Miracle grouping up the Dream Team for the first time in this game. And they're shackled together. That's how close they are. They're shackled together. Miracle just waiting for his hammer cooldown. It's pretty much it at this point. He'll jump in to save some mail. Get off my bubby. And, uh, meanwhile, the rest of the team. I mean, it's just, Miracle's actually going to die here because the rest of his team are busy chasing this pesky lifestealer who keeps pulling their supports, but uh, the last year is going to drop. This might have the most all chat in any pro game. One-sided all chat, by the way. Because they're just speaking into the wind. Yeah, kind of that meme of the guy talking to the brick wall is kind of what's going on right now. Yeah, There's just yeah, five yeah. of them all, ch all ch chatting away to a brick wall. What's your limit for, uh, like, all chat communication in, in unranked games? Don't use it. I really don't like all chatting at all. I even, hmm. I just, the uh, whole, oh, oh, you didn't get me. I just, I just find it kind of awkward. Because, like, as soon as you start typing stuff, you don't really no, get the emotion. What about tipping or voice lining? I think I used to tip a lot more, like, for kills, for that. I kind of stopped doing it nowadays. I, I, I don't use it at all. And voice lines, I think you, you can use them because like you can just mute them. And also it's like you you have Dota Plus, right? You you have these levels. You kind of want to use them. So that I find fine, but all chat, I don't know. It's like it's hard to get the correct emotion across in typing, and it's very easy like out of context for it to look more toxic than you mean, right? So I just don't do it at all, just to to be safe. Mhm. Mm I think I'm okay with. So, sometimes I'm like, if if you're like in a a really good matchup or something, and then you're like, 
doing well in that matchup and then you're like kind of tipping and saying like I don't know, I think it needs to be classy for me, you know? Like, if it's an actual outplay, then fine. But if it's just like a result of a matchup or something like that, then it's always a bit like, come on. Like, why, why, why are you? What are we doing here? The uh, famous Hammer Dagon build, not gonna save his life here, so did he jump in and kill off the, uh, the, the Gyrocopter? It does feel like Samel's kind of like, just, just making sure the MJ they, uh, they keep on the track. The what? MJ tried all chatting as well. God. Not even that good all chat either. Yeah, like wannabe nice. based all chat, yeah. Only me, yeah. Oh well. What can you do? Guess uh, you gotta entertain yourself somehow when you're uh, in this position. Yeah, one and seven must be kind of dull. <laughs> I don't know. Top lane tower gonna fall now. Also, pausing is never like, unless someone's uh, unless someone's paused for you, you know, it's Ooh. like, uh, I'm, I'm never down for pausing. I can tell you about a tactic. So there's a stack that plays when they play up against me. Um, they like turtle the game. They pick like my default terrain heroes. They push out waves. They don't kill us, right? They purposely try and make it as long as possible. They never try and win the game. But every time they get a kill, they disconnect, then pause. So not only are they holding the pause for longer, you can't unpause, right? It is oh, it's terrible. Oh, that's annoying. Just like this game. <laughs> <laughs> yep, it's pretty terrible. Uh, yep, luckily, uh, he's, so, so has gone for this, like, you know, pretty, pretty normal build, and he's very, very rich as well. So even though <laughs> Miracle's kind of trolling a little bit with this build, not really, uh, Given the one they need to kind of finish up, that's uh, Samel's in the driving seat, and he's like, ah, don't worry, you could, you could do what you want. You could have your fun, Miracle. Try and make this series entertaining for you some way, somehow. And he's got the hammer as well. Oh, nice. Hammer, Manta, Mage Slayer. Guys, bring this to your pubs. If you're playing against people like 4K MMR lower than you. <laughs> oh, they're not, they're not improving on the speed run, though. No, the speedrun's not looking too good. No. But they can still beat both of uh, both of PSG Quest's times. That's impressive. If they get the ancient though. Soon. They do need to. They do need to. As long as they as long as they're faster on aggregate, you know, I'm, I'm okay with it. But yeah, Samel, he sees it, he knows properly, the timings. Please. I need proper casting limit right now. This is really important this fight. Go, go. <clears throat> Miracle jumping on the sidelines, he's using out the Rocket Barrage, trying to bring him down. Alone's upon him though. Miracle got plenty of health to work with. The flag cannon is gonna take down Rasmus. He gets Sting as well. Miracle gets a double kill. Can he keep the fight going though? Alone running to the tree on the sideline. Epi trying to find him, but it's a close chase through the trees alone. So very low. Juked easy comes down in the all chat. Epi and Tadas right now. He can't find him. Shieldbury make sure he's safe. But the over ancient, inside the base, the they're not realized. Samael, he's trying to win it. QJ Way, he can't do anything. No, whilst their backs were turned. Copy bar they go down name the galaxy how did they win this all right i'm done that's yeah, so back good man the two are so the swiftly done um yeah good job man <laughs> i just like I, I feel like you had to prove we could do it you know i feel like we had to provide mm -hmm. something because we what did you do <laughs> nothing nothing i said the ancient mate that's what the other does you do the hype all right yeah 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 and true, I'm like, true during the hype like, really? so you're hyping i'm like mm -hmm. i'm back ancient yep yeah, yeah. It's like yeah, in the rap know? videos where you've got like the yeah. people going like the repeating what they say, ad libbing. I believe yeah, it's called. great. Uh, you're That's my ad literally ad you're my hype man. But I have to do it tastefully. <laughs> yeah, I can't do it too much. You know, like there, yep. me saying the ancient nomad, the ancient. I don't know. I felt like I was really contributing to the no, product it's perfect, there. It's perfect. Um, great, unlike great. Copy Vebra that didn't really provide any content to the product of this qualifiers because they weren't to the caliber of Nigma or anyone else. And it was rough. Yeah, yeah. But no, it's fine. It was because tough. The, okay, the issue is, okay, I'll, I'll be real. The issue is, it's the mm -hmm. all chat from MJ and the guys in which they're kind of flaming and being semi-toxic, awkward based people that now makes me not want to try and like compliment the idea of them playing out the qualifiers, you know, health to the scene and stuff. Grinding, like, trying to get grinding, better. Yeah. Like even if they know they're gonna lose the play, because it's like it sours all of that. Because I'm I'm happily gonna sit here and be like, well. Of course they lost, but at least they got to play up against some, you know, TI players. It's great. 
But then, like, they do these, like, all chat things. It's like, now I've just lost any respect for them even, like, I think trying to do this. the take so here, T, yeah. is... If you're watching this and, and you're an MENA player and, you know, you're you're better than these guys, which, you know, it's not that hard, you know? Get in, play! You know, this is, a, this is a caliber which is representing the region in the close qualifiers right now. You can beat these guys, you could be better, so come play in the MENA region, give the region some depth, grind it out, Get better and uh, come fight in these close qualifiers. That's, that's, Please that's my Please add take. context to that statement right now before we go to break. Are you talking about Copy Bebra or are you talking about Nygma? What? No, I'm talking about like MENA players who can come and beat Copy Bebra. Yeah, there like you can I take their the place break. and play against Nygma Galaxy in the done. lower Please, bracket it, it has indeed. Oh. Yeah, and I believe it is time to send it over to a break. Of course, we're going to have a very, very long wait. Two hours and 40 minutes is how long we're going to have to wait uh, for these grand finals because the series was so darn quick. But uh, well done, Nygma Galaxy. Clean 2-0. And they do beat uh, PSG Quest speedrun on Copy Bebra. But now they have to go and beat PSG Quest themselves for a spot in Dream League Season 23. That game will be coming out at uh, one o'clock. Uh, C to, I mean, three hours, uh, two two hours forty minutes. So uh, stick around, uh, set your alarm clocks, and we'll see you back then for the grand finals of the MENA region. It's going to be Nigma Galaxy versus PSG Quest to find out who's going to make it through. We'll see you later.
It starts with this A person that you miss Mind draws a blank I wanna go back, back to the early days When life was an escape Now I just wait for better days I lost myself in your reality I lost myself
It starts with this A person that you miss Mine draws a blank I wanna go back Back to the early days When life was an escape Now I just wait For better days I lost myself In your reality I lost myself Thank <laughs> you.
It starts with this A person that you miss Mine draws a blank I wanna go back, back to the early days When life was an escape Now I just wait for better days I lost myself in your reality Lost myself
starts with this A person that you miss Mine draws a blank I wanna go back, back to the early days When life was an escape Now I just wait for better days I lost myself in your reality I lost myself
starts with this A person that you miss My hand draws a blank I wanna go back, back to the early days When life was an escape Now I just wait for better days I lost myself in your reality I lost myself
Enigma Galaxy versus PSG Quest is the match we've got in front of us. The grand finals here for the MENA region. And let's be honest, it was always going to come down to this, T. Yeah, no, yeah. I'm not even going to try to quote it. Yeah, this qualifiers, there was only really two contenders. There was two other teams and that was about it. Really, it was only a 14 qualifier. But we finally have it. We have the grand finals. Enigma versus PSG Quest. Historically, Enigma have never qualified to an online or LAN tournament from the MENA region if either Falcons or PSG Quest are in the tournament, in the qualifier. So it's not looking good for them. Yeah, but yeah. It, it kind of feels good for the story, right? They overcome Winter Bears in a previous qualifier to get to Epic League. And now if they beat PSG Quest in the next qualifier, like... Falcons next, you know, Nigma on their return? Maybe, maybe. Right? I mean, I, I I think the thing is, this is a very structured region. This extremely structured region. Mm. Falcons are the best team in the region. PSG Quest are the second best team in the region. Yep. Nigma Galaxy are usually the third best team in the region. And that is just how it's been going. And all the results have reflected that. So if anybody's able to break that trend, suddenly things get very exciting indeed. And every single time one of these teams plays up against it, we're, we're waiting, we're watching, we're seeing. And, you know, PSG Quest, they've, they've come so close to being able to break that trend by trying to mm -hmm. take down Falcons, which then even makes you go like, man, like PSG Quest, you know, you, you want to see them on land because Falcons are one of, probably the best team in the world right now. You know, they're, they're, they're winning tournaments like nobody's business. They're, they're taking names and they're looking incredible. So you think, well, PSG Quest is the one team which should be able to actually bring a really good fight to them. So... Yeah, I mean, uh, I think a lot of people are going to be excited to see these guys qualify. A lot of people, of course, excited to see Nigma Galaxy qualify and try to break the uh, trend. But it just kind of shows you that this region is very, very gate-kept. Like, it's a hard region to qualify through just because it's so top-heavy. Yeah, and like when you look at previous results from these teams, because PSG Quest haven't had access to that international experience, those you know, online tournaments, that, that the LAN ability, I feel like they've also maybe kind of lost some of their magic from the previous years. Like, this was a team that rose to notoriety because they started to dominate a little bit in Western Europe, one of the most competitive regions. Of course, they shifted to MENA when the region opened up, but it, like you look at their online results, they, they played in a third party tournament and they came last in their group, right? They, they didn't really progress any further than, you know, last place in that one. They've been second for four qualifiers in a row now. And then likewise for Nigma, 
they've struggled to win in open qualifiers for like the PGL tournament. They they got knocked out by the new Kodaro stack. Um, they also got knocked out by the Atlantic, the UK stack, which had Hanskin and uh, Pablo in it in, in the first qualifier. So I think both teams have just kind of taken steps back from previous success. Of course, Enigma a longer period than PSG Quest, but both teams have been struggling because they've just yeah because of Falcons, they're not really getting the the, the games and the quality of uh, practice that you would normally see from these two teams and. I am putting PSG Quest as favourites uh, still. I think Nigma have shown yeah, of course. a lot of weaknesses recently. Like, I think that open qualifier specifically. Um, but yeah, but it's, we'll, yeah we'll let's not forget as well. Them. They've already played against each other in these qualifiers as well. You yeah, know, they had the upper bracket uh, matchup between the two teams. You know, PSG Quest, they did take the 2 0. It was a good series, but also Quest looked really comfortable. They, they, they had a pretty nice time. Like, sure, like Nigma Galaxy, they, they were able to fight back into them but ultimately psg quest you know that they're, they're, they're pretty pretty convincing ones especially the first one you know the ta2000 naga siren um it's it's super scary you know ta2000 just absolutely farming through both games top of net worth each time always looking like the uh the the, the guy in control of the uh the game and very like confident hitting his timings and, and having a good game so I think the Galaxy, you know, they got to be really thinking about how to take down this team, how to dismantle PSG Quest's aggression and the way they kind of lead themselves into the mid game to make space for TA2000. Yeah, and of course, that does come from the, the natural aggression that I think PSG Quest provides. I think when they play at their best, some of their team fighting is, you know, out of this world. Like the way in which they enable each other, they protect each other in the fights, it really gives them that, that edge and. Even when they've been looking like an, a pretty average team, they still have those moments of brilliance where it's like the the synergies of Noob and Amar, both uh, you know, Lebanese players. They played a lot on national teams together. You can see how in the fights, like the way that the four position roams for the mid, they're syncing up their their spells nicely. They kite back as well. I think that's a lot of a lot of good points for PSG Quest is how they, when they take a fight, they know how to drag it out to when they're strong. It's uh, they don't overcommit, and I think because of that, they do find these these insane moments to just really open up the game and i think that's one real kind of glaring change for psg quest is they have changed up their position fives um they've now lost kaiori he's moved to uh, western europe uh western european team i believe uh maybe eastern europe i can't remember exactly but he was playing some qualifiers recently um but they picked up to carlos instead i think that's gonna be a very big change up because kaiori was is, quite yeah. a not a, not a greedy five, but he liked to play like his own variation on things where like he'd go for like the Phoenix, but he'd go for like the Hex Rush. He would kind of just you know play his own little kind of mini five game inside the bigger game. And it was incredible when it worked, but when it didn't, for sure it kind of uh you would go, hmm, what if they had like this type of player? What well, you know, I, I don't think Goro was a glaring issue for the team. I think that was quite a surprising change, and I honestly would... I thought, yeah. For me, I... he was one of the standouts, but, you mm -hmm. know, he, he's been on the team for quite a long time, you know, since the yeah. Redo Thunders game uh, days. Yeah, so. exactly. Like, for me, it's like Maybe that change was, does... Uh... It's, not, it's not like a confusing change, but obviously for the team, they've they've been a second-place team, and when there's no DPC kind of support, like, tournament organizers aren't going to be paying teams to play qualifiers, right? Like, PSG Quest will suffer from that. Like, being second-best in a region West of one East slot... Board means you're just unpaid for many many months and with a team of you know this this gravitas like you have psg as your sponsor right they they went from like best team in china to second place team in mena right like they're gonna want results soon and i can see why they're starting to make some changes of course they've been in and out with different coaches as well but yeah this time around kaiori he was a uh, he was the one to the, the piece of the puzzle that got swapped out maybe in a couple months in hindsight they're like ah Maybe it wasn't him, maybe it was something else, but PSG Quest 100% they are going through uh, like a transitional period, I feel like, and once they get back to the international stage, we'll be able to really know if some of these changes worked, but yeah, the colors, very stable five player, different play style to Kyo 100%, I think uh, a lot more aggressive and a lot more like a explorer on the map compared to Corey, who might want to sit in a lane and yeah. secure himself. Yeah. You, won't, you won't be seeing any refresher phoenixes from Jakalis, that's for sure. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, refresher, uh, refresher. Scythe Phoenix was such a such a vibe, but uh, no, nope, no. Nope. Uh, Kyrie now moving over to uh, level up, play with them instead. So uh, hopefully he's uh, going to find some success over there. But over in this series, we're going to start things out with the Samael Storm Spirit. Let's go. Ooh.
okay. It's a it's an instant response because of Shadow Demon. Uh, the uh, SD never really has mid pressure onto a Storms for it unless you have some additional support that has a stun to utilize the disruption pre level six on Storm and it's a nice hero to just always find him. I think when we're talking about PSG kiting out fights and having fight selection being one of their stronger uh, assets within the in their kind of their toolkit, a storm stick will be able to dismantle that. If uh, Sumo has a good start to the lane, he will be able to always jump that back line, find that person, and not allow the retreat to be as effective as they uh, they often do. And I think what else would you go? Over? How many? Did you do? Who? I was just double checking who was first pick. Uh, so PSG Quest mid laners against Storm Spirit. I think you just want to be able to match that aggression. Would be <laughs> sounds pretty like good. an activist group. <laughs> mid laners against Storm Spirit. Sorry, continue. <laughs> I just caught me oh, they're gonna put their yellow bibs on and <laughs> sit in the middle of the lane. Yeah, and exactly. Not allow the creeps to pass. <laughs> Get them all congested up in the middle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Boycott the couriers. Um. Yeah. What do you think? I mean, Raze has got to come to mind. Snapfire could be an option for Noob, or even like Haskar, something even more bullying. What? 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 What does it? What are you thinking? I'm thinking like a like a void spirit potentially could be very good. I'd like to see a hero that. Plays in the same logic of Storm, where when Storm sees an opportunity to TP and zip into a fight, Noob mirrors that move. He TPs, and you overwhelm one of the side lanes with both mids taking that big skirmish and scrap. And sure, they go for a puck. It's always going to annoy the Storm in the in the early game. It's going to put that pressure on him. You get hit by Dream Coil. You are going to get jumped, and you throw in a Crystal Maiden as well. Just, yeah, some some nice early preventative measures to deal with a Storm Spirit. Of course, as the game goes later. Uh, CM and Shadow Demon will be miserable against a, a Storm. They won't have anything to do with it. But early on, that one disruption when Storm has used half his mana to initiate a fight could buy enough time for the Storm to have to second guess his, his aggression. One Frostbite as well should layer for uh, a, a Dream Call or a Science. So, yeah, I think PSG Quest have some soft counters to an early game Storm for it, but they are going to probably need to think about it potentially with one more hero that has a bit of lockdown. Otherwise, it could become the. Sumail Orchid Storm Spirit that's constantly killing off the puck and the supports can't do anything and yeah. Yeah, so it's kind of like a... Yeah. Like the, the, the puck one's an interesting because it's kind of like challenging Sumail. It's like we're not going to pick like a direct counter. We're not going to change our entire draft just to answer your Storm Spirit pick. We just believe that our puck comes ahead because I believe between these two heroes it usually comes down to just timings. You know, whoever's richer is generally going to be able to get the jump on the other and abuse the other. Mm -hmm. uh, in that regard, Storm a little bit more timing dependent, but yeah, both of them have op having options against each other does make it a very competitive matchup. So, noob rising to the challenge of the Samael Storm Spirit, he's he's ready to fight. He's uh, ready to go. Crystal Main as well, of course. Uh, very very defensive backline support duo, which uh, which the Storm could abuse, but we'll see. Yeah, they use a lot of uh... support Nigma. What are they going for? Like, the fact that they still have picks here, of course, Centaur's already banned out. You wouldn't really want to pick it too much into the park, but they go for a Pugnut. I mean, they're kind of screaming for the big offlaner. Brewmaster's already banned by themselves for Enigma. I think what's the, the FBZ heroes here, because they do need a melee initiator. Based on their like, double backlining supports that want to amp up other people. On board with the Storm who wants to jump in. Like, the Storm needs someone to help him out, right? Like, when Marana and Pugna play so far back on the fight, I guess they could also pick Tidehunter here for Enigma. That wouldn't look too bad. It gives a lot of protection to Pugna to be able to then hit those you know, clutch life drains, be able to just decrypt in peace. Mm -hmm. There's also, like, a Mars option if you want to go for the yours, but... Oh, yeah. Doom. Okay. Yeah. I think... Doom I was is leaning good. more, like team fight aspect like doom is a good team fight but it's also you also want other stuns to enable the doom it, it, it's it's good in a team fight but it isn't the team fight right it's you delete a hero but what happens with everything else and right now for nigma it does feel a little bit lane centric where they will try and bully you in lane sumo will start having a good time and it's like zip to the doom lane get a doom get a kill reset meanwhile miracle will be playing some sven or some Big type carry behind all of this. I don't know if I would have preferred to see a slightly more AOE type offlaner, but Doom is a perfectly fine pick. 
shouldn't get pressured in lane. And let's Pierce Request go for some very aggressive carry here. Yeah, not sure there's a ton of options remaining, and they may want to shield that carry pick until the uh, after the ban phase, I'm not sure. But it does feel good sometimes to pick your carry and then ban out two answers to it, and that's exactly what they're going to do. Grab the Naga Siren and pick up two carries, which can kind of answer the Naga, I suppose, uh, ban, ban out those two carries, which yeah. can fight up into her. Mm. So for here's your quest you might go oh but they picked naga siren into pugno are you gonna kill the illusions but it's like yeah i think the, the the entire map will be played in a way where even if naga's illusions die to some some drain in the fight the map will always be choking nigma out because like their wave clear isn't very strong their ability to get the the creep waves in a position that a smoke isn't so obvious is a lot harder you compare that to the puck pushing waves the naga pushing waves sd taking illusions of the naga and then also push waves Nigma, if they if they get behind in this game, it is going to be pretty difficult for them to utilize the Moonlight Shadow of Marana to to go and find those engagements. And yeah, Nigma get actually nice bands there with the Mars and the Primal Beast. PSG Quest, I think they are like what I was describing for Nigma. That's exactly what PSG Quest are also lacking that that one body to park himself in front of a tower and just prevent that attempt of early aggression from Storm through it. Because Storm jumping a Naga. It feels good up until the point where she gets Manta and then she'll just Manta any initiation into Song and you disengage. Same thing with yeah. this Doom. If you Doom someone right now, there yeah. isn't enough damage within the Doom so this Naga Sign will always be able to Song or the SD will disrupt by enough time someone else will come in. And uh, what is the Malik hero here? Exact same archetype that I was describing for Nygma is exactly what I want to see. Just big, beefy offlaner. That takes the fight. Uh, surprisingly, DK's still around. I mean, it doesn't give you the best, like, oomph. The bit single mm -hmm. target initiation. But he's, he's a strong hero. He's got he's got the nice Five passive to work with. Remaining. Could be you know considered. What? Bold pick. You could go for... It's not a beefy offlaner. But you could go for, like, a Lycan or something. I think that would be disastrous for Nygma to play into. Oh, they go for a DK. They go DK. Good job, bud. Yeah, I mean... Yeah. This hero is, like... 84% contested um, in this in this in these qualifiers so far across all regions, so unsurprising to see it coming out as a final pickup here for PSG Quest. Statistically, yep. was going to be nice likely, but now we have the it. final pickup for Nygma Galaxy. Yeah, yeah I got so a little bit carried away What is away the Naga answer? Naga answer? Oof. If there ever was a time for a Pudge carry, you bring it out right oh, now. Wait, they only have up. like 10 seconds, oofed. No, they yeah, long. And no. <laughs> yeah, Miracle's yeah. not looking to cook that hard quite yet. Nah, We're just going to go for the cook. Luna pickup. But right, for going back All to right. the DK real quick, it, it's nice to add another stun. Like My idea was punish the support duo with some overwhelming aggression of like a Lycan, but instead, PSG Quest, they don't want to go too volatile. They did play Lycan early in this qualifiers, but with the DK, you can jump some hero super easy. Then it's like DK plus Puck follow up so far into the fight that Naga Siren will be able to understand everything before she has to enter. Nygma's response is trying to push themselves out of the game before it happens. They've got a Pugna, they've got a Luna. I am a little bit sceptical that if Nygma don't somehow do well in lanes when their lanes aren't meant to do well, they are just going to get out-farmed and the early moves will be a little bit hard. They, can't, they don't really protect each other. Like the Doom's relatively independent. There is a Pugna, but this Luna, if she gets double jumped by anyone, it's kind of like her versus the world right now. We'll see if Nigma can pull off this draft and try and see through how incredibly scaling this uh, PSG quest lineup will be if you if you don't shut them down in the early game. Yeah, yeah, it's a very timing focused match, I believe. Like when this Luna hits her items, Nigma Galaxy are forced to make something happen. It's not even a case of like, oh, they should make something happen. I think they have to make something happen. Every time that Miracle hits like a big timing, I, I want to see them progressing the map for themselves. You cannot let this Naga Siren take over. But I'm hoping they know that because, of course, in game number one, versus in their last series against PSG Quest, it, it was the same thing. It was a TA2000 Naga Siren. It didn't die once. So. It's 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 a good goalpost to aim for, you know. Kill the Naga Siren at least once, and then things should look should look a little bit better than they did in that game one. But let's get into it. We are now starting off with the grand finals of Nigma Galaxy versus PSG Quest here in the MENA region. Close qualifiers for Dream League season twenty three.
and Enigma Galaxy do it? Can they break the order of the region, the natural order of first, second, third, or is it going to be PSG Quest just giving us an example of why they are the better team once again, as they did do earlier on in these qualifiers against Enigma Galaxy? Enigma really kind of huddled together under their tier one tower at the moment, respecting the PSG Quest aggression and potential here. For a bit of invasion, and now they're going to go for a bit of a fight themselves. Finding tier 2000 might be a bit of a stretch, but they do now see her on the ward. It's a really awkward level one fight for Nigma Galaxy, though. Like, I, 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 even even if they're all here, I just don't think they kill. I don't think they kill anyone. Depends on how far they are from the tower, right? If you've got enough time to chase them down, it's looking pretty good. They have the vision on tier 2000. Yep. Uh, oh, okay. Another blast misses. Blood oh, grenade connects. Arrow, right clicks oh. coming on through, but uh, not yeah, quite. Don't they have enough right clicks? Matthew trying to finish the job. The right clicks. It's not enough. TA2000 lives. Oh, they got the perfect wraparound, but again, their heroes at level one are just complete garbage. So unfortunately, <laughs> you can't turn that into a kill. Very awkward start for Nigma Galaxy, but uh, nevertheless, sending TA2000 back to base, forcing a TP like. Still a bit of a win, and over in the jungle, Miracle, he's getting caught out by the three men of PSG Quest. Crow trying to fight up into Omar yeah, here, trying to get the return kill, but the stick is there. Right click coming through, but there's a route from Duke Callison. It's going to be two kills going the way of PSG Quest to start off this game. I mean, it's such a violent difference in level one potential between these two drafts. Like, but it's because Kuroki leveled Starfall, right? Like, your are Starstorm, sorry. You're making this wraparound play. You have a really beautiful ward. Uh, Kuroki does actually not get the kill, but it's because his damage was the last damage before he died, so it goes to Kuroki, but he wasn't there to get it. Anyway, like, you're going for this play, but he's already pre-leveled. If he had the arrow, a Lucent Beam into the arrow, the Naga had already used Illusions prior, so a little bit of a mislevel or a, uh, you know, early leveling there from the Marana prevented the first blood. Of course, in laning phase, I don't want to start with Starstorm, but when you go for that play, you, you need to make the choice, and because of... No arrow, equal no kill, equal two kills PSG quest. That's so a, an job. equation. Thank you. Over the top side, we got tier 2000 on the Naga Siren with Ducalis on the Crystal Maiden, landing into FBZ and Matthew. Doom Pug now seems pretty stable to me. I feel like we shouldn't see too much action happening here. Maybe FBZ gets overzealous with the Scorched Earth and gets chopped up, but I imagine they're probably just going to trade up farm up here. Yeah, incredible uh, trader farm. Uh, it's a very no-kill lane in the top. Bot lane is a different story, of course, if the if the Marana steps off away too far and Miracle's by himself, one disruption into a Dragon Tail, Blood Grenade on top, that will most likely net a kill. I'm expecting action to be happening bottom, mid to be a trader farm, and top equally a trader farm. And already they are using that, those motions, right? To shop the Lunar up, get her own illusions. Body block as well from Amar. Ooh, nice micro there. Omar. Yeah, he's, he's playing with Miracle just a little bit. Getting a little extra bit of a little bit of damage off, but the DK did also take a fair amount of clicking during that process. Kuro just the whole time clicking away, getting off his damage. We didn't really talk about it, but they picked Luna into Shadow Demon, which is always a, a matchup that you have to respect. It forces Luna to think about, hmm, do I want to go Butterfly? If I do, then now SD can take illusions of my my Luna and throw them at my team. I can't kill them myself because I won't have an MKB yet, so... It always forces these these Achi carries to, to second-guess how many stat items they want to buy. We'll see how Miracle navigates that problem throughout the game. Yeah, for now. After the Bounty Rune shenanigans, we have kind of just sat back into a nice little farm state from both teams. But here's a stat no one talks about. Because mm. they're just not smart enough to bring it up, unlike us. The Lotus yep. difference. It's going Nigma Galaxy's favor right now. Matthew Whoa. has a Lotus. Bro just gave his Lotus over towards Miracle. Like, you think there's some really dumb stat where it's like the first two Lotuses correlate to some really dumb win rate or something? I'm sure if you, you so. check that. I feel like you think the first two Lotuses not, directly but... <laughs> links to winning, or Again, it's maybe like, it's I'd say it's stat, like maybe but... fifty-five percent across all like pro games. Maybe so higher. You're saying actually. taking both of the first lotuses equals fifty-five percent win rate. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll see. If I people, could see you know, Cook up some answers for that. Uh, 
in like a oh, month's time. <laughs> It'll take a little bit. Yeah. Is it? It suggests better positioning in lane, better kind of meta laning, better understanding. Mm. Maybe it's more. Maybe it's higher. Maybe it's hundred percent. Maybe maybe Galaxy just won the game. We'll find out later. Either way, low laning phase, hence why we're going insane, but uh, Malik with the double bracer, triple iron branch build, he's pretty beefed up right now. Not to mention the belt of strength coming in the courier, bro. Goes for the range creep instead, wants to secure that one. I well, wonder if we'll see. I mean, it, it looks like both supports are pretty locked into their lanes right now. So in terms of going out and making stacks, might be a little bit difficult. Uh, Omar's trying here with the double ancient stack. Did he pull this off? Oh, he does. Well, only on the left side, actually. Didn't get the double. Never mind. I'm dead. It's okay, Nomad. They are jumping Luna, though, in the meantime. Yeah, but it's also getting jumped though. by Kuro as well. Kuro trying to get the return kill. Might just be able to finish the job, but now Luna, two points of Shadow Poison. Might not be enough to bring it down, especially with the stick and the Lotus available. So, very cool, just waiting to get that salve on him. And uh, it's going to be a nice trade for Nigma down on the bottom side. Heal all over towards mid. Rotation coming in from Ducalis as the supports start to gather for that minute six rune. Yeah, there is no vision right now for Sumo. So the they, are jumping storm. And they have the coil. Oh, he's level six, but the coil is there. He can't do anything about it. This is just a death. Maku comes in, tries to help him out with a decrepify. The wand is there as well, but the silence isn't going to be long enough. Disruption comes through, and he dies. Oh, that was so close. Matthew with a decrep after a couple of spells have been used, keeping Sumo alive just long enough, but yeah. The two points in Shadow Poison does eventually go down, and the Carlos, he's still hunting here. Wants a little bit more, and Noob going to be getting the Arcane Rune. Bringing the supports to mid, it is so critical when you have a Storm and a Puck in this game. Whichever mid gets the, the 6 minute rune, the 8 minute rune, they're going to feel so much better. They are such you know, mana intensive heroes. Yeah. Here's your question. Well, Setting dying also that just a little bit more. gives you full health and mana in a full bottle, so... That's true, yeah, you should... I think Nygma, they've been trying to use that strategy for a couple years now. It, it hasn't really helped them out. <laughs> Go on, dude. <laughs> Thanks. I hope Twitch chat likes me still after that one. We'll see if it's a base or a Keck W or a what the fuck, you know, we'll see. Yeah, so far, pretty pretty chill laning phase. A big kill onto, uh, onto Smell. Definitely gonna feel good for PSG Quest and that noob up for a pretty nice time. He's gonna wanna make some action happen with his Arcane Rune. Although, a lot of mid laners do talk about uh, Arcane Rune being the farming rune. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't really tend to like, unless you're like a Zeus or something, throwing out an ulti with it is not super prioritized. You don't want to force yeah. something. If anything, I, I like the fact that Noob isn't trying to make moves on that. Like his constant pressure mid will uh, I take the back, he's TPing in top. He's making a move a on the map noob. right now. <laughs> yeah, which is hold, hold, hold. Hold? I don't know if I like this. It doesn't this, work though. out, you look great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if I like this. Because the point I was trying to make was Noob is an incredibly active mid laner. Like, what made him such a popular player within Western Europe when he was playing DPC was his tendency to just break from mid lane as quick as possible to make those moves on his primal and his snapfire, his puck, his voice for any of these heroes. He's making stuff happen. But in this game, I think if he just sits mid the entire time, Sumo can never come back to mid lane because he's going to get coiled up into one TP rotation and he dies. But him being here, stop Storm from farming. And they are going to try and kill Matthew here. He no, indeed, eventually will die. should there be we go. successful. Yeah, the cast and Noob. So, a lot of damage coming out between them. A lot of control as well. Yeah. And that one rotation from Noob just gave Sumo like an extra couple waves mid, right? An extra access to jungle. And I feel like, yes, Puck can rotate, but you kind of want to make that rotation when they're already under the tower. Like, allow that TP to insta-hit coil. I think Noob just... Uh, it's not the craziest thing, but he probably will just slightly adjust his gameplay just a little bit here. You know, having quite a nice comeback after the fear of death was installed into him after that first coil. Like this, for example, that's a coil moment. Coil moment right here. There's a uh, top side FBZ getting beaten on down. Doom is out onto the Nagasara. Not sure if she cares, though. Matthew coming across trying to help out as well. 
And in comes the Storm Spirit, looking on to Omar here. Omar is going to get dropped, but Samel using all of his mana to just get across the map and secure that kill onto Omar. Meanwhile, Naga Siren doesn't look like she's been doomed at all. She looks perfectly healthy. As uh, Dukas comes in, Noob is here around the side. Nine seconds on the coil, though. A little bit awkward here. Very awkward. We'll just be allowed to walk themselves away and, yeah, Puck just kind of walking at them menacingly. Ooh, rah, says Noob as he has nothing. Oh, he does have coil, though. Now. He's got coil back. Yeah. Blessings. Just running away from him. Easy. Pretty awkward. Oh, Samael. Samael is here. Oh, he's going to jump this. All right, trying to go for the kill onto the Crystal Maiden. FBZ coming on to help out as well. And Dukalis looks like he might drop here, but Coil comes down. A lot of damage being dealt to the Storm Spirit. He is going to fall for the kill. Can they get the return Can onto Noob? I don't believe so. Witchblade Park just going to do way too much damage towards Kuro. He's killing Kuro he's farming oh, Creep Camps. Okay, There's four heroes here. <laughs> he's looking a little bit awkward right now. I know Kuro's being caught out and Silence is out onto him and it's going to be another one for Noob. Hmm. Oh, they gave it a good shot, but they did not respect the puck. They which played pre ten minutes. He had coil, of course. It was kind of the bait the entire time. Like, ah, he doesn't have it. He doesn't have it, and then just comes off cooldown, and yeah, he's in position. This is the strength of Crystal Maiden against the uh, elusive heroes in the early game. That frostbite it is pretty devastating. Like once they commit a third Crazy. of their mana pool just to get into the fight, they will just be locked down, and stuns will be layered. And what's now rotate to mid two thousand gold lead catapult. They're going to try and take this tower, but Nygma, they're also TPing it as well on, on Kuroki. Ideally, he wants to, to arrow the catapult, get that instant kill, but you can already see they're kind of... Oh, Dukalis. I thought he was going to tank you for the boys. The setup on Samael. Silence is there, and he's blown up immediately. Big catch down. by Omar from the from the low ground there, just completely catching Samael off guard and getting them chained back-to-back -back kills onto the Storm Spirit. One and three. On the Samael Storm, a hero which he's famously very consistent on. Yeah, this is my kind of hesitance in kind of liking the Nigma draft in this game, right? It's the fact that they don't protect each other. And Sumo, sure, he needs to be active, but he's going to be running into a Coil, a Dragon Tail, a Frostbite, a Song Disengage. Like, it's a really hard Storm yeah. game until he has an Orchid and a BKB and then, like, all the items above. And nowadays, you don't really buy Orchid, you just go Witchblade. Enigma, there's, there's no real move to make. Unless FBZ wants to get active Very awkward. with this Veil, with this Doom, it is just going to be the PSG Quest show in all the early aggression. It kind of goes back to what I was saying before. When the putt, In this matchup, whoever gets ahead is just going to feel so much better. It makes the Oli hero feel so much worse. Noob just kind of trusting in himself to get the advantage in the mid lane. And also trusting his team to make the correct rotations through and really putting the pressure on him now. Miracle. Not a moonlight shadow upon him. Is it going to matter? Decalus. Does he see him? Things are coming out. They might have done, but Miracle senses something's wrong. Oh, Moves so himself close. under the tower. Oh, how has he outmaneuvered them here? Top tower is under if only they had a scan. It was on cooldown, I think, for like another 10 seconds. That would have really simplified that rotation, but yeah, not to be the case, Miracle. Surviving for now. They haven't left the area. The smoke is still running on the support. He's moving back they into them. It. Omar's here, ready with the disruption. Noob is behind. Matthew going to do what he can to try and help out here. The life drain comes through. Is it going to be enough to keep Miracle alive? I don't think so. They're both going to fall. And now Storm, he's caught in the coil as well. Just going to sit here and have to try and... Well, he's got a lightning away. Very low on mana. But I think he's going to escape. At the very least, the Storm Spirit survives. Kuro jumps over the cliff to get himself out as well. And uh, FBZ just not really interested in this engagement at all, continuing just to farm up in the top side. So, yeah, they do get what they came for in the end. The Luna goes down. Good, tenacious moves from Quest. Just staying in the area. Knowing where the Luna wants to farm and trusting that, uh, you know, the Luna will eventually show us off again. I think right now in Dota, I'm really enjoying the teams that break from lanes and just position themselves aggressively, like, together. Like, the way that PSG Quest is playing right now, they're sacrificing the efficiency of, of, let's say, like an SD making a stack, right? 
just to be able to stand in the enemy jungle. And if a hero walks up, it's a disruption into now Puck there with a Witchblade, or there's a CM with a Frostbite, and even DK's joining some of these early engagements. Like, I think this type of Dota it is really refreshing to see, especially because you know, teams like Nygma right now, they aren't drafting this, this kind of perfect scrap type lineup, right? Like, you, you want to see all heroes have a lot of gold. Like, Luna, Storm, Doom, the they mail. all feel great at 15,000. And Sumel, he's getting hunted a little bit here. He's hiding. He kind of knows something's up. And he's just going to TP out, but... Do they have to, they oh, have to... they're going to oh. see him! The stun is there! The blink in from Malik. He almost made the perfect read, but Quest, they knew something was up. I mean, I have no idea how they found him there, I'll be honest. How, how do they think to look in that spot? I don't know. They have a... They do have a ward on just above that camp, so... Potentially, based on his, like, just halving to get there, right? They're going to see a clip of vision of him, and... In general, there's not really much map to play for, for Nygma right now, so it's like, what, you've got five camps that Nygma can farm? You've got a one in five chance of finding the correct camp they're currently farming, so... The benefit of being so far up the map, and they get a kill, they smoke up. Noob going for the Yules as well, really going quite defensive, not allowing for any opportunity to potentially give away a kill, and they're going to bump into Kroki, they hit the silence, and yeah, another very easy kill for them to get. Yeah, it's starting to look a little bit easy for PSG Quest to just run around the map and find whoever they want. FBC is going to be the next target here. Of course, no BKB quite yet for this guy. He's farmed, but he doesn't really have a whole lot to get himself out of this one. Ducalis going to let it go on top of his head. It'll be another kill for PSG Quest. Playing this map very, very well, giving TA2000 all the space he wants and more to farm up. He's going to be heading towards an Orchid. In fact, he's just about to buy the Orchid, so... Got it. Yeah, I might see him coming up to some fight soon as well. Another threat on the board. I mean, Smell just can't play this game at the moment. He just needs to play side lanes and... <laughs> Do you reckon? Yeah, Styles are making the biggest mistake of his career right now. Look at that courier. He was right next to the secret shop, but instead at the mid-tier one tower, look at his career, dragging the corner copier across the map. He was just there. <laughs> what a blunder from tier 2000. He was so inefficient. About 20 seconds he could have had Orchid by now. Terrible stuff here. I don't know. I'm trying. Yeah. It's just... <laughs> you, you got to try really hard to criticize PSG Quest in this game so far. They've played very, very well. Very efficient. FPG That's the type of the only one who's been able to have a game. I feel like if we had to do interviews, and this is like, let's say it's this one side of the entire time, right? It's like tier 2008. What was the hardest thing in this game? And he's like, micro my curry in game one. <laughs> <laughs> the male's so scared at this point. There's just a Crystal Maiden running him and he's out. He's like, no, not dealing with that. Knows that there are just look too many build. threats on the board for him right now. Oh, God. No, he don't look at his build. Don't look no, at his no, build. Look at his it's build. so sad. Yeah. It's, it's rough. Like, he's got an Oblivion stuff, right? Where he was like, hmm, maybe I go Witchblade, maybe I go Orchid. And then because of the state of the game, he's having to go straight for the, the, the BKB and Miracle. Doesn't really take any damage. 2000s. Yeah, that wasn't a lot. He didn't have mirror rumor jumping. Maybe he gets jumped himself. He has song though. Yeah, they'll force out the song, and now the rotation starts coming through from PSG Quest, but actually, they don't really have the heroes to bring to this. Everyone's on the bottom side of the map. The solo puck heading on over to help out, so. One, two, uh, duo gonna link up under oh, this tower. Oh. Bottom side quest still waiting for someone to show on the uh, tower down here. Mm, did they just the double wheel. ward that high ground? They did. Quickly, look top, look where Kroki is. <laughs> delete he's your shame, delete your evidence. shame. <laughs> look at him, look at him. There we go, we got him, boys. You don't get away with this. Ooh, good job. He also renamed his Ob Sentry, like he's using the tactics. <laughs> <laughs> good job, Observer. We got him. It has to be we got him. put into the archives. We got him. <laughs> Blink Orchid on the Dragon Knight. Manta Orchid on the Naga Siren. Puck is Puck. Yeah, you can see why Storm's forced into this BKB. Like, it doesn't feel comfortable, it doesn't feel good, like... But he's... Samael's not being stubborn and just saying, like, you know, I have to build my items. Like, he's saying mm -hmm. there's yeah. more value for me to just stop and pull out a BKB. I don't know if Star gave the right stats, you know? <laughs> Pushing Already, the blow a bit. Like, you, you can see that PSG Quest is respecting that, uh, that inevitable early timing. FPZ, though, currently... Position oh, and he's just BKB coming everyone. on the courier right now, but I don't think he's going to get a chance to use it. He does get a chance to use it. All right, fair enough. Now, looking for the turnaround. They find cast on the sidelines. FBC. I mean, he's got to be tempted to get in to try and get a Doom off here, but it's just too dangerous with the health he's on. So Dikaz is going to get away. They can't even bring down the Crystal Maiden under their tier two. Pretty brutal. 
quest continuing to survive. And if we see the optimization of all of PSG quests right now, it's really nice for the type of aggression they're bringing to the game. You've got the Yules on the Puck, you've got the Glimmer Cape on the SD, Pavis going solo quest on Crystal Maiden. I mean, they have so many cheap items that if the scenario that Nygma finds a, a fight, right, they're, they're going to be able to enable each other. Like during the pre-show, we were saying, oh, I was saying, I was like, I'm hyping up their, their, their small things they're doing in a team fight. There's no greediness happening here. There's no SD going for an A for lens. There's no Crystal Maiden going for like a drum. They really are itemizing for. Let's win our lanes. Let's make sure we're ready to fight. And they're grouping again top. Miracle leading the charge. He has a Manta. He could be instant on cooldown for the Doom. They're hoping to find he something. Doesn't. Gonna meet them through the portal. Miracle, what can he do? Hunts out onto the Miranda style of this fight. They just want to bring down Kuro as quickly as possible. Moonlight Shadow already came out though. Doom with the back lines. Managed to find out tier 2000. The rest of the team, where are they to help out? Samael is just not in this engagement at all. He's on the other no, side of the map trying to farm his BKB. Luna gonna get healed up by the life drain from the Pugna. Ducalic's gonna use the freezing field on top of their heads, orchid out onto Pugna, stop the heal, and take him down. Omar does die in the back lines. FBZ finally finished the job as Roshan comes running through the fight as well. He wants a bit of this action. FBZ. Trying to escape here. He's got a BKB just back off cooldown. He does want to go for that BKB TP out, and that might just have to be the case. Although, nice little arrow coming down onto Ducalis. BKB oh. TP. He's gone. The Doom BKB has been used twice just to run away from the fight. And Enigma Galaxy, that, that attempt of aggression was somewhat wild from them right there they're smoking to the most northern part of the map away from their storm spirit who is their primary initiator the doom had bkb on cooldown they find a naga siren but there's already all the defensive tools in place to keep him alive yes they connect on doom but there's no miracle in place to to maybe hit the the eclipse it's only also only one point in it as well like everything that could have gone bad for that aggression went bad for nigma it just it felt so forced like it did maybe if they had an item each that's a good fight, but with how far they're behind, it kind of feels like they need to respect the fact that they are just so underfarmed. Wait for all their timings to sync up and make one really good team play. Like making these desperation yeah. plays as four, it just further sets them behind as PSG Quest continue and to grow their lead. Is it, is it uncomfortable to, to turn up to a fight as a position one when your position two is still looking to just farm up and hit their next timing? Because it felt uncomfortable. Yeah, of course. Like, Miracle getting jumped up. He doesn't have Manta for five seconds, and you can hear uh, the puck. This could be bad. In. Coil is out. He's trying to wait on the high ground. In comes the Storm Spirit, trying to help out and absorb it of the aggression. Once again, life drain coming through onto Miracle. Samael, got to be careful. A lot of science is coming out onto him right now, along with that freezing field just continuously coming out onto them. They just don't seem to be able to stop this Crystal Maiden. Finally, they bring it down. Samael staying on top of Omar here and does bring him down. Now look at over towards Ducalis as well. That's going to be the next target here for PSG Quest. They've taken down three on the side of Nigma Galaxy. Double kill for some male. Finishes the Witchblade and finds a huge fight to get back into the game with, but they did still lose their Luna. Everything we were just praising PSG Quest for, they kind of did a little bit of the opposite, right? Like they're the, Now it's their turn to take the fight without their carry. It's their turn to go aggressive and try and go for a pick when they're not really in position. And sure, Nigma Galaxy, they they get whatever they can from it. Sumo's going to be very happy getting a double kill. Progress his way to the BKB. But Matthew, that entire fight, he's life draining up Miracle. He puts, he doesn't get enough heal on the Luna whilst also losing his own life. And then just one Crystal Nova just kills both of them. It was, oof. If both of those heroes survived, then that's an incredible fight. But the fact that your Luna does die really just sours that, that, that moment for them. At uh, this stage of the game for Enigma, I think any kills are going to feel good because they have been so absent from the fights in the, in the previous couple of goes. Like a yeah. siren already. And about oof, a thousand gold away from a heart. It's gonna be a, essentially like a 26 minute heart. Manta, Orchid on this Naga Siren. We already said that there's a couple damage issues for Nigma Galaxy. A lot of the itemization is very defensive right now. Triple BKB is on the menu for them. That isn't gonna be what you need to, to kill off this hero. You know, gonna get a Tormentor. Matthews will, yes. will pick it up. That'd be, you know, somewhat nice being able to right. the illusions. Yeah, that's a really good Certainly one, actually, isn't it? Yeah, in this particular matchup. I'd be happy for that. Still, PSG Quest 8k gold advantage. Now down to 7k, but nevertheless, a lot of gold in their pockets. BKB finished on the DK as well for the next engagement, so 
control for Malik going to be much, much harder. Yeah, okay, soon she doesn't do much. Oh, Miracle, not again. They jump him in the middle lane. Luna needs some help. Not going to find it. Oh, the train comes through for just a second, but immediate coil comes out onto Pugner. And now they want to bring down Matthew as well. And Snare, an Orchid from the sideline, seals the Pugner's life. And it's going to be two clean pickups for PSG Quest in the middle lane. He's so aggressive on his farming. Like, top lane, he's like past his dead tier one tower, pushing out. He then goes to mid tier one with his real hero to also push out again. I don't think Miracle is really respecting the fact that at any minute a DK or a Puck can just appear from the shadows and initiate a fight on you. Yep. He is with the... oh, 800 got away from BKB that will allow him to at least play in that area with a little bit more confidence, but a couple deaths from Miracle just sure you could argue, oh, but he needs to go for the farm, but he has the illusions. I think he needs to be a little Isn't bit safer. Isn't this what the Manta's for? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. PSG Quest aren't going to complain when they just keep finding a Luna barreling it down lanes. They're obviously going to go for the kill every single time, even if they aren't in position like two fights ago. But we are 40 gold away from Smell having a BKB. Ooh. He can finally freely play the game and do what he wants in the fights, potentially. Yeah. Of course, he did go back for the Witchblade. He didn't just go Oblivion yeah. BKB. That would have been an absolute despair build. Yes, I'm, I'm very glad that uh, he was able to greet out a little bit and get the Witchblade, of course. That did mean he couldn't really turn up for the last couple of fights. And now, Roshan is being attempted by the Dyer. ESG Quest Stand in the pit well. right now. They are aware. Yeah, pretty breakneck. Yeah, I believe it's one of those scams just to confirm they're doing Roshan. Confirm that you can be a little bit greedy with your farm at the moment. Get on some mm -hmm. lanes and... Yeah. Um, Mass twin gate usage. They... Yeah, I was wondering if they scanned this one out as well. I, I think Nimi Galaxy did pop a scan, or maybe that was uh, PSG Quest scan. I didn't quite get to see it, but somebody scanning with a twin gate just to make sure All it right. was uh, safe. Like, Nygma is relatively strong if you just ignore the Aegis concept, right? Triple BKB and play for all cores, Shivas, and they have the recipe to, to win a fight. They just need to try and navigate the fact that it's Naga Siren. If you jump on her, you're probably going to lose it. As she has two lives and around 2,800 HP with yeah. a soul. But I mean, you're not jumping a heart Naga Siren anyway. And she's not doing quite enough damage to be like, we must kill her to win a fight. So It's all on FBZ and uh, Sumel. If you can get a good Doom on, let's say, the DK or the Puck, if the Storm can then jump the, the Shadow Demon to prevent that save, that will really yeah. open up the fight to, to create that numbers advantage. Of course, Naga Siren will be the raid boss of the fight. If she tanks any of the big spells, then I'm sure PSG Quest will thoroughly enjoy it. And look at the tier 2000 just running behind, trying to force out that BKB. BKB going to be forced here. Yeah, they need to turn this into a fight right now. And that's exactly what we're going to try and do. Doom finds the back line, but immediately gets stunned up by Malik. Doesn't get his Doom off here. And now he's going to get the Demonic Purge thrown out onto him. Going for the TP out. Life drain from downtown from Matthew. Going to keep him alive. He does escape. Ooh, Nigma Galaxy. It's getting a little bit spicy for them as Miracle runs up to the top side, but he might just about get seen by a Dire Ward here and yeah, immediately ping out by Noob. Oh no. He has BKB TP. Yeah, it's going to have to be used by the looks of it. He's trying to be greedy. Wait for an opportunity to escape and... Noob is... Ooh. Why are they not chasing this one super close? Maybe he's just trying to like bait the Lunar into a false sense of security. He wants to try and Stick wrap around and try and get another man. To okay, it. there you go. So. Nice moves from Miracle. Nigma, Gets him to safety. Three BKBs used on Doom. Each one of them to retreat. It's not what you really want to see from this item timing. Like, often it gives you confidence. And it does boil down to the fact that where is the protection for that Doom? When you throw it onto someone, what stops them from just running away? You can't rely on a Kuroki Arrow in this game. There are... Plenty of illusions and noise in the fight to soak it up. And Storm Spirit, he got jumped by the Naga at the start of that engagement. So he had to BKB just to survive that initiation. And as I speak about Doom having a bit of a rough game, he is going to be sent back to base. Yep. The Fountain Express. He gets on board and flies back home. BKB still on cooldown there for another 22 seconds. A very nice catch for uh, PSG Quest. Just uh, they can see on the pressure. And now... Real Tier 2000 just on the high ground at the moment. Hey guys, do you want to defend I the love building? this. 
<laughs> that team is nowhere nearby. Team 2000 is completely alone at the moment. Team get nearby now. Ducasa no longer. Wait, what, what is that? why is that carry on the high ground? We should probably be over there. And they do. He's doing that butterfly. Like, how did you kill this guy? Yeah, I I think killing DA2000 is something to think about maybe in, in 20 minutes time. If your ancient is still in one piece. Unobliterated. Surely now Doom's alive, they defend this. Maybe they're just not aware. Maybe they're just thinking about other things right now. <laughs> uh, game two, maybe. <laughs> too soon, too soon. It oh, kind of feels like that, to be fair, though. It's a little it, tough. It's yeah. not a polarizing statement. I'm pretty sure 90% of Twitch chat is also kind of feeling that right now. Uh, 99% on... Uh... On Dota Plus, so. Ooh, damn. That's 99% pre 30 minutes. Impressive yep. stuff. PSG Quest. Storm says hi to the Naga Siren. Naga Siren just kind of says hi back. Matthew is going to be able to deal with these illusions and. Crapify the real tier 2000, but. What, what's the galaxy waiting for? What, what, what are they trying to grab on the map right now? Because Miracle's nowhere near close to any sort of item. Oh, sorry, uh, phylactery. They're doing anything in their power, power to wait out the Aegis, and then hopefully find initiation. I think Doom getting a Blink Dagger. If they can just find the Naga, hit the Doom on her, and just hope for the best, it pretty much feels like. Doesn't sound like an amazing plan, Tigov. It isn't an amazing plan. They're not in a very amazing position. I see. They are victim to PSG Quest playing as whatever tempo they want to play. Like they could send illusions to chip down high ground and force Matthew to always be in base to kill them off. They could wait out for another Aegis and secure their game with some 30,000 gold lead. It's really up to them and how they want to approach this. Of course, FBZ, if he steps up like this again, if he has to use his BKB defensively, that will just give PSG Quest free entry to another engagement. Noob with the end of his rune has a gem as well, so shouldn't really be surprised by any any jumps. It's going to see the sentry now. They need to punish this some way, somehow, but the rest of the quest coming on through, looking to follow up on this, and Kuro's going to be left for dead. On the back lines, FBC gonna jump in, looking for TH2000, not gonna find him, go for the TP out, and once again, the BKB TP maneuver from FBC. It's been flawless so far this game, let's be real. It's been some of the defense, best defensive BKB usage I've seen in a long time, just time and time again. This man doesn't wanna die. Is that really what you want to be say? I. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Takes a trip back for to base, comes back in, and yeah, this game is just over. Full. It's super over. They've tried to make two or three aggressive moves. They failed, and in doing so, PSG Quest have just casually farmed up to being near unkillable. They're gonna smoke up. They're gonna give it one last try as PSG Quest move for the Mega Creeps. Will they find the initiation? The blink is available for FPC. Can he find that doom? No BKB oh, on the dead. Storm Spirit. He is just going to get bought down here eventually. Down he drops. Miracle just trying to deal with these illusions to start the fight. Now moves towards different targets, but out comes the song. And now Luna and Pugna held still as they turn around to deal with the Doom. He does get taken out. No chance of survival here. Barracks all taken. Mega Creeps and GG. Game number one, it goes comfortably to PSG Quest as they take down Nygma Galaxy in a clinical game one here. Once again, the TA2000 Naga Siren, it just doesn't get contested. Yeah, um, I think if you're Nygma Galaxy, moving into the next games, you're gonna have to think of a key couple things, right? It's the, the TA2000 Naga Siren. Is that something you really wanna allow into the game? If so, make sure that you have anti-Naga heroes. In this game, they didn't really have it on top of that. Just, they, uh, it's easy to say from our perspective, but the moves they're making just feel very empty, right? Like they're making random farming moves on Miracle to then die on a lane or force his team to fight there. Doom gets a BKB, but he runs in to have to run away with it. Like it just doesn't feel like they're making moves to try and win the game. They're just kind of, kind of playing. And then eventually if things connect, they'll win the game. But it doesn't feel like there's like some really powerful initiative in what they're doing. And it also stems from the fact that their lanes go poorly. 
that they can't make moves. Like their big playmaker, Sumail, is shut down from the puck, from the support rotations. The supports on Nygma, they just can't help Sumail out. So now you have supports yeah. on PSG Quest doing way more, the mid from uh, PSG Quest doing way more, and there's no way you can rely on the offlane or carry of Nygma to fix those problems. Like if you're already losing the game based on your mid four and five, not being able to enter the game, nine times out of 10, you lose those games. So Enigma, they're gonna have to really step some stuff up uh, for this game two or three or four or five if they really wanna get there. But right now they're just not looking as competitive as PSG Quest based on that first uh, first game that we've seen. Yeah, yeah, I think the first change I want to see is, uh, as you were saying, you know, those supports need to change. You know, you think about, like, Marana and Pugna versus Shadow Demon Crystal Maiden, and you might go, like, oh, well, you know, both pretty black ba uh, backline, both pretty, you know, hard to get into the fight and, and make work. But actually, then you think about you're playing a Puck in this game, and suddenly it's like, what would you rather have? You know, Marana or Pugna just kind of running around not doing a whole lot or you know a crystal maiden find someone frostbite great i get to set up on that shadow demon disruption great i get to set up on that you know it gives you ways to play the game it gives you something to follow up on there's just nothing there from runner and pugna rather than catching a random stray arrow which is not something you can rely on so um yeah it doesn't really make sense for me i think the drafts were pretty similar in that regard as well like pretty much all the core roles matched up pretty evenly in terms of what they wanted to achieve in the game but they just got these supports which just don't match up at all. So uh, yeah, it did feel to me like that was the uh, at least one of the big foundation blocks which uh, was kind of cracked for Enigma Galaxy at the beginning. So yeah, let's go to a break uh, and then mm -hmm. we can come back hopefully refreshed, faces washed, ready to go for game number two in these grand finals between Enigma Galaxy and PSG Quest. We'll see you guys in a bit.
It starts with this A person that you miss My hand draws a blank I wanna go back, back to the early days When life was an escape Now I just wait for better days I lost myself in your reality I lost myself Game number one, a bit of a disaster for Nigma Galaxy as once again the TA2000 Naga Siren completely tears them apart. Now, game number two, well, it's time to uh, figure things out and uh, see what they can come up with in the second game here. I mean, it's it, it's a tough position which they've been in plenty of times before, T. Yeah, uh, for sure. And I feel like for, for me at least, it comes to the point that like, what is going wrong for for Nigma, right i think like it, the players caliber you know easily up there you can't really doubt that i would argue that drafting does feel a little bit wayward but they have you know a very strong coaching network they obviously have enough you know concepts across the entire board that between the five players plus coach they should easily be able to align in things that works well for them and it's like coming into this series, it feels like Nigma was drafting for their own stuff rather than really caring about what PSG Quest were doing. It also happened a lot in Western Europe where Liquid, they just went on an absolute tear, just ripped through the qualifier, like sub 30 minute games time and time again. And it just felt like teams just weren't able to really understand what Liquid was doing. And if they were, they just couldn't draft and beat it. And it kind of felt like that's maybe Nigma's issue right now. It's just they have their own ideas. They have their own beliefs in the game. And it just isn't really align, aligning with like the global meta of what needs to be done. And because of that, even if they get heroes that they want to play, they are just letting through certain concepts that you know, tier one teams, teams who are competing for you know for trophies, wouldn't be letting through the entire time. And you know, it's it is difficult for them, and that's really hard to change. It's clearly been an issue for some time now. But in a grand finals, at some point that might allow them to make a pivot at the right time because you know the pressure yeah, the idea that they're click. so close to it but it just i think they need a draft to be able to actually play a game out like if they draft like they did in game one in the next two games then unfortunately i think we are moving towards a 3-0 so i really do hope yeah. that this post-game discussion of game one has allowed them to at least find a new concept that they can at least try and show us something because yeah that game one it was very yeah. absent from them have how concerning is it for you though that um, we had this best of three before against psg quest the Naga Siren came out 
and it completely obliterated them. Nagasaran and contested farm the entire game and just an easy game. And then we have the same thing happening in game one of the grand finals. The Nagasaran comes out. It can't have been a surprise for Nygma Galaxy. And Nygma Galaxy's answer was just like this lunar at the end, you know, like is is that is that a really big worry that uh, you know it's not things aren't going to change in time? Um, it's a product of the draft order change. Like we talk about it a lot. Actually, we don't talk about it enough. I don't think. But of course, when second pick had the the nerf in the drafting structure, where you only have one ban in the second phase, like a lot of drafters were really comfortable with three heroes banned in the first phase. Pick a couple of heroes, then you get a couple more bans, and then you enter your final phase. Like that was a very that was a very cozy way of drafting. Like you had a couple options to lean on. But now if you're second pick, your first four bands have to be so you know, airtight, so perfect for the game. Because when you enter the second phase, you have a single ban to make before your opponent has now locked in four heroes. Like that alone is so scary. And it means that your prep, your belief in your first pick needs to be so strong. Because yeah, there's no way to pivot once you once you enter the draft. And for Nigma, they open with the Storm Spirit. But then they went to, to Sumo's like, okay, what hero do you not want to play against mid? And of course, Noob is an exceptional Lina, but they ban their one ban is on a Lina, which I can see why. But also in hindsight, it's very easy for you know, our audience, our beloved audience, to, to think about, why don't you ban the Naga Siren? Well, you've only got one ban. Like, they chose Lina instead of Naga. And do you think you're going to default ban Naga every single time in this position? Probably not, right? And it is just, uh, maybe Nygma have never really got to the point of truly not understanding that's the wrong term but you know, unlocking their ability to to utilize the draft order because yeah it's not really working out for them so far it hasn't quite been pieced together so something they can look to uh, maybe take more advantage of but hey we get a naga siren ban this time around so at least that won't be an issue again and we're going to open up slightly differently this time we're going to have the conquer first pick for nubi galaxy and the tiny first pick for psg quest uh wait, let's take one of these each which, which one would you like Five seconds mm, remaining. you take nigma okay uh i mean it's conquer he's a pirate he does cool things um but no he simplifies your game a lot which i i think is really important um he's obviously just a very strong core hero for the most part um you can shove him off lane you can shove him mid depending on the matchup so you have that flex there and also x marks into boat is just a, a very goated combo you got defensive and aggressive capabilities on this hero so i think overall a uh, very very stable pick as your first phase and yeah really simplifies your draft and while still leaving you with that flexibility to to play the game from either position. Yeah, PSG Quest now go for a tiny and a backrider. And then Noob is an exceptional uh, backrider player, but also exceptional tiny player. And Amar, he likes to play both of these heroes as well. So I feel like there's going to be a nice little bit of flexibility between these heroes for them to at least understand a little bit from Nygma here and what they're trying to do. But all I see is aggression with these two heroes. They all they need is levels. Of course, Blink Dagger feels great for both heroes, but before then, you can break a map uh, without it, just having, having good positioning. And at least from Nigma, I think the further your point about the Kunker, it's I think Nigma's way of saying when we are the aggressors, we struggle to connect against PSG Quest. So if we just pick up a Kunker and then have additional reactionary heroes. We will always get to a point within the game that we can have the farm to take a fight and make that move. So I don't, I don't mind them making this move. It, it does show maybe a lack of, like a lack of confidence in winning lanes and winning the, the high tempo gameplay that we've seen other teams do. But they also have four picks to go down. But it's a, it's a gut, gut take I'm, I'm seeing from a first pick conquer. It, it feels a little bit more. Don't cross the river, guys. Let them come to us, and we'll win the game through a blunder they make rather than. Us having to do it. Dire team pick. Yeah, I can kind of see that logic for sure. It's a responsive hero um, and disruptor. Mm -hmm. All right, now you got X marks plus glimpse, so catch potential is very high. You know, in the Galaxy, they do get ahead in this game. Then uh, killing the heroes on the side of PSG Quest is going to be very easy with these two heroes. That's for sure. Ten seconds remaining. And in a way, I kind of like that confident drafting. You know, just being like, Five yeah, we we remaining. do want to put ourselves in a position where. We're not just going to be super defensive and try to like give ourselves, oh no, let's, you know, all the defensive capabilities we didn't have last game. Like, no, we're still going to give ourselves this, uh, this way to play from ahead. 
not just decide that we will be uh, defending the entire defensive the entire game, and our techies comes out as well. So much, much uh, bigger difference between the support duos of last game and this game on Nick the Galaxy. Yeah, they'll be able to sync up and make moves in the map if they do get an early lead. But I also thought this does somewhat align with the point I was making about being defensive because. If PSG Quest want to make smoke moves, they'll be running into the minds of techies, revealing their position as they explode. If PSG Quest blunder their initiation, they're going to be X-marked or glimpsed back into uh, a position of vulnerability. And uh, on the flip side, if they get a lead, then these heroes from ahead are so scary to play into, right? Because as they chase you down, they bring you, they're dragging you back with the, the double opening. Techies, of course, provide so much laning prowess and damage that... Yeah, I think this is allowing Nigbo just a, an option either side, but PSG Quest, they see through this. Oh, this is such a... F okay, Woo! this is a filthy combination. I'm pretty sure everyone's experienced it at some point, but there's always that duo queue stack that plays, you know, the pub scene where they, they lock in Io Marcy first pick together. They go to lane. They have so much life steal because the Marcy amps up the Io, then the Io then obviously with the overcharge and uh, tether amps up the Marcy. They... You can rush Ags as like your second item on Marcy and just break open fights. It is so potent. This is aggressive as hell. Would... L literally, my last game. I, I thought I thought you're actually like I, th I thought you'd seen my last game and you were just kind of like poking <laughs> fun at me, but I, it's obviously you haven't. But yeah, literally my last game I played against this. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it, it does feel like a very pub like co combo, but of course it's strong. You can just run around the map together and and, and get stuff done and. That's what PSG Quest kind of looks, their draft looks very like just everybody's super self-sufficient. You'd group any of these two heroes together and they're going to have a good time. Um, maybe, maybe the IO, not so much. He's just going to chill with Marcy, but any of the other three, then uh, they, they're going to have a really good time together. So these guys, aggression versus aggression. Very interesting. Which then kind of means it comes down to the lanes because if... One team has a big advantage coming out of the laning phase. I do just feel like that team's just going to win pretty handily. And that goes either way, to be clear. I think for Nygma, they do need to be careful about the heroes they picked now for the aggression. Because we praise Nygma on the, the control that they have, right? They've got area control with the, the techies with the mines, you've got the disruptor Kunker. But where's the damage when the eye mask runs in on you? Where's that perfect stun to prevent the, the right clicks coming out, the life still coming into play? And you go for a Leshrac, which can be okay against this, but also relatively vulnerable. I think this next carry does need to be someone who's happy to frontline. Is a okay, Troll's already been banned out, so that's a very good ban. What else can you go for? Mm. Sven is a little bit awkward, but it would give a lot of armor to Leshrac to allow you to frontline, but okay. Instead, they do go for like a, a semi carry that can at least take a fight earlier on. Win run to disengage from the Marcy jumps. You, in theory, shouldn't really be dying to Marcy now. Also makes it a little bit harder for Batrider to get to you. Uh, I, I like this pivot from Nigma, but they could easily be overwhelmed if they don't set up their their lanes correctly in a way where they can enter mid game with TP's available resources in play. I could easily see Tiny Batrider, Iron Marcy just grouping up. Sweeping through the map, trying to kill anything they can, and behind that, PSG Quest have last pick for TH thousand to pick any of his big carries to to just scale freely behind all of this. So you think there's going to be a Marcy in the off lane, and then a carry pick coming out for PSG Quest now? Yeah, I'd like to see Io Marcy together, and then Tiny or Bat Rider could be mid. Like you can also play Tiny or Bat Five, right? We've seen that before, especially in Eastern Europe. We've seen the Tiny Five. Um, for carries, what's Taylor 2000 really playing nowadays? I've not really perfectly kept up to date with his uh, hero pool. Let's see. Did he go I mean, for... Fair, he hasn't played much in this, uh, no, this qualifiers, at least. I, don't I mean, he can play more here. foys has to be kind of tempting here. Uh, if If it is a carry. It just depends if they want a hero that can give them an early Roshan to further punish. So like some TA that goes BKB and kills off supports at the start of the fight to overwhelm. You could also go for some... Ah, you don't really want to go for Slark too much. But Slark I also is a pretty cool lane, pretty which would give them other stuff to do. Okay, so it's going to be Marcy Carrion. All right. Yeah. I think... 
Oh, okay. I yeah. see. So we're it'll thinking be, it will be the Pos four IO, Pos three Marcy, right? Instead, it's just hey, I, Pos five IO. I, I said Marcy, Marcy carry from the beginning. I, I'm, no, not, I'm not you, joining you, did, you down you the three, my friend. No, no, you did, you did. <laughs> but I've seen IO Marcy as like off range duo be super potent, but it kind of I've seen the most for sure. But um, yeah. they're dodging the winner on a lane, right? So now you dodge the winner on a lane. You put the Marcy into safe lane. You just pick up a hero that gives you some some additional team fight. Mars back ride is a very strong lane. Tiny's a potent mid laner, I think. Enigma Galaxy will have good lanes, but once again, it's just the the ten to eighteen minute mark that I see these teams completely obliterate their opponent. Enigma, sure they have the defensive spells, but do they really have the damage to deal with the Marcy jumping you, the Tiny jumping you, the Mars jumping you? Right, it's like four initiating heroes and an Io. It's maybe too much for Enigma to. To handle, but as the game goes much later, sure, there's hope, but I just don't know if they can get there. Once again, I think PSG Quest will go even in lanes and then try and break open this map as quick as possible. I hope that both teams kind of just come out of even on the lanes and then we just get this massive battle for like 20 minutes plus until Ancient randomly explodes. That's what I'm hoping mm -hmm. for. Of course, uh, more realistically, it's, it's very difficult to kind of feel like Nimi Galaxy gained the upper hand here just because I I think this is more PSG Quest's wheelhouse. Maybe tier 2000, you know, you could stay ends to like farming up a storm and being forced to play the game a bit more on Marcy maybe is a little uncomfortable. But then you've got the noob tiny to cover. You've got the Malik Mars, you know, they're, they're very much happy in what they're doing right now. It'll certainly be interesting to see how, uh, how, how these go down. What kind of Dota each team are going to bring here. I'm feeling a lot of aggression. But will the teams be able to uh, to supply it? Same Galaxy once again with the wraparound. This time around, their level one is... Uh, it exists, unlike last game. They look, but then they... They, they respect. Checking for a ward. And they found Do you think there'll be a world where they just move the towers back just a little bit more so that you can't do the whole check tower provision and stuff like this? It feels yeah, like I mean, I always, the start to the game I is think... very scripted now. FBZ oh. is going to get called out quite badly here. The rest of the team just not in a location to really be helping them out. Lightning Storm going to bounce out across all of them. Really a storm in this situation, but unfortunately the damage is too much onto FBZ. The slow stacking up and being able to take them down. That they said, they're going to return kill onto Omar at the very least, and it should belong to Samael as well, so mm -hmm. it's quite nice. That's important. He's now only, what, like 70 odd away from a bottle. That will help Samael immensely uh, in this game. And I mean, when you look at Nygma's rotations, it really feels mm. like it's the supports that need to do the heavy lifting in the early game to give Samael access to the stacks in the jungle. Like when we see Leshrac mids, he isn't the playmaker. He is a guy that chips down the mid tower, gets his ultimate, farms ancient stacks, farms his own jungle. So it, this game is so critical that the supports are able to free from their lane, set up the side lane course for success, to then enable Sumail as well. Because if the side lanes go poorly, Sumail will be by himself, having to make his own stacks, have to do everything. And of course, Noob, his perception of the game will be, you know, see that TP go for the kill, move around the map and already. It somewhat looks like Nothing's really happened, so I can't really try and do uh, anything, but <laughs> they're farming. Right, I'm trying to milk out a bit of uh, action here, but uh, yeah, the player's not quite so uh, so eager. I'll hit their timings for sure, but uh, need a couple of levels going first before we start to see that action really taking place. But yeah, so much kill potential in every lane from both teams, and to start things off, there's a glimpse out onto Omar. Power shot comes through as well. A lot of harassment coming through to the back. I mean, with this level zero action, I, I, the level one action, I kind of feel like I'm favoring Nigma Galaxy on that one. Like, sure, you give away first blood, but it's an Io. Like, what isn't, wasn't Io going to do with first blood? And compare that to the kill on the track. Yeah, sure, it's not first blood, but you basically most of the way to the bottle then. Straight out of the lane. It's bottom side. TA2000 taking some heavy hits here. FBZ. Trying to just deal with Ducalis instead. Matthew, he is a good hero in this lane. He's able to click away from the sidelines. No one's going to be able to stop him doing that. I 
Apologize there, but I am gonna have to heavily disagree with you. Even though I got first blood, the thought of him getting closer to that bracer that he already has, additional tango is one. Like everything small for an IO in the early game is that burst of hill to give Marcy even more time in the fight, to give more like unleash opportunities. So it's not the craziest maybe okay. on face value now, but in three, four minutes time, yeah. because of that first cash injection, you're gonna see small plays that are amplified by it. And yeah, I think I guess there a first a blood for an Ayo is also a first blood to an R to, to the Marcy as well, so. Yes, exactly. Poetic. Do Going apologize. deep for the glimpse back here onto Malik. Malik does get the spear back onto Miracle though to keep himself safe for now. So once again, aggressive moves from Nippy Galaxy up here in the top lane and first three starting to take damage. It does feel like uh, Omar's not really been able to do a whole lot in the top side. Bro doesn't want to trade with him. He doesn't well, really get to lane. stay on top of anyone. Yeah. In like a core bat rider, we get additional levels. We'd maybe do a little bit more work, but the fact that Kuroki can always just glimpse you away. Bat rider needs to be on top of you. It's like the the ranged version of a primal beast. You want to be as close in to the NPC. Yep. Ooh, oh, that tore very off the mark, and that will save nobody. Down goes FBZ. TA2000 grabbing himself a very key kill here in this lane, and this is a start to the IO Marcy lane you want to be seeing. And Jakarnas did actually get the last hit again, so first blood and third blood going the way of the IO. And 600 gold in his pocket. Will he look to go for the mech rush? What's he buying? He is, yep, he's buying the one, so all the cheap items coming out and miracle they're on top Back of it up in the top lane spears out on him glimpse back but unfortunately oh. the batrider still upon miracle not the target you want to be glimpsing there and that does mean that miracle will fall now it was kuroki as well kuroki trying to get under the tower wand is there but malik is chasing spear comes through finishes the job very nicely done from quest meal down to the bottom side matthew's on the run trying to escape from ta2000 and from ducalis but they've got the dispos they've got the damage disarm it's not gonna last forever and Matthew will fall as well. Suddenly, five and one to PSG Quest in this laning phase. That was not the glimpse in top lane from Kuroki. He had a, he had one simple choice: just glimpse back the bat rider, get rid of that firefly level two on top of the mirror, on top of window, and instead he goes for Mars and as well in bot lane. Io Marcy, they have incredible move speed, and also the reason why Marcy is so good with Io, you always have a rebound target. You can keep that Tether alive, jump off the Io, get onto an enemy hero, drag them back, and. Yeah, it's the really chase cool. that potential was insane. Enigma overstepping wow. their mark in bottom lane, misplaying in top lane, and of course, PSG Quest would be very happy with these uh, small blunders that are coming out from the play uh, laning phase. Are there any stacks at least? Okay, so Enigma just made some double stacks in the bottom jungle. They are starting to think about the the main game plan for the mid lash rank. It was something I highlighted earlier. The supports from Enigma, they need to be active to be able to then make stacks and provide Leshrac a good start to this game. Bottom side, FBZ. Should be okay here with the X marks coming down, but again, they're just forced out of the lane time and time again. FBZ is last hits are likely to start suffering from this. Goes back onto Malik. Malik though turns around with a rebuke and now Omar gets upon Kuro. Great. He doesn't have a glimpse now to help himself out, but they do have a nice shackle to hold back the Batrider. And uh, Miracle Power Shot not going to connect, and now Kuro might be punished for going a little too far forward here. Gets up the Thunderstrike, but that's not going to make a difference. Will be another kill up in the top side for PSG Quest, but Miracle is going to get to hit some creeps for a while, at least with those heroes being so low. As uh, FBZ being jumped one here. Matthew comes across, though. Well, it's a little explosion. Samael coming on through, but with Noob joining up to his team, forcing back Samael, FBC, and Matthew with the uh, Avalanche. Great defensive ability. Omar. Bottle refill mid for Samael. They're really it's kind of not confident in just standing here with the edict going and trying to take down that tier one tower. He's chipping at it. He's poking at it. Ooh, they are jumping onto mid lane. It's a male 
getting beaten on down here, but this time. not as quick as Omar is. Yeah, he just gets absolutely destroyed. No noob to help out with the toss, so they're able to get the kill. The minutes, wisdom runes. I think they just went one for one. Actually, the bottom one's still up, but uh, yeah, no one's going to go threaten that. I was trying to think what, what build the uh, PS, uh, sorry, tier 2000 would go on this. Uh... Okay, they're trying to poke Noob a little bit here. They have the glimpse the entire time, and he did miss the toss. He should be dead. Yeah. Yeah, he's gone. Nice. I was thinking, That's a really big kill. Yeah, carry, so it's, um, has been chained up now a little bit. Yeah, he's been helped. So again, supports, they made the moves. I think he's going for the Battle Fury. That will allow him to scale into this game. Like, here, I think like Battle Fury, Ags, BKB, MKB would be pretty cool with the Satanic, but Malik uses the arena. Arena? Yeah, coming <laughs> down. They want to bring down the Leshrac here, but Leshrac has got himself a little bit of healing coming through with the Chikars flying on a cross. They are going to be able to finish off some mail. Kuroki looking in trouble as well. Can he deal the damage to Malik before he falls? Power Shot catches him out. Very nicely timed. X marks plus the power shot coming on through, and now the focus fire out onto Omar as well. But Noob and Ducalis coming across. Will they be able to stop the miracle just drive buying Omar here? I'm not sure they will. Tree connects as slow as there. The power shot turns around the toss forward onto TA2000 with the unleash, and it'll tear through Miracle. The Nigma Galaxy carry taken out of the equation. Oh, that's pretty cool. It's like the, the Marcy's jumping on top of the tiny, and then tiny Marcy's jumping, then tossing further into the fight. and. If Enigma, relatively good reaction there to, to get the double kill, but of course Miracle then has to, in such an aggressive position, will eventually go down, and each of thousand of all heroes has to get the kill there, so it is going to slightly uh, uh, Enigma a little bit, but you can see the supports there with Sumail, they know he's the strongest hero on the map. I think the next move here is to go to bot tower, you want to take away the mid, the bot tower, remove the... The rotations from PSG Quest in their own uh, jungle force them to tier 2 TPs and prevent them from just hitting their stride and farm. They weren't able to do it in the last game and this time around Nigma they are they are punching up a little bit more and yeah they're, they're making that exact move there. They're smoked up. There's no vision here in the jungle for PSG Quest. They have scan available. It doesn't look like they're aware of it. They are just making their normal moves back to the jungle. Will they be able to find anyone? There is no static storm on Disruptor. There is no proximity mines on techies. How badly do they find need to find Ducalis here? Uh, they need to find someone and they Ooh. found nothing. Oh, they have the yeah, X. Yeah, is coming on the side. The X is going to help out a lot. Tier 2000 trying to run him in circles X. here. X marks does come down though. Samel ready to commit with the damage. And uh, they will be able to tear through the Marcy at the very least. But will they be able to get any revenge on the side of PSG Quest? Roshan coming through and just beating up Kuro for some reason. As uh, on the sidelines, Ducalis makes his way round the back of the pit. No safety there. Double kill for Samel. Samel really starting to get going in this game. Look at that net worth. Yeah. All because Malak just didn't have, uh, wasn't really in position to help them out. And I think PSG Quest, they'll be a little bit upset that they weren't able to kind of predict that movement. It felt a little bit like forced from Nygma. Not forced, but expected. Like you shove out scrappy. midway. Yeah. Like you see three heroes mid, they're pushing out frantically. There's a smoke in the inventory. Like surely the, the natural move is to smoke the bot lane. I think other teams might have been able to predict that, but PSG Quest, very comfortable in this series so far. So maybe not. No, hitting their, their best reactions, but for sure, Nigma, they are going to capitalize on that, get the kills, and yeah, continue to punish PSG's quest where possible. Early tier 1 towers are falling. And I think for me, what is FPZ going? So he is looking to go for the blade mail first on the Kunker. Of course, against Batrider, against Tiny, it will annoy them a little bit in regards to that initiation. But it doesn't really affect Marcy because of the amount of heal she can provide to herself with the IO on top. There's going to be more of a Batrider deterrent than anything else. Yeah. The male hanging out on the bottom side. Tier 2000 with Ducalis. Keep an eyes, but obviously, you know, with this Battle Fury build, Tier 2000 going to want to take things a little bit slower. Maybe not run into every engagement. Fists flaming, lungs screaming. So, yeah. Especially not that Leshrac, who is just so damn strong right now. And this is where the game gets awkward for me. Uh, for when I see, like, Nickham's hero pool. Because like early towers they fall nicely, but you'd never really want to go towards a tier two with this lineup until you have 
two big items and like the Windrunner barely about to complete Maelstrom right the the Kunker mm. a Blade Mail. like these aren't items that give you strength and living in the PSG quest side of the map it's you kind of want to continue hitting your own creeps continue scaling just a bit more and Sumo we've rarely seen this from the mid Lesh racks but he's gone straight for the shroud he's trying to brush off all of the early game damage of Mars Tiny and Batrider in the hope to give his team some presence in the fights and if he gets found by a Marcy he will just get ripped down by the right clicks and he's gonna have to be careful he's opted right. for anti-magic rather than a Yule Scepter potentially for disengaging the fight or just a straight yeah, BKB. Yeah, was something I was really expecting this game, especially because it just kind of gives you that ability as I was kind of getting jumped here a little bit, should just be dead, although getting over the cliff, making it awkward and forcing Miracle to come in and use a focus fire, but that's still for Omar. And uh, yeah, like, I'm not sure. I, I feel like the Yules to follow up from this might be big. We'll see what he does I end up the, going the for. Be just being able to Yules and Marcy to kill the Io seems good. The Shroud Pool will be fine if he brings oh his team God. into the engagements and they're stealing such a massive amount Mega of stacks stack. and this is incredible stuff from from Nigma. but like this shroud build when you buy this on Leshrac, you you're basically telling your team i want to be in the middle of the fights because in 10 minutes time when mars and marcy are able to do a little bit more physical damage same thing with tiny once he has an echo saber this build won't feel as good but in this window of the game if they can utilize it if they can throw Leshrac in he should be able to last a little bit longer, but... Oh, no, man, noob, they're trying to set himself. up here. It's a big target, but of course he has just bought that Eternal Shroud. We'll see if it helps out. Big Arena on the backlands as well, catching out the three of them. Maybe Galaxy in some trouble here. They need to find a way to fight back into it. Samael slowly, oh. but getting surely taken out of the fight. And it's a triple kill for TA2000, running through them all right now. FBZ and Miracle still trying to fight up into this one. They really want to finish off at least somebody here. Looking over towards Noob, jumping in, throwing in the damage, and it will be enough. FBZ does finish the job, but it's a small, small payment for a very costly fight. Oh, he'd have lived if he just didn't press toss. He tossed him onto the blade mill and then there wasn't enough heal from the iron. And we we're talking about this less rap build, what it can do, and he kind of survived the start of the fight, sure, but yeah, like I was a bit concerned about this. Marcy just enters in, unleashes onto them, and <laughs> they're going to be deleted. Like, going Manic's again for the reset, down. though. No yeah, glimpse. glimpse used, kinetic field yep. used. It's not going to be enough. Mm. Tier 2000 just rushing for the BKB. Only two components away, and how do you stop a BKB Marcy from from taking the fight? Sure, Windrunner can press Windrunner and just disengage, but everyone else in your team, if they show, if they get on, you know, jumped by this Marcy, they will be deleted. They need to keep applying pressure. They need to find a way to stall this out because right now this Marty is really farming up. Yeah, they're still trying to keep up that tempo, keep up the aggression, play on the other side of the map. And I they think they, really want relative, to give over the timings. Like they're doing a relatively good job, right? Like if you look at the net worth, top four, three of them are Nigma courts, right? Like they are scaling into the game. It's it's just they need a little bit longer to scale whilst a tiny to Mars, even if they don't have the best net worth. Their initiations, that team fight in the first 20 25 minutes can be so disruptive with only you know, a blink dagger to their name. And that's why I think this yeah, net worth. If we were to somehow magic up a uh, impact to net worth ratio, then mm -hmm. I'm sure Tiny and Mars would be kind of pretty, pretty low down on that ratio. Meanwhile, something like a Leshrac or, you know, a Nagasar will be really high up in that ratio where they need a lot yeah. of net worth to have their impact. Mm. Malik was going for a mage there. Further providing that that front line. He's not rushed the blink dagger. He understands that his master is quite farm intensive and his tiny's already doing the initiation for him. Yeah, just a big direct answer to the uh to the Lesh rack as well. The one problem they're having, he gets a direct answer to. Makes a lot of sense to me. Smoke up from Nigma. It's Fair play to Enigma, they have done, outside of some awkward spell usage, their general map play has been much better in this game, right? Like, they've identified the strongest hero in their team, the supports are making moves in the map, it's it's not as if they're all stuck back farming, you know, just waiting for timings to occur, they are trying to at least dictate a little bit of the tempo. It doesn't help that they've smoked into nothing a couple of times, but you can feel like the initiative has increased from game one to game two.
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they've kind of put themselves in that position where they drafted very aggressively and said, we want to play on the front foot. We want to punch forward rather than trying to dodge or defend. And so far, it's looked more comfortable for them, has to be said. As I said, it's always going to look comfortable when you have some supports which can make that happen for you. And Smell had a pretty good time mid as well, thanks to that. So it's all kind of adding up at the moment for them. But again, it's we haven't really had that game deciding fight yet. I think the closest we had to it was probably in the middle lane, which actually PSG Quest did get the upper hand on. So mm. I think fight for concern Nixon, there. Their game deciding fight will come when BKB is on Windrunner and Ags is on Kunko. Until then, they'll be poking as much as possible to force PSG Quest to overlap their farm. They get oh, the glimpse huge on the glimpse. island. Yeah. Yeah. Was this disruptor one of the best counters to an eye in the game? You relocate in, you can glimpse him back. If you're trying to relocate out, you can glimpse him back in. It is one of the one to one best counters against disruptor. Preemptively, you can static stop one to the relocate as well. Finding noob, noob trying to go for the toss, but miracle just bouncing around him. <laughs> Very nicely done to completely dodge out the tiny yeah. spell. I mean, they're playing the map nicely. Like they are buying the picks. They have division the down. They're doing. You know, quite a lot to, to get themselves to this point where they can fight and of course Miracle with the Gleipnir is able to become a, an additional pick-off option for Enigma. The PSG quest though top tower is under does feel like they are minutes away from wanting to be the aggressors they have. BKB soon on Marcy, Blink soon on the Mars, like that is going to be go time for them. And who most locally, whoever wins the next fight, if it is near the Rosh Pit on the Radiant side, Aegis will go to that team as well. Yeah, again, these uh, these deciding objectives are yet to really come to play. But so far, we got actually definitely getting the advantage over PSG LGD. And we're going to be looking for a BKB on Miracle, looking for Lashrek's next item. He's already just picked up this Kaya and Sanj, so it's a decent timing for him. Again, still lacking in the kind of anti-physical realm. Though Marcy still potentially could get upon this Lesh Rack in a fight and take him down with like one or two rounds of Unleash. That's always got to be considered here. But of course, Marcy would really like the BKB before trying to do that. Otherwise, it is a bit of a suicide play. It's 200 gold away. I expect it to easily be able to delay that one out. The RTP top lane. Oh, you they say that. Thousand. Miracle immediately focus firing at the Marcy. Marcy, she doesn't really know what to do with herself. She's standing here. Heels They're coming up from the IO. Go for the TP away with the nice rebound. Mm. Matthew doesn't connect in time. Oh, the Relo. Coming in and saving the day in the end. And uh, yeah, Marcy Farewell to will survive. IO. Salutes for the, for the IO. Yeah, the Carlos played that very well. He didn't panic press relocate straight away because, of course, any... Uh, any TP cancel will stop that relocate. The Gleipnir caught him at the start of the fight. He waited, and then when he knows the stuns aren't in play, he will then connect on the relocate at the very end. So yeah. some some IO players there would have instantly hit relocate to try and disengage, but respecting the fact that this Gleipnir is in play. Yeah, BKB such a good item, is Gleipnir. available. Oh, they instantly get a gem as well. So BKB timing with the gem. Arena comes out though, Kuro is caught inside of it, but he's also kind of caught inside the static storm as well. TA2000 with the BKB comes on in, looking at Samael, and here's the physical damage coming down onto the Leshrac, which he just can't fight into. Omar throws down the lasso as well, the Leshrac is gone. Get the return kill to Malik, of course, but whoa, 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 Miracle through the back lines, finds a kill with Matthew, and brings Ooh. down the Marcy as well, and Miracle gets another. Okay. No Leshrac, no problems. I mean, so far, all the doubters in the uh, in audience, probably, you know, in, in chat. I can't say audience, I'm not trying to say it, it just sounded so wrong. <laughs> Our off-camera conversation can't bleed into this one, but all the doubters, they're... Like, Nick, we're winning this game. Miracle, he's, you know, quietly pulling quite a shift. Other than that little bit of an overextension in mid to try and get an additional kill that killed him off, he has been sniping off the aggression of PSG Quest and... I think Marcy, her entry to the fight with this BKB, you know, contained inside that arena with that cleave of the battle fury, it felt like they, you know, more should be going down, but they just weren't able to rip through more than one hero. And yeah, Miracle just playing quite a stellar game so far on this Windrunner. As soon as uh, he gets the BKB, only 100 gold away, it will give him even more confidence to, to get on top of this uh, on top of this Windrunner. Oh, sorry, the, the, Marcy, there we go. Marcy, yeah. Got there in the end. 
Uh, there's a miracle effect, which, uh, you know, sure, TA2000's able to just run in and kill for the Lash, but uh, then the real carry comes out. So, back to the drawing board for PSG Quest. We need to think of another way to take these engagements, which doesn't result in just getting run through by this Wind Ranger. But it's a problem with these dual court drafts. You know, you jump on one, you get killed by the other. I am surprised that PSG Quest were so like, absent in their aggression. I expected with like, Winner being the carry, the Kunkun not really having any farm from the offlane, I expect them to just seek out a couple more fights. But I guess tier 2000. I don't was... think. Hmm? I'm gonna say, I don't think I've ever seen a 0 and 3 noob tiny before. Like, yeah. ever. I, I feel like this like, 3 minute, 3 20 minute window for PSG Quest was exceptional for them to be the aggressors like io can sync up with a bat rider with the lockdown of a tiny mars and just keep poking down nigma but it never really happened and they just sat back and because they sat back it allowed nigma to to make these additional moves and it forced psc quest to have to think about their own timings a little bit more but you know this is one of those things where maybe t2000 is controlling the team a little bit more in this game he's saying i think you might lose the fight even if you are you have all the damage, I'd rather secure my own game before you might lose it for me with your aggression. It's hard to say. Ooh, hard FPZ finds the bat. That'll be an easy kill on to Omar eventually. Port cutting waves. Can't do that around these parts, sir. Another kill going to Nidmi Galaxy. Yeah, really waiting to see Noob kind of enter the game. He does finish off this BKB now. He's going to have that for the next engagement. But uh, a long way off any sort of extra damage as uh, Malik forced to pop this arena to try and get away from Miracle. Miracle just got to follow him through the arena, out the other side, and just focus fire into his face. Yep, bulwark all you like, friend. It is over. Miracle on a mega kill streak now. Absolutely tearing it up on Wind Ranger at the moment. He's, he's having an incredible game, like we said earlier. Constantly finding the pickoffs, and it will further get better for him as he gets the Aghanims, even being more elusive. Boosting the damage he takes, getting that invisibility. And yeah, Aegis and Sumo. Didn't really mention the fact that he went Kaya Sanji. He has not got the yours, but they're getting jumped. Don't forget, he has the Aegis, so he will have two lives here. Yeah, and Kuro's there just immediately dropped down the Static Storm upon him, but it doesn't seem to make a difference. Samel will be losing his first life. Can Wind Ranger get herself over here in time? And will FBZ be able to help out? He has got the Torrent Storm to work with. Gonna throw it on down here. Matthew jumping on in to help out as well. Blast off on top. Nuba going for the toss back on Smell. Trying to isolate him with TA2000. Allow TA2000 to do the damage, but FBZ comes through and now he's got the Glacknick coming out. Miracle with a Focus Fire brings down. No! The reload got the Marcy out, but everybody else on the side of PSG is just getting absolutely torn apart. Malik trying his best to hold his ground, but Io's about to come flying back in all by himself, so he'll tether up to the Mars and wait nice for the shackle. sweet release of death. Beautiful Shackle coming out as well, yep. Ducalis slowly getting ticked down here. Another kill for the Miracle as they take down everybody except the Marcy on the side of PSG Quest. Yeah, and the fact that you have this... Like, because the Mars had to use Arena Bottom for Miracle's aggression, he then doesn't have the Arena for the top fight where if he was able to contain heroes underneath that tier 2, it probably is a completely different story, and in tier 2000, he has to be so respectful when his fight starts. If this window is able to lock onto him, he can't take the fight. He cannot kill off the Marcy until he has like an MKB or some additional you know, lockdown to prevent Renona just focus firing the entire time. And quite an ambitious start to the fight with Nigma, using that Aegis in that way, but it still leads them to winning the fight because it just allowed Miracle to run all the way from bot all the way to top via mid. It was. Quite the journey for Miracle to get there in the end. Nice relocate from Dakaras to at least preserve something in the fight. Lasso Sound out Kariki. onto Kuro and uh, yeah, tier 2000 and Dukalis very quickly flying their way over to help out with that kill. Just dying on a bit of a warding mission. Hashtag just pause five things. Yeah. Don't forget, Fish Quest did give away the gem, right? Like The entire vision game that they were trying to lean on was completely removed when E2000 fed it away after like 20 seconds of holding it. The Matthew has been thoroughly enjoying on the techies being able to just control them up a little bit more. Of course, another reason why Beast Quest hasn't been the most punishing team with the uh, aggressive heroes that they have. The map has been very dark for them. Yeah, it's been a long night. 
still, I mean, in silver linings, you managed to take the Aegis away. You forced the reset. It only cost you a lost fight in a tier two tower. It's it's, it's bad, but could be worse, I suppose. Guess she quest to get to stay around a little longer, but I'm not sure how much more they can make happen. I just don't know how much this Marcy can really do in the fights. How's the Marcy been for you? How's your Marcy been experience? Uh, rate it out of five stars, please. Mm, two stars. No. Yeah. Just the fact that when I think of character carry matchup, pre MKB, we're not only just demolishing what tier 2000 is trying to achieve. At some point, that might overwhelm because, of course, Marcy with MKB, some Daedalus Satanic, you are going to be an absolute raid boss. But right now, Miracle's got his number. He is not afraid to text him every single day. You up? No, he actually FaceTimes. What are you doing? Like, such more social pressure oh. to be able to answer that phone call. Yeah. That's some PTSD fear. That's <laughs> seeing the incoming <laughs> FaceTime calls. Oh no. Please Unknown don't. number. Like, what the hell is this? In the galaxy. Heading down to the bottom lane right now. Miracle. Only one not really that close to them. You tipping up to the top side. Oh, cancel it. Run down to the bottom side. Meanwhile, the rest of the team just getting stuff done. Going for this tier 2 tower. And PSG Quest are not looking to contest it whatsoever. Miracle's even having to show himself mid. He's, he's completely fearless in this game. Whole team showing bottom. He shows mid. Knows that no one's going to jump him. Knows that they're not going to jump the team bottom. And if they do, he can get there in time. So, yeah, it kind of just shows you what kind of position Navy Galaxy are in right now. It makes sense for his positioning. Because he's telling PSG Quest, like, if you want to go jump my team, and I'm showing mid, I'll be there in, like, around 10 seconds, right? If you're playing in the middle of the map with Windrunner, you can be in any part so, so quickly because of that Windrun. And I don't think Miracle wants to be the one starting a fight unless he's finding some IO or Batrider who's isolated. Because he, his main yeah. goal is to focus fire this this uh, this um, Marcy, sorry. Marcy. If you don't focus fire the Marcy, you're, you're losing the fight, but the fight's going to be... Relatively Ooh, it's difficult. a good target, but the follow-up's not really there for the Navy Galaxy. A little bit split as uh, up at the top side, they're actually going aggressive here. Wind Ranger trying to set up onto Malik here. Miracle just trying to bring down the Mars. Mars forced to BKB, but still the right click's just coming on through from the wind. It's taken a long time to kill him, but he will eventually fall. Me on TA2000, unleashing in the middle of the fight. BKB, everything being used to try and bring down FBZ. FBZ, they're so damn tanky. The Mars gets dragged away by Tiny. the relocate, and they will leave Noob for dead. So it will just be the two clean kills for Nygma Galaxy. Very ambitious there from PSG Quest, right? Like, they're trying to utilize the relocate. They're trying to maybe go on a Windrunner who is being a little bit greedy on the map, right? But this greed is not getting punished at any point. They don't have the lockdown for Miracle. They don't have the, the damage on her. And it's like they have an arena, but the spear, BKB is still in place, so it doesn't do anything. And he joins the fight at the very end whilst Marcy's getting relocated out. Like, Marcy just does not do the damage right now. She doesn't do anything. It's, it's super very underwhelming. Absent, yeah. Like, I and Marcy is a, is a combination that from laning phase, you just keep going forward on the map, but they've not been able to go forward at all. Every time they've gone, they've just been picked apart by Sumo standing up front, buying enough time, the control of the Kunker. The glimpse backs of Disruptor and yeah, PSG Quest. I'm very surprised, but you know, happy to say it because it means we're going to have a more than three games in this grand final, most likely. Hey, oh, it's looking like a tenner that way. That rider getting completely caught out there by the reactions of Kuro. Stopping the, uh, the flame lasso from coming out. Now FBZ can look to finish off the job here. Trying to go for just a cheeky solo play. I'm maybe going to set Noob up for something here. Who's still yet to get a kill on this tiny, which is again absolutely mind blowing for me. I, Noob has been such like a consistently good mid laner for me. Every time I see him, he's, he's always you know getting stuff done. But this game completely shut down. Rotates the pawn in the early game and then just shut out entirely. Bottom side, another day, another focus fire. This time looking at the Marcy, the enemy carry just being run down. Miracle, he's not stopping, but maybe he should. The arena is out, and that'll be Ooh. enough to force back the Wind Ranger, but. Man, it forced out so much with that high ground push. And now, Samael, the doors have been opened. The red carpet's been laid out for him. And he's going to just stride right up onto that high ground. 
Miracle is just playing so aggressive this game, and maybe at some point he gets punished, but for now, oh my, he oh, blinks Omar. in and he doesn't find anything! Oh, blocked Miracle's by the trees, the vision just Ooh. not working out right now. PSG, they got a bit fruity with it. Tried to go for some IO Marcy, fancy schmancy, cool combo. Would love to see it work, but at the same time, concept just doesn't seem to have pulled out, pulled, pulled, really provided any sort of substance for them. I mean, the Marcy's actually done okay. It's 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 mostly the tiny who's really struggled to have an impact this game. And Ducala is going to try and get away. The right clicks won't be enough to finish the job. I know lives, but uh, Tiny will not. Another death for Noob. Oh, that's a big glimpse. X glimpse. <laughs> they catch him with the torrent as well on the way through, so extra star points for that one. Something with the torrent, then glimpsing me even further back. And uh, top side, I, I think Miracle might kill this Mars again for like the eighth time in a row. Here we go. Focus far and cooldown for one more second. Shackle missed. Will it cost? Malik goes for the TP away. Miracle moves around the back, but it won't be enough to finish the job. Meanwhile, inside the enemy base, buildings are falling. They certainly are. Edict do be an hell of an ability, although Omar comes in, Lasso comes out, Arena is there as well, every being thrown onto this Letrak. They know that Miracle is nowhere to be seen, but Omar's the first one to fall here. The damage from the Letrak is still pretty darn severe, and they are not doing enough to finish the job here. Tier 2000 is going to fall, Malik's going to go down as well. They'll look over towards Omar, Omar getting away, but the GGs are called. The game goes to Nigma Galaxy 1-1. One, one. Okay, all right. And after that game one, it didn't look too promising for Nigma Galaxy, but this second game, of course, Miracle on his win run, absolutely popping off. Of course, you can you can reference so many other points, but I feel like the way that this win run played the map was exceptional and credit to the supports of Nigma as well. We mentioned that in the pregame that they have to be active in this game. If they're not active, if they play the stationary kind of game, then I think Sumo will suffer and their access to the mid game will be hindered. But they were active. They kept making moves on the map. They kept trying to find engagements. And then because of that, Miracle never had to be the guy who went, in, went into the fight first, right? He just absorbed all the information, saw everything that was happening, and then went for the pickoffs, went for the kills, kept scaling, and just never allowed PSG Quest to feel like they could really ball up and utilize this Iron Marcy. So a much better game from Nigma. And they replicated it again. It's they're so volatile that maybe they can, but yeah, we're, we're going to a, a game three with no team looking to close it out instantly. Yeah, yeah, we're definitely going to get at least to a game four here, which is pretty cool. So uh, yeah, it looks like uh, we've got a finals on our hands. I mean, Galaxy Ooh. taking the second game here. Very nice performance from uh, from Miracle, from Samail, and uh, yeah, the whole gang really looking like they're playing as a team. Very nice to see. PSG Quest, meanwhile. Didn't really fit anything together. You know, the Iomasi thing, it was cool. Like, it did get kills early on. It was a threat for a while. But uh, unfortunately, you know, this, this tiny in the middle lane doing absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing at all. Completely answered and not able to find any point in the game to kind of jump in and get pickoffs and start his game going. Malik as well on the Mars, just unable to really start the fights he wanted. So, uh, yeah, PSG Quest do drop a game here. So, we are now looking at 1-1 in these grand finals. Who's going to make it through to Dream League Season 23? We don't know, but we're going to find out after this short break.
Hello and welcome back to Dream League Season 23, closed qualifiers for the MENA region, where we are now getting into game number three of PSG Quest versus Nigma Galaxy. Are currently 1 1 tied up in this best of five anybody series. I mean, pretty much just back to a best of three now, I guess, T. Yeah, it is, but also, you know, Twitch chat. I can feel the movement, you know, that previous game, the back chest per minute were insane. Like, I have to get my own out as well because, like, it's just, ugh, it's crazy to think that in game one, you didn't really want to read Twitch chat. It was just a, just wasn't a nice place. And now game two, it's a toxic place. It's a haven of positivity. It's wonderful. Like, oh, the, the emotions, they're flowing result after result. We are going to a game three. It is very delightful. Uh, of course, for the region that we aren't just having an absolute walk in the park from either side, but we do have draft now for game three. Nigma Galaxy respecting the Naga Siren, PSC Quest respecting the Kunker and the Leshrac, actually. So, wow. we'll see what happens in game yeah. three. Get ye gone, Kunker and Leshrac, which means we are going to have some of the highly contested heroes likely going to snake their way through this banning phase right now. Of course, three more bans still to go between the two of them, so could still get taken out, but uh, we'll see what they consider doing. Most, most pointedly, Pen still hanging around. Ooh, Navy Galaxy, they, they want it. They want it. PSG Wait, Quest. Banned, mate. It's banned first. By oh, no, it did get first banned. Oh, yeah. I'm completely blind, apparently. No, it's okay. Damn it. I got so excited. I was, I was, I was so ready for the Kuroki Chen. That would have really taken me back. No Chen's getting through today. Absolutely not. Uh, Brewmaster and Doom taken out of the pool by Nigma Galaxy as well. And PSG Quest, one more ban to go from them. What shall it be? Mm, more importantly, what do they want to open with? I don't think they're opening Tiny again. That did not look pretty. Shard even going to come out. Give him a bit of save. Strongest support off the patch bar Chen. Yeah, the key change for Nigma because they're back to second pick now. The difficulty of their game one draft was they they used their single ban in the second phase on Alina, giving up the Naga. Hence, why you see Naga thought about now in the first phase bans because they don't want to enter second phase going. We respect this hero as a counter to our opening, but also Naga Siren, right? Like just get rid of it early on. Don't allow it to be a problem. Now for Nigma. They picked Storms for it last time in here. I don't know if they'll rush back for that. If they do, they probably would ban Puck out of respect. Um, there are a lot of options for sure. You'd hope so. Yeah. The uh, last Puck v Storm game was uh, not very pretty for the uh, for the Storm, so I'm not forgetting that one anytime soon. Yeah. I, mean, I, I do just love the Shadow Demon pick. The only worry I have with it is sometimes it can make your draft a little predictable, but at the same time, like, you're predicting something which is really good, so it doesn't really matter. Um, you know, you can grab the Marana as the other support. They're going to combo together pretty nicely. You can grab yourself a Luna, which, of course, PSG Quest love playing. So these are things which Enigma Galaxy will have in their mind, but at the same time, there's not a whole lot you can do about it other than just make sure that you've got strong timings. Especially Luna, right? Like, she's just not a super counterable hero in her current state. You just need to make sure that you can't let her abuse her timings. And the only way of doing that is to make sure that you have a team which is strong throughout the entire game. So, like, the solution to Luna is basically just, like, draft good and make sure you have, like, enough damage to deal with her, which uh, kind of most drafts should have anyway. Yep. And for Enigma, at least, they go for the Disruptor. We saw it in the previous game. Kroki had a high contribution to the kill score in that game there were a couple moments with some glimpses did net some awkwardness in laning phase but outside of that when his team was playing forward playing the entire map it did of course look very good and i think if nick can play with that logic as well where they have the ability to you know move around the map have a little gander of course the shop to will you know, thrive in these engagements i'm looking at matthew's hero to complement that sumel's hero to to enable that support or double support plus mid lane aggression ESG quest banning out the Enigma. So what what are the weaknesses of Disruptor which you need to cover with the uh with the next support pick then? I think Disruptor hates playing from behind. Like, as soon as mm -hmm. EQBs come online, kill threat is in play, Disruptor's kinetic field doesn't feel good, static storm get brushed off. You're always looking, oh, when do I get my agonims? And it's really about setting up the game that you have the ability to aggressively smoke and feel like you can take over areas and utilize glimpse nicely to get those free kills as the enemy team's positioning isn't perfect. Like Disruptor is 
best at punishing a wide map. When people want to farm every lane, they TP to top, but now fights are happening bottom, disruptors dragging you back around everything, so... You just need to ensure that your, your heroes create those opportunities. So like DK, for example, does create those opportunities through his tower pressure. Like, if he sits in a lane, he's going to be in that dragon form, poking down that tower, forcing heroes to react to him. If they're not, he's uh, going to be in a smoke with a blink dagger, looking to find kills. So yeah, DK does fit the bill of giving Disruptor some, uh, some purpose in the map. Yeah, and of course, uh, Vision's a weird one in Dota. We don't really talk about a ton in the draft, but, you know, tanky heroes kind of do just give you vision on the front lines as well. Having someone who isn't afraid of getting initiated can show and can poke and blink into fog and not be too worried about just being 100 to 0. So DK does certainly do that job for you. And just reinforcing your point there is, uh, yeah, wow. Uh, PSG Quest, same support you as game one, I believe. Third Demon, Crystal Maiden. Get me some catch on my supports. That's what they feel like they were missing last game. It's nice fight. I saw how active they were in the early game of the last one. But these heroes, they do what the uh, the lanes need, right? Like a Shadow Demon will set up the off laner to be able to have a nice time farming in front of a tower. The Crystal Maiden will be aggressive in the safe lane to then leave the safe lane and make moves. So, like the six minute rune, expect SDN Crystal Maiden to be able uh, to go to that fight and. Yeah, the aggressive and defensive capabilities of the heroes are very good. Of course, if the game does go south, then these heroes can just be very easily picked off. And if Nigma are to go for some additional backline jumpers, but in a stable game where they dictate a little bit of that pacing, it is so hard to fight into both of these heroes. And we throw the puck into the mix once again, and the confidence to pick puck into the DK. Of course, DK with the blink can get that instant stun onto puck is a, a known counter, but noob. Very confident with this, and the same three heroes from game one that demolished Nigma in the early game are in play. They want to do it all again, and so I just want to point out here, Naga Siren banned out in the first phase, so PSG Quest will have to go for a different carry this time around. We'll see what that ends up being. Won't be the exact yeah. same draft, they can't do the exact same thing, but <laughs> Naga, obviously, there's many Naga adjacent heroes, you know, Terra Blade or something non-illusion-y, but still scaling if you want that instead. Medusa, perhaps? Yeah, I like... Still like Medusa. I think Lifestealer in these games can also feel very good. I think Lifestealer, now that you have life to the build, makes the hero quite fun to see. Like, it used to be very boring, because mm -hmm. it's like, you buy arm, you buy Deso, haha, <laughs> Basher. It's like, boring. Now you've got like Radiance builds, you could still go for the Desso if you want to in like a random scenario, not really seen as much. There's the Aghanim, so you can jump inside aggressively. Lifestealer players like buying BKB now, so they have like a million seconds of debuff immunity. <laughs> it's like, very silly. But you yes. have to be careful. True. Right. Like that's because like right now for Nigma, if they pick a support duo that also not support duo, but two heroes that don't pressure that, then I could see Lifestealer being an option. But now with the win runner, Miracle. Quest is of course, loves the, the uh, back, back to just back. per minutes. Yeah, yeah. He like, oh, of course, when the uh, the Twitch chat analysis, you know, game one back just per minute were like what, like 22, 24, were not very high. Game two kind of peaked around about you know, four hundred twenty. It was insane. Four twenty four. It was it was incredible high numbers. So I think, of course, we were on a. It gives them that confidence, and uh, not the best. I want to see game, someone though, just. Around. I want to see someone just executed though. I want to see the dragon tail come out and then just like the sharpshooter and power shot just full, full charge into the face. Just preferably a nice tanky hero, just absolutely blasted. But that's Lifestealer coming out from PSG Quest, as talked mm. about. It's yep. a great pickup. Uh, used to be pretty rubbish against Wind Ranger these days with that Aghanim Scepter. Does that give you a bit of life in this matchup? Yeah, I realized when I spoke about Lifestealer that maybe being. A deterrent because of Windrunner. Like I was a little bit outdated when I said that. Like I yeah, I agree. I think Lifestyle actually is fine into this. Because you go Radiance and have natural evasion, Windrunner needs to think about MKB, which he doesn't want to do. On top of that, you have the Ags like you were mentioning. So if the game does get a little bit spicy, just jump inside the Windrunner and fully disarm her if she can't now continue with her focus fire. So yeah, I think Lifestyle easily plays into this matchup quite nicely. Um, you can brush off the aggression of a hoodwink and a disruptor early on. Like, the bushwhack is a very 
a slow projectile that kind of comes down the lane onto you. Maybe if it's from the fog, yeah. it's a different story. But if you're in vision, you know, these pro players, they aren't going to you know, skip out on pressing rage there. But I think, yeah, PSG Quest will be very happy with this. And yeah, maybe we get to see some infest bombs. Like, Life sitters nowadays don't often Ooh. jump inside those elusive initiating heroes too often nowadays, right? Like it's often the hold the infest for the fight to, to prolong it. We need that health burst to save a hero. But I could see a world where you smoke up with a life steal inside a puck and go find some kills. Yeah, definitely could be a pretty strong option here, especially with Shadow Demon and Crystal Maiden running around the map together, you know, if they're strong enough to be able to land the catches, then uh, yeah, when PSG Quest, if they do get ahead, then it can be very difficult for Nimbi Galaxy to play this map, which is what PSG Quest like, is what we've seen them be confident with. Now, the final pickup for them, they'll need to grab themselves an offplaner. So, Galaxy, they've banned out those kind of stunning, stompy dudes who can sit on the front line. Doom's also been then taken out of the equation as well. Could be another Mars game if he's not too uh, shaken from the last round of Mars. I think it should be good. And yeah, I'll go for it. Always important to be able to pick a hero, even if you just had a lackluster performance on it. If it's still a good game for it, then you need to be able to not be afraid to go for it again. And yeah, Mark says, don't worry, guys. Put put me in, coach. I'm ready. So Nimbi Galaxy now, final pick for them. They're going to need to get themselves a probably mid laner, possibly off laner. I think most likely mid. What are we looking for? I do really enjoy the Mars pick. I'm a big fan of the idea of rounding up their lineup with some more aggression, but oh, okay, Razor. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, and it's going to be the FBZ yes. Razor as well. So, Samael in the mid lane with the uh, with the DK, and FBZ in the off lane with the Razor into the Lifestealer. It's a traditional counter matchup. It really is. I remember back in the days when Lifestealer was really popular, and you just have Bane and Razor being uh, picked up as an answer to it. So, yeah, see the Razor coming out for FBZ. I'm a little torn, though, with this, because like when I see PSG Quest pick up the, the Mars, I see like a, a conclusion to their draft, where the team fight's ticked with the Mars and the Puck. You've got the early game aggression of the SD and the CM wanting to make moves. Lifestyle is very independent, so you don't need to help him out. Of course, the Razor completely flips the switch on that one, where a Razor will have threatened Lifestyle the entire time. The supports won't be able to be freed up as nicely to make moves around the map. And of course, uh, we saw how good Windrunner and Disruptor played up against the Mars in the previous game. So laning-wise, uh, Nigma, sorry, should have three lanes that go very well for them. Like DK Puck, very good. Uh, Razor into Lifestealer, very good. I think for Nigma, the only concern is after good lanes, what happens if they overplay that hand? The Razor goes for that one dive and then Nuke Puck TPs him with a call, gets a kill. Suddenly Razor's playing with a couple deaths to his name. They don't have that natural initiating hero that is it's simple to play around it's wait for the dk to get dagger wait for the supports to be ready and because of that there is going to be a slight disjoint but i think nigma's lanes are going to be incredibly strong if they can execute on it and we'll see if they they battle for a, a bounty rune because that could also offset that where if they use too many resources potentially give away a first blood to pierce request what could be three very good lanes for nigma could also fade away if they they position poorly here in the in the pre-bounty rune fight and yet to really see the biggest scrap like we've had like the odd kill but not the full five on five and both teams sharing the have fun sharing the polite words to each other always well, nice to see anyone. as we get started game number three here between these two teams psg quest versus enigma galaxy it is of course the best of three grand finals plenty of dota still to come today for these two teams as they face off against each other already the draft becoming very interesting as the amount of bands coming out in the first phase is just hugely respectful of each other taking out each other's heroes good to see i love it when you get to start these best see these best of five metas develop early as well yeah. new trying to check my ward not finding anything I think my favorite best of five meta thing is when like a team gets beaten early, like one or two games by a certain hero, they start batting out for the rest. And then like in the final mm -hmm. game, they're like, we'll let them have it again. We yeah. can beat it this time. And that's just like, this oh exactly shit, happened, it's right? getting real. 
You've just perfectly that... described this series. Naga was played game one, banned Maybe. game two. Yeah. Game two, uh, Enigma win. Kunker and Leshak both banned. And Miracle is going to be walking up into high ground. They are going to see him, but they don't go for him. They go for the cheap kill, the free kill on Kuroki. Not going to go yep. for that elusive win run that could have win run away. First blood, first going blood to Malik. first blood. Yeah, the only core here to be able to take this one, but he's still going to be happy with that. A nice start to his game. Hopefully, it'll lead him to a better performance than his Mars in the last one. Well, in the middle lane, we've got some male playing the DK versus Noob on the puck. Noob's puck very successful in game number one. Some male had a bit of a tough time in game one, but game number two brought it back with a huge dominating performance on the last track. I feel like DK and Leshrac definitely more similar than uh, Leshrac and Storm for sure. So kind of good to keep it in the same wheelhouse, I suppose, if that's what worked for you last time around. As Ducalis does actually get brought down in the bottom side, trying to trade with Matthew and just kind of getting sucked in the engagement a little bit. Of course, FBZ can come across that plasma field. That ability just does so much damage. Yeah, you, you don't want to overstep your mark as a Crystal Maiden. Like level one, you can poke, but if you get level two before your opponent, sure, try and go for the chase down, go for the fight, but yeah, giving away an early kill, especially because Takaz doesn't have a TP. He had to you know, TP down to bot lane to take the fight, then die. He's doing the walk of shame right now, and yeah, because of that, Nigma, with already better lanes in all three, are going to feel even better at the start of this game. A good start, that's for sure. And Noob actually kind of getting worked a bit in the mid lane at the moment. 12 and 2 to Samael. Noob only getting himself 5 CS to start things off. Of course, he's got a pretty big wave here to try and grab, but Samael's coming in with the denies and, yeah, really making this puck suffer at the moment. Yeah, DK first puck is incredibly good for the DK. Ma is getting yeah. glimpsed back in the top lane, and that is going to be a he's dead gone. shadow demon. It is indeed. Miracle brings him down. The clicks are in. Power shot to make sure. Goodness it me. does feel like Noob. Enigma though. Right, when you think about the matchups, like for having this this Windrunner into the uh, into the Shadow Demon, the eventual arena down the line, like it is how quickly can she get to a BKB? And that's also kind of the theme for everyone else, right? Like when does DK get his blink BKB? When does Razor get his BKB? And when they all get all three, it will be devastating that the damage of Pierce Request will fall off immensely. As they are all about their their spell casting to, to get themselves into the fight, the coil, the arena. Um, so, yeah, I am intrigued to know how quickly Nygma can get there. That is going to be the best timing for them to, to really punish. Well, it's quite a scaling looking lineup of PSU Quest for sure. It is indeed. Yeah, definitely have options in the late game. More options for sure than and in Galaxy. So, same, similar pressure as last game to, to make those moves. I wonder which game we're going to get the 60-minute uh, one in, because I'm sure it's going to happen, right? The best of five mm. between these two teams, it, it should be guaranteed to have at least one game, but they're not really drafting these, like, really turtle lineups. Both teams quite aggressive and quite happy to, you know, put themselves in a position where they, they have to fight early, so even this game as well, I can't really see things being dragged out super long, but hey, clip it, maybe I'll regret this later. I'm down for a game five, 70 minute banger. Now that would get the Nigma fans yeah, riled up. Hype, you know, the comeback, the, the down 20k, they're out. Oh my god, a glimpse from Karolki. I don't know, some, some nice random shenanigans. From, uh, from De yeah, good deny. That was pretty sweet. Yeah, and I think, I mean, PSG Quest have certainly grabbed themselves a bit of a following over the years as well. Some uh, exciting players on this team. The time, time playing in the DPC kind of coming up as a relatively unknown. Urdu Thunders and breaking into the seemingly unpenetrable Masterclass DPC region of Western EU back in the days, or at least that's how people saw it, but they were able to do it. There's been a few teams over the te over the years who have been able to pull that off, and all of them have kind of gained themselves like a bit of a alt following, if you will. Shout out Creep Wave. Been going underneath the tower in mid lane. They've created yeah. a new mid lane, <laughs> they've kind of put it to the I don't know, the southeast section of this, uh, this tower. Yeah, this is not really a enjoyable one. It's 11 CS advantage to the DK and top miracle. 
All poisons on him, but with the wand and salve, you'll let the poison pop. Then Ooh, salve up and be straight away back in the lane. Taking hits, taking heavy, heavy hits, but they don't have the mana to go for the plasma field, so they'll have to keep their distance. FBZ they're able to steal. Steal a decent amount of damage off of tier 2000, and then that allows him to threaten Ducalis' life once more. Oh, he's... Matthew, Matthew, Matthew Wait, finds oh. him! Goes for the pull, but Matthew was ready for it, read it perfectly, and with no vision was able to uh, to, to get that to get that catch there. Very nicely done from the little squirrel. Ducalis trying to be a little bit cheeky. He didn't really have HP or any resources to stay there, but yeah, Matthew going for the kill, and now Sumo applying pressure mid as well. He has that dragon form. Ooh. Omar is coming mid. Noob doesn't have any HP and or level 6 to, to try and counterplay this. Yeah, his illusion is going to hurt a little bit though. A lot actually. They've kind of half healthed him, so <laughs> understatement. Are they going to get the rune? Oh, it's bottom. Ooh, it's bottom side, which means it's going to belong to the DK. Or maybe Matthew, because DK doesn't have a bottle, of course, so. Matthew is probably not going to do a whole lot with his arcane rune. Maybe I'm wrong, but. advantages for Nigma Galaxy being built here. If you look on your left side, that is a CS advantage in just about every lane so far. The A2000 particularly getting super bullied down here. And uh, Samael as well doing horrible things to Noob in the middle lane. It's a uh, payback for that game one. But PG PSG Quest, they feel like they need to get something going in their favor, and they're going to try and do that with a rotation down to the bottom lane by Omar. Ducas and Omar, they've got enough to take down FBZ and get themselves a kill. But now Kuro comes in to answer this as well, so they're looking across towards Omar. Not a ton of damage available for the side of Nigby Galaxy here, though, so no return kill going to be able to come in their way. Unable to save the Razor as well, so nice moves from PSG Quest to try and get a little bit of neutralization in this really early phase here. Not letting things getting super out of hand just yet. Yeah, and Wisdom Rune, Malik actually took it on the off lane, whilst Matthew then took it for the supports of Nygma. That will give Malik his level 6. Intriguing to know if they utilize this. Miracle didn't really get punished too much in that previous game, but an early game Mars with that arena, with that spear, you throw any other spell in the mix, and that should be a dead winner. And... Wind runner, sorry, but it will be hard. He's actually TPing to mid. So he'll step up mid. into the river. Yep, they want to get some mail here, and they go in all oh, for the spear back, but the uh, Dragon Tail prevents it, but doesn't matter. They've got more than enough damage with that arena to bring down some mail and uh, put a little bit of an end to his domination in the middle lane, at least for now. He's going to be very, very grateful for his teammates coming in there, putting an end to this DK, especially when he's used Dragon Form as well. So that's going to be on cooldown for quite a while now and release a lot of pressure, which is coming out onto PSG Quest. Honestly, that move might be something we look back at a little later on. If this Puck's able to have a game, or if they're able to utilize this middle tower on PSG Quest to keep on bullying and finding some more snipes, would be pretty big. I mean, it was cool from Sumo that he gets that sun off. He forces Malik to have to use that arena. He doesn't get the spear back, and now arena's on cooldown. With that D-patch nerf, that's an extra 10 seconds, so it's a 100 second cooldown. It gives Miracle freedom to farm top without any fear. Give FB, FBZ a little bit more confidence to, to poke that extra, that creep bottom. He has to be careful though. Crystal Maiden and SD are in the area, but both supports Enigma are here too. Both teams just poking each other a little bit, and it looks like Matthew's the one to be gone on. And Omar on a killing spree. The Shadow Demon 3 1 and 2. Just completes his mana boots. Nice bit of positioning so far from him. Enabling that aggression, and if he can get level 6 first, get that Dispel in play. Winrun is not going to have fun trying to kite these fights out. The real benefit of Miracle when he played Winrun in that previous game was his ability to, to get in and out of the fight, skirmish as much as possible, use that power shot. And shouldn't really be the case this time around. Not the perfect winner in the game that it kind of became in that previous one. Nah, it doesn't look quite as free, although, I mean, I expected the Mars to be able to do a bit more to the wind last game, and it just kind of didn't. I can usually see this matchup being pretty nice, because you've got that Arena of Blood there to uh, kind of interrupt things. Blocking the uh, right clicks from the wind, pretty important. It's kind of becoming a bit of a standoff here in the middle lane. 
the mill. Really wants to get in and just finish off this tower. I mean, well, even get some damage coming into oh, the tower. New it. Oh, beautiful positioning there on the kinetic field, stopping the puck from getting an amplified damage. Now Samel just looking to run down Omar. Should be able to get the kill, but Kuro is going to go down as well. And Omar's still alive for the time being. All the damage coming out on Samel. It's a lot. Quest, they brought in the heroes, but Nigma Galaxy, they're rotating as well. Matthew's here. Miracle's here. FBZ makes a TP connect. Now looking on towards Malik, who's just using Arena. Doesn't really have a defensive capabilities here. Spear's going to miss, and that's going to seal his fate. The mail brings him down. Then the galaxy. They say, you want to take an early game fight against us? We are very, very happy to oblige. They bring down a couple of heroes. Yeah, it's so important that Nigma bring the numbers to these fights. If you miss the uh, the damage in the arena, if the if the coil isn't really utilized, then Enigma they can run wild in these fights and uh, kinetic, baiting the puck to to jump in, thinking he can get the amplification room, but not to be the case. Denied by Sumo on. The net worth is looking real healthy for them. All three cores sitting in that you know, the mid to high 4k region, and compared to PSG Quest, their cores not doing so well. At least specifically this puck. This puck is now down. Uh, 1200 gold compared to his counterpart. Of course, DK, incredibly good matchup against him, and uh, it's just going to hurt PSG Quest's early game moves. So we do see a disruption on top. Onto Miracle. Yeah, Finally, they're miracle. trying to get him off. He's got the wind run out, though, and now beautiful Shackle coming through onto Malik and Noob. Is it enough to save his life? I think it might be, but Omar, he's stacking up the poisons right now. Four poisons, won't land the fifth, and now with Samel and Kuro running him down, Omar might just be dead. Power shot misses, but Sharpshooter does not. Omar falls, and they don't get their prize. Miracle is still alive. Yeah, they keep making the moves on PSG Quest, Ed. They're getting a little bit desperate. Maybe that second series has kind of knocked them off guard a little bit, because these weren't the moves they were making in Game 1, but in Game 3, the, these moves are really playing into Enigma's favor, and of course, with the Lotus on Miracle, with that wind run, he's able to just survive long enough to, to give his team life in the fight and he doesn't even go down the galaxy they found the lifestealer farming but unfortunately matthew just goes for a slightly awkward engagement there there's a lifestealer rage up no level six on kuroki just yet so a little bit of a tricky one to go for top side miracle he scans out a gank realized that uh they have a very clear goal on the side of Quest, and uh, it is to kill him, so... Scanning out, sensing something's wrong. And getting himself out to safety. Just so stark. I'm, like, I'm looking across the cores in PS2 Quest, and I'm wondering, like, when's the move they're going to make, and... Maybe the Blink Dagger on Mars is going to be that window. I think 2000, he's going to have to think about joining the fights a little bit earlier than he wants to. Because they lack so much damage. He has an armlet. He he can apply some some nuisance to these fights with that. The Ghoul Frenzy slow, but if they sit back and farm, Enigma are going to be so content. Maelstrom complete on the Windrunner, Mater on the DK, and they are they're fight ready if they want to be. They are indeed. Interesting difference from the uh, first Puck game, by the way, is that first Puck game, he just went straight in for the Witchblade. This time around, Noob does decide to finish off the Power Treads first. Uh, what leads to that decision, do you know? Um, I think it's depending on how starved you are in the game and how greedy you can be. Ooh. Let's dodge from Noob. At this game, he oh. had no mid lane, right? So if he goes all naked Witchblade, it's probably not the best. A little bit of a stun coming out onto him, just uh, holding him back as they go for the other targets. They want to bring down the Crystal Maiden to start this off, and Focus Fire comes out to try and finish off Ducalis, but the arena stops him getting the kill, and now, oh, Acorn Shot finds him. They do bring him down, but the Wind Ranger falls as well. Big kill coming out for PSG Quest to start this one off, but TA2000 is getting absolutely drained by FBZ right now. Paypal's not going to save him. FBZ grabs a kill, Malik gets glimpsed back into his demise as well. Noob running away on the sidelines, and it is going to be a one for four trade as they'll finish off Omar as well. Sure, you get your wind range, you finally bring it down, but the cost is massive. Yeah, they use so much to kill off the wind runner. It, it doesn't feel good. Here's quest, they fight like, guys, we got the arena, we got it, we got it. But the static storm from Kuroki just laying inside that arena as well, just preventing just further spell usage. And sure, life's in a, he shows up to the fight, he gets into the middle of it, but it just isn't enough from them. 
Jigwes are going to have to be careful. Yes. They are one or two fights away from this map getting fully closed out. They need to be so careful the next time they look for an engagement. Potentially try and play for a pickoff so that you still want uh, Nicola wanting to make another move like that. But What does that stalling look like then? Is it going for like little pickoffs around the map? I mean, with which yeah, heroes so as well? It's aggressively pushing up waves so that Nigma has to think about pushing up their tier 2 creep wave, getting back into a good formation to be able to smoke without the sequest just reading it nicely. And then on top of that, again, you need to find a pickoff. You need to you need to find some type of kill that makes you feel good. Of course, it is a bit hard with the uh, the SD and the CM. When you're ahead, it. it's great, but when you're behind, it's not perfect. And they're smoked up. Yeah. If they find the DK, it's a really they difficult see kill. Yeah, they see the breathe fire, but it's not really something they want to go for. And Nimbi Galaxy, they're gathering heroes in the middle lane. Infested on Mars. Malik. Oh, wow. This is a big commitment. If they go for this, it has to work. And it oh. will. My God, the supports are just gone. PSG Quest. They'll take them out in seconds. Samael doesn't quite connect to the tree. So Ghost will go for the TP out here. And they don't have the interrupt. Omar and Takala is kind of blocking each other there. Awkwardly not able to get over and cancel that one out. The port's just gone in the blink of an eye. You asked about what they needed to do. They kind of did it right there. They pushed up the wave. They found the smoke. They got the pick. Two sports down. Yeah, they're making the moves to, to keep themselves in this game. And we'll see if the SD can get there in a reasonable time. But he's looking to rush this Agonims. He's looking to get the, the, you know, the, the two charges of the, the demonic purge. You have to throw out aggressively. Windrunner, wow. Razor, they're very movement-based heroes. So if both of these get you know, purged up, it's... It is going to prevent their ability to, to hold that link, to hold that focus fire. If Omar can get it in a reasonable time, it would be a pretty cool item rush for him. It will indeed, yeah. I mean, it's something we'll be looking back on and either saying it was a bit too greedy, you weren't able to save your cause when they needed you, or we'll be looking back and saying, damn, these uh, Enigma Galaxy heroes were not able to play into this egg, so keep an eye on it. It's going to be a big change in game, game changer when it comes. Eight and 11, no significant net worth lead for either team. The next move will decide the kind of next pacing of the game for quite a while. Mm -hmm. Galaxy not feeling the same pressure as they had last game to go for like non-stop aggression, but certainly wanting to get things going in their favor. And once again, another infest. Malik looking, FBZ. Definitely tempting target for him, and he's going to be able to find him inside of the arena. And Fest comes out, damage comes in. Razor taking hits, but Kuro is behind. Static Storm is down, and they are very, very deep here on the side of PSG Quest, but they still get their target. FBZ falls. Malik does go down as well, though, as a sharpshooter connect. And now they're looking for more. The support's very juicy. Succulent support heroes, which they can just get through in seconds. Ducalis is gone. Omar trying to get the deny. Not going to happen. Double kill for Matthew. The aggression is punished. And it's all because of the uh, the speed in which Kuroki hits that Static Storm, right? If if it's any slower, if it doesn't connect, then Lifestealer will press Rage. Sure, it doesn't give him bonus attack speed like it used to, but it would give him the confidence to stick on that target, to not disengage when he sees the DK stuff of the high ground. And yeah, if he goes down, he also didn't have the EKB at the time. It was coming out on the Courier. I think in PSG Quest, it's like, okay, maybe next time we need to bring plus one. The, the, the life still isn't strong enough yet, but at least for PSG Quest, they are doing the motions of how do we get ourselves back in this game? Like, they're not seeing a farming life still. You have double blink initiator heroes. He is using that infest bomb to, to give them, you know, or to create opportunities on the map, and Enigma at least. They are so incredibly strong soon, right? You've got the Gleipnir on the Windrunner, BKB on the Razor, the Manta now on the DK. I feel like Enigma just want to find the fight, and yep, they found Omar. It certainly did. Miracle, going to be able to grab that kill for himself. Alec, well, so nearby, just very calmly farming right next to them, <laughs> watching his teammate just get absolutely obliterated. Just like, eh, oh, creeps to hit. I'm and good. Swarming him just a little Hawk. bit here. He might bump into FBZ and Baroki. Yep. Oh, hello, sir. Oh, oh. 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 <laughs> out of the fire, into the flames. FBZ finding Malik, and Malik just slowly going to get tickled down here. See you later, Mars. Yeah, jumping from uh, from Kuroki into the uh, into the FBZ Razor is not ideal. 
How is this middle tower still up, by the way? I have a question. Hmm. Nigma, after PSG Quest brought so many heroes mid to defend it, I don't think Nigma wanted to try and give PSG Quest a free fight. Like when you're behind with your heroes, Mars and Puck want your opponent to try and hit a tier 1 tower, to have poor positioning, then get hit by multi-hero coils or arenas, etc. So I think for Nigma, they just... They knew they'll take it eventually. It wasn't you know, critical for their game plan. They're not going to live on the radiant side of the map with their heroes that they have, and because of that, taking the tower just isn't as crucial. And it now falls. Finally. Finally, the illusions will get it done. Amanda DK. Starts to do what it does so damn well. Level 12 plus Manta. Tricky time to play the map now for Quest. They've got to keep these lanes shoved in at all times. And... I think Ducalis really needs to get this shard. I don't know if that involves going Tormentor, see if you get it from there, or having to buy it himself, perhaps. But I really want to see this on Ducalis right now, because you need a way to answer this constant pressure that's going to be coming out from this Dragon Knight with this Manta. What is Nigma waiting for? They have a decent set of items to be able to fight, but I guess they're just respecting the, the Radiance timing of the lifesteal and the fact that he won't really die to just Miracle anymore. It's gonna, gonna take a couple of layers of the fight to, to get through this lifesteal and because of that, maybe the call is wait for the BKB on one runner. Once you have that, then it's a, it's a fight and then Roshan on the card soon after. And Matthew is very close to Zetos as well. It's a quest. They're gonna, they're gonna enjoy this uh, window of you know, calm in the game. No real fight occurring. As I say that, they do smoke up on Kuroki and Sumo. Blink is go, uh, actually dead see. on Courier right now for Sumo for 10 more seconds. But this is a, a smoke pre-Blink in the hope <laughs> to find someone in melee distance, which won't be too good, but... Well, they maybe just yeah. jump the gun a little bit on that one. Our demon sees the watcher get taken, goes for the uh, blink TP. We're in TPing within blink range. And again, he's, he's now only a thousand gold away from the Zangham Scepter, so really not being punished for this greedy, greedy build. PC Quest can't really punish the map in this game. Right? Un other than getting kills, how do they take down early towers? Right? Unless the lifestyle is there, they don't really do it. Catapult waves aren't as disruptive as they used to be. Just because of how easy it is to, to group up and take the fight around them, so... Yeah, they really are a victim to the moves that they're making Malik now. Infested once again with the Lifestealer. They want to find a big pickoff. They are going to find Kuroki. Yep. Maybe not the biggest, and he's immediately going to turn around with the Static Storm and Kinetic Field to make this as awkward as possible. And in fact, they're not even going to be able to kill him. The Infest is still going. They're trying to trick him here a little bit. As at the back lines, they found the Wind Raider is a much better target, and they'll be able to bring him down. Miracle is gone. Samael as well. Can't fight up into this Life Stealer at the moment. Life Stealer, very strong indeed under the cover of Rage. Backs themselves away on the side of Enigma Galaxy. Crow going one way. Matthew going the other. Doesn't look like he's going to be caught, so... We'll just be the two cores being killed off and not getting anything more for it, but... Very exciting for PSG Quest to be able to find themselves a fight like this. This is huge. Yeah, vision was key there for PSG Quest. They had an observer that just timed out in that kind of bottom side of the jungle. They saw Miracle wrap around to hold that high ground position whilst Kuroki was in the river tanking up that Mars initiation. And because of that, Puck instantly jumped onto Miracle. There isn't a BKB in play yet, so... Yeah, Vision being the uh, being the victor there. And for Nygma, maybe they got to wait for this BKB. Windrunner. If she can survive, then yeah, he's a monster in the fight, but there is enough lockdown to, to punish her. Just hasn't really connected so far, and damage was the problem for PSG Quest, but as we enter the 25-minute mark, Erasma Rush is now complete for Noob. Picking up the frame, he's already running at FPC. He's going to force another BKB. This is what we saw in Game 1, the Noob Puck that was forcing BKBs, forcing the objective, and he just went for a second item for Erasma. He's going to be able to do it again. That's crazy. Blink for Erasma. Oh, such a bold build. It's so aggressive. Like if he gets hit by one dragon stun or one static storm, he's probably gonna die, but yeah. Before then it is all on him to play with confidence and Miracle has the BKB on the courier. But Nigma, they're smoking up again. They 
They're gonna try and find so Noob. They get the stun. He's yeah, dead. the follow up is there. Static Storm, everything coming together for them. A little bit awkward there. As the rest of PSG Quest have met in the bottom side of the map, they're going for the next Infest Bomb play. Malik, heavily pregnant with his life stealer at the moment. Expecting any moment, but I'm not sure they're going to be finding much. Especially not in the middle lane. Who would you like Malik to, to burp upon on the Nigma side? Mm, indeed, that is the question. I mean, I feel like normally it's Kuroki, but without Static Storm up, probably just Miracle pre BKB. Yeah. That pre BKB is not going to be long. Oh, it's on the Courier. Malik, can he get it? Oh, no. God's Rebuke comes out. Miracle's Courier is down, and that's on the. Oh, God. We're now in the position where we're being cornered in by PSG Quest. No BKB on our window. They Ooh, managed to find a busy. Oh, oh no, Malik. How the hell did he not find a tree there? That is genuinely impressive. Malik, I mean, he's, I think he's just going to be killed off here, but. This is a sad death for him. BKB out. Arena comes down and Razor, well, he's actually taking a ton of damage here as TA2000 trying to get a pot him. FPZ, nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. Gonna lose his life and Malik survives through it all. Now they turn around, look over towards Kuroki. Kuroki's got nothing to do about this, but full. Matthew with the Gleipner on the sidelines, just trying to hold back the side of PSG Quest and delay them as long as possible. He's trying to make his own escape. Oh, the spear not quite connecting. Well, like a slow-mo replay on that spear. That was insane. Wait, can we look at that tree line again real quick? I can I can draw you how finite. Look, 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 at, look at this, right? Yeah, this is the... Like that. Yeah. Like, that is such a narrow section to miss a spear on. And my golly gosh, he found it. But it didn't really matter. At the end of the day, it... <laughs> they still got baited into the fight. And... Imagine if Winron had BKB. Imagine if the smoke from PSG Quest didn't bump into that courier and kill off that Ogre Axe. It could have been a completely different fight, but the movement, a little bit of luck involved to get that courier in. Yeah, there's no way Nygma can take a fight. Miracle can't step up into the, these engagements like he did in that previous game. He needs it, and once his courier respawns, sure, he'll be confident enough. But now he's fighting into the Aegis. Uh, sorry, yeah, the Aegis, the Lifestealer. And tier 2000, he's on for the San and Yasha, getting a bit more status resistance and... He's looking at a Lincolns. And sometimes life stealers, they just go straight for that. The Ags in this position, but he's opting to try and threaten Nygma. Prevent the Dragon Tail, prevent that Shackle or the Focus Fire. We'll give him a little bit more uh, sustainability in the fight. And... Oh, still can't get over the fact that that fight and that Roshan was all dictated by a Courier kill. Yeah, that's <laughs> really... We're seeing everything in these qualifiers, that's for sure. What a crazy way to start the fight, and it's just so awkward for Nygma Galaxy. Like, what do you do in that situation then? You suddenly put yourself in the, this spot where you've just got a kill, you're A-Take Roshan, you're just getting your BKB delivered, and then your BKB dies, and now you're just pinned down in a spot where you don't actually want to take the fight anymore. Super awkward, but uh, 15 seconds, Miracle's Courier will be alive once again, but they've just found the Hoodwink in the tree lines here. Matthew, silenced up, being taken down, Gleipnir out, not going to save him. Noob gets himself a spree. Kallus is eyeing up this Tormentor. He, he, wants, he wants a shard, I'm pretty sure. If he does grab the enemy's wisdom rune, pretty nice for his team. Enemy Tormentor down. Omar's going to be the one to grab the shard. Two excellent shards in this game for their team. Come on, cleanse. Pretty S tier. I've had uh, that. Oh, it's so good. good. As well. like, he has this axe, right? That we've already spoke about you know, minutes ago. Omar needs to be a focus Ooh, in this mail. fight. And Sumo is jumping away. As TP, but no BKB, so he's very, very dead. He's he's super dead. Yeah, roast dragon for dinner, but uh, Omar, well, he's got kind of gone down in the sidelines. And FPC has been able to connect with the link oh, here. Not dead. Hold on, oh. hold on, okay. not dead. Any livers, and they're going to be able to kill off Malik as well. Malik, oh, no, 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 no one's dying here. There we go. Malik does go down. The right clicks come in. Enigma Galaxy, I, they keep their dragon alive. Huge, huge turnaround there on the top side. I got so baited. I, I saw Omar die, so I flicked my camera over to Omar, assuming that I was going to hit DK die, and I flicked my camera back, and he's off running down mid lane. He's disappeared, so all right. That would have been a huge death on him as well, because he right, just yeah. finished off his Aghanim <laughs> Scepter, so yeah. <laughs> I got gigabated that fight. Missing both kills, huge. Nah, Enigma is on it. Yep, the so Galactum's coming next. up for Enigma at least, right? You've The Courier respawns, so Miracle has BKB. You've got Aghanim's now complete on Sumo. 
with his fight, he can pop that Manta, have that Black Dragon on his Elder Dragon form, and send it down the lane, send it onto supports, prevent Omar from Ooh, positioning miracle. him. Yep. Ooh, miracle. The infest? Not going to gonna be there. But, yep. Yeah, 2000 trying to help out his buddy here, but, uh, well, he's going to get stunned up himself. Shackle lands as well. This is going to be a long time stun, and they're going to be able to take him down. First life gone. Arena not available for Malik just yet. Hiroki's going to throw down the Static Storm, try and mess it. with Malik, and now another Shackle comes on down. Tier 2000 finally gets up the Rage and gets himself away, but they'll be able to take down the Mars regardless, and now the push continues. So Samael, he's not done. Pushed back by the Psychic Headband, but Samael's not giving up. He's going to keep the chase going. Ducalis on the high ground just being torn apart by dragons. They must feed. Burn up. Um, and now I'll look for the tower as well. Beat wave surviving long enough to give break that back door and get them that tier two tower. Or some mail. He picks up the Zagadim Scepter and suddenly he's very strong indeed. Also starts because Miracle he has this confidence to explore the map. He's he's looking for the pickoffs in it. He finds SD, who's an absolute menace in the fights, and if SD's already having to run away, the Mars is like desperately running in. Sure, you have this agent on life stealer, but how does he stand his ground? I kind of think that T2000, he needs that agonism. Yeah, he he has pivoted his build. He is going for it. That will allow him to just get you know, focused too early on. For PSG Quest, if they if they had to take a fight into Nigma, yeah, they do need to get some better positioning here. They, they need to play underneath their own vision. Omar can't just be caught off guard at the start of every fight. Like, he went for a super greedy build, but it really breaks Nigma if he's able to get all his spells from the from the backline, if he's able to free cast, and that's why Miracle is so focused on finding him. Another smoke from Nigma. Both teams just going you know, right at each other's throats. Every time they have a moment of uh, downtime, it's, all right, how can we group up and cross the river, find another pick, and smoke on smoke yes. action as the Let's fight. <laughs> The 32 minute rune spawns a noob. Oh, he can't. He, he needs to get off the shield rune. He's got a bottle. He, he does it. get it out in time. So he's going to be able to live for the time being. Samel. Now he's going to be the target here, but he's a tricky old cookie to crack as the Manta comes out. TA 2000 staying on him, though. Broken. Being taken down. The Dragonite will drop. FBZ trying to get off the cars, but Dukas is actually really damn tanky inside of that freezing field. FBZ is losing all his health. Just trying to kill off the Crystal Main in the middle of this PSG quest. They get four. Everybody dead except for Matthew on the side of Nigma. West, they want to finish the job, but can't quite do so. But nevertheless, huge win for them. And now they can look to pressure and take the enemy tier 2 tower and sort out their lanes. And what did I just say, Nomad? If you don't stop the SD from precasting his spells, the agony on life, so the fight hard. looks pretty good. And what just happened? SD's on the high ground the entire time. He breaks up the DK. He prevents Miracle from getting the solo kill. He then throws the ult onto Winona as well. Meanwhile, life still is jumping inside. It's the perfect position from PSG Quest. And Nigma just did not respect the, the construct that they need to create to win a fight. It needs to be find the SD, prevent him from playing the game, and then, you know, walk your way through. But this time around, Omar. With ease, gives uh, so much to his team. Yeah, he's the maestro, just coordinating the fight from the back. Very, very nicely done. Fun for his teammates, purge for the enemies. Yeah, you absolutely the, the the entire fight for Nigma Galaxy. If it wasn't clear before, is certainly clear now. You must deal with Shadow Demon. Um, I'm I'm looking over to you, Kurok. Is it time for a blink dagger? Get on the guy. Mess up his day. Yeah. I'm not sure. Well, that's all the games where... do it more effectively, but I feel like cores can buy blink dagger. I think there's a there's a hesitation for wanting to buy blink because you always want to scale with your tank and you know, scale with your damage. But in this type of game for FPZ, what if he just replaced his wand with a blink dagger right now? And his fight was just he sees one shadow poison from an SD. Boom! You blink on that location. As much as static link is very good against this life stealer. It kind of feels like it's a non-factor because Life City also has Agnums to, to jump away from him, to, to kind of kite in different directions. And the SD as, as well can also just prevent Razor from continuously getting a good link off. And it's the reason why Life City didn't go for a Lincolns, I feel, because Agnums provides some aggressive capabilities. And if his team's helping him, he can get away from the static link. And that's why I think maybe for Razor, sure, he's looking at Refresher, but I do agree with you. I, I, I need to see one source of... 
anti-SD positioning right now. And... Yeah, you do have Matthew who has this uh, Orchid. Maybe he'll pick up the mantle. Yeah, like me, yeah. If we're another smoke. The last time this happened, they completely fell, fell apart in the fight. And we'll see if they have uh, a better approach to this one. They are currently posted on the low ground. They have Observer and Sentry on Kuroki if they want to go for a high ground hill spot to vision advantage engagement, but it doesn't seem to be the case. Roshan is going to respawn in a minute 50, which will be on the dire side. Again, to be one of those games. He's being very game evenly and, matched yeah. in this third game. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. These these guys just feel too aggressive to take it to 60 minutes. Like, up, up, up. We're trying your hardest to cast a curse. No, it doesn't work if you do it deliberately. I don't know. I've Not seen some. Goes. I've seen it in action. Bottom, bottom side, the tower's already gone. Tier 2 dropped. But uh, they are kind of giving up the Dia Roshan area on Nigma Galaxy by doing this. But at the same time, you're also forcing PSG Quest home, so... Not the quickest siege, though. Like, some teams here could be disciplined and go, ah, who cares? Once the DK comes into the mix, though, that's when you want to come back and, yeah, Sumo now shows up and... Here they come! <laughs> yeah. Those goddamn Malak illusions. Malak is infested. He is, he is. He's expecting. Oh, no, he's just uh, going in. Fishing. Ooh, oh. Ooh. If it was daytime, that is a coiled... Of course, that's why he's TPing out there, because it is nighttime, but the matter Indeed. of day-night vision and... Nigma running to the top side of the map, but... Here's your quest. They know that Roshan's respawning soon. They have the vision up there. There are three observer wards that Nigma need to try and find if they want to have vision advantage here. They don't Look have a Matthew. GM, I believe, so... Matthew's still just running on the bottom side of the map. But if they do control this area, then he has himself an outpost to jump to as they're just trying to blow up Kuroki straight off the bat, and they'll be able to do exactly that buyback available, though, from the Disruptor. You're going to want to be seeing that pretty shortly if you want to contest this Roshan. Four seconds until it respawns. On the bottom side, Matthew still shoving in this bottom lane. The tower getting very low, but they don't care. They're going for more. FBZ is going to be the target. He's going to be forced to BKB, but that demonic purge is out onto him, broken and torn in, in part. He's trying to run away across the bridge, but the infest comes into him, and FBZ will die. Who now dead? In the bottom lane. Nigma Galaxy getting picked off. Meanwhile in the bottom lane. This is Acorn <laughs> shot after Acorn shot. It felt like there was like a mixed game plan there from, from Nigma because there's no way in the world Matthew's going, guys, 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 prolong the fight. I'm going to take that. Like, there's no way he's entertaining the idea of actually Ooh, trying miracle. to pressure Rax here. Yeah, Focus Spy used out onto the park trying to catch him off guard, but Noob, he was only pretending. He wasn't actually trying to kill you. Meanwhile, bottom lane. He's doing a little bit of damage to the melee barracks, a, little, a tiny fraction of damage to the range barracks. Now the uh, tier 3 also getting kind of blasted by these Dragonite Illusions as well. The male might bring up these Illusions, deal as much building damage as possible, but over on the top side, the real objective is being taken. Tier 2000 now has an Aegis of Immortality. Not to mention a delicious cheese for the Mars as well. A little side helping there. He has been infested a couple of times. He might have his uh, mid-game cravings. Oh, Matthew. Whoa, Matthew. Whoa, Matthew. He's got a juke left, right, center, light near available. Oh, this bear catches him. He's a goner, I believe. Although, sharpshooter to get over the trees. Bushwhack comes out, but with noob upon him, he's suddenly going to drop here. Finally, the rat gets ousted from the bottom side of the map. The lines have been drawn. Malek, he's commanding that PhD quest, walking down mid, walking down bottom. Whilst he's also looking for a pick off, he might go for the free Kuroki kill. You can't resist. You cannot resist. Kuroki's just too damn tempting. 22 gold. Ooh. Ow. <laughs> it's a lot of money. It's a lot Look of at money. my guy. He's, he's by far the poorest guy in the game. All right. I, I always say this with Disruptor because I think the concept of support selling items to get that one big ticket item is pretty important. Lucalis, he did go for Dagon to kill off the DK yeah, illusions again. because you need to do it. But I kind of think that this could be the Disruptor mad panic to you know, sell a drum sell a bracer if he has the point boost already some act surprise could be pretty important maybe not during the ages but we can keep an eye out if he wants to make that play 
Yeah, very critical <laughs> against a KB lifestealer, that's for sure. Exactly, yeah. Aegis expires, Kuroki whips out the Agonims. Oh, bam. <gasps> hey. oh my goodness. You're seeing it. I am in my mind's eye. Oh boy. And Omar being annoying, using disruption to create some uh, DK illusions of his own. Mail, by the way, did finish off his Bloodthorn now as well, so... Blink Bloodthorn available from him. If he sees this, this Shadow Demon, you know his target's gonna be nice. Oh, Shackle out onto the puck, but the Infest comes through to give him the health. He needs to survive it. Miracle under cover of BKB and Winrun needs he's to be able to get away from TA2000. TA2000, though, actually disarm and Bushwhacked. He's in trouble. Might be his first life going down here. Samel able to control him up and bring him down. The Life Stealer is gone. PSG Quest, can they reform him quickly enough? They can't. Razor has gone on top of the Shadow Demon. It's gonna have to be a Rage TP, but that will be successful. No bashes out. Critically there, FBZ doing the work for Nigby Galaxy, finding that key target of the back lines and removing the Shadow Demon from the fight. Yes, Quest, they don't really have a clean way of hitting the buildings and it kind of comes into play. The Enigma, they aren't under threat of suddenly losing racks quickly because they're in that position. They get that wrap around and a shackle shot as well to start the fight. It's such a choke point. Four heroes in the steps of the, the Dire Triangle. That's not really a position you want to be in and yeah, SD didn't really get any key spells off. Enigma, yeah, still in this game. Until FPD gets caught in bot lane. Oh, refresh time. Oh, he's got a refresher. Very nice. Yeah. Link comes out onto the light seal. Light seal just backs away. Nice timing there on the arena of blood onto FPD. I should finish the job, but that said, a lot of counter damage coming back through onto Malik at the moment. The moment, moment the arena ends, he is going to drop here. Matthew has died, though. Puck just kind of dancing around this fight, doing whatever he wants right now. Lysia jumping into the Windrunner. Windrunner's dead as well. Now it's just Orson Mail to get himself out of this one. The Static Storm comes down, but not doing a whole lot. Might kill off Ducalis with the illusions, but nope, it's not enough. Ooh. And now, Orson Mail. He's been found TPing. Noob doesn't have a way to cancel, though. Hmm, 1.7 seconds. Yeah, escape. he's out. Good. I was just, I was just giving you know the Enigma fans some hope because they, they got some nice kills. They then went aggressive a little bit together, but FPZ's by himself. It kind of feels like FPZ plays like his career oh, has already got to him. Like how many times yeah. have I seen FPZ make a play? His courier is like. Five seconds away from it making the play a lot easier like him farming that position if he has refresher there's no way he dies and then he just walks back to his team it's fine but then he has to like awkwardly continue the fight get the refresher pop the refresher disengage the enigma still wants to take the fight because they have the refresher it's for every good play enigma makes there seems to be like one disconnected play within a five minute window after and uh it really is going to hinder them but we now have Progress the game by 0.5 seconds. So at this rate, I think we could finish this game by the end of 2025 if they keep this up. Yeah, anyway, D DK is gone. He's fine. He's good. Noob. Oh, that's a nice cinematic, actually. That's beautiful. Wow. What a scene. Oh, not that one. A composition. Lovely. What do they do now? There's no win range in the game for 87 seconds. No buyback available either. Just bought out. Mm. Or I think the Lincoln Sphere, maybe. Oh, maybe the Agnum Scepter, actually. So, yeah. I would probably Base say damage. just run it down bot lane. Like, there's only a tier 2 top, so... 90 seconds. If you click on Winner on it, you'd see that Agnum's and Lincoln's. Like, there's two, a couple big items in play, so... I back probably is going to be uh, out of reach, so... Run it down a lane. Try and take a Rax, probably. Yeah, they want to go sort out their waves real quickly first. Might not be forcing much here. Let's see. Tier 2000 leading the charge on the bottom side, backed up by Omar. Two cars in the neighborhood as well. Of course, they don't have their mask. Oh. Did die in that engagement. Rookie went yours. That's a shame. He would be like 900 gold away from Agonims if he just didn't buy yours. Yeah, that's surprising. What do you think this yours is for? Yes. Okay. Good, thank you. I, I just want to see Agonims. Like, I think in these other games, Me too, buddy. when you have half the gold towards Agonims and you're losing the game and fights are hard and you're in position five, what's better? Be absent for maybe one fight, but then come with a statement item 
or buy some semi item that can sure it can cancel a crystal maiden ultimate or it can fight up the, the puck to set up for your own static storm but he has bkb like there are multiple bkbs in play here this yours is like 23 minutes too late i feel it should have just been the agonims i think it's uh Kuroki has blundered his late game itemization unless he somehow then gets gold to make a win waker but then that point you could have had, had ags for multiple team fights it's just i don't really i'd love to ask some of the pros why they don't opt for this agonims i understand the whole idea of cheap items enable team but this isn't a four staff this isn't a glimmer this isn't something that directly impacts another core in your team it is quite a independent utility item yeah i feel like it's probably a cancel for the crystal maiden because they're, they're they are pretty light on stuns they mm, yeah. had a few team fights now where they've struggled to really deal with the cm so it could be just a cancel for this freezing field or you know catching maybe the life stealer off guard in between a rage something like that seems to be the logic that's as bad as as much as i can cook up for you though is hoodwink by the way transitioning into her late game state Daedalus now purchase. Ooh. Did have the Revenant's Brooch queued up for a minute there, but of course, Daedalus into Revenant's Brooch would have been a bit uh, questionable, especially against a life stealer. Wouldn't have liked to Ooh. see that personally. Smoke on smoke action, Nomad. Ooh. It breaks. Some some mail jumps, but as does Malik, they're going to get across. Beautiful spear coming out onto two big cores on the side of Naming Galaxy. They'll lose the Razor, and I'm not sure this win rate is just going to be able to get away either. Miracle's gone as well. Quest, what an opening. Malik finds the Spirit Arena of Dreams. And now they're dead without buyback. This might be more than Barracks T, Governor. They might have just found an opening to finish this game off. If they test them and find that they're not willing to buy back here, then... Yes, she quests in a very good position to close this one out. At the very least, Mega Creep should be happening. Razor just bought the right. pressure and Windrunner is... Well, they bought big ticket items. They just don't have the gold for the buyback. And clarify, Windrunner did buy refresher, sorry. But Mega Creep's full. Two cores are dead, and I think they realize it. The fact they got the, the, the Megas for free. Malik, he's hunting. He has a Hex on He's looking for second. more, and he's going to be finding. Oh, the Hoodwink. Absolutely annihilated. No buyback on the Hoodwink. Yours. There's one more hero. There's that Yules. It's going to Ooh. work. <laughs> it's doing absolutely nothing. Or now dead. Enigma Galaxy, they fought so well. They were really in this game, but all of a sudden, they might be on the brink of losing. 20 seconds left on Razor. 20 seconds left on the Wind Ranger. It might not be long enough. Samael doing what he can, throwing out some spells. Buyback from Disruptor. The A2000, eyes on the prize, looking for that Ancient. 10 seconds remaining, Ancient down to 50% HP. Coil's gonna hold them back, they can't do anything. Disruptor is gone, Razor is back, Wind Ranger's back, but it doesn't matter. PSG Quest, they finish the game. Huge fight was all it took, massive spear coming out from Malik. The put an end to game number three. Yes, uh, Kuroki wishes he could uh, glimpse back the game about 26 minutes there and maybe make some different choices of team in the mid game because they kind of had the motions. The laning phase felt good. The the early aggression was you know, decisive. They didn't overplay their hand into into the arena and the puck. They were punishing the lack of damage they had. It just never really became something bigger. And it, it honestly boils down to that point where Malik was smoked up, found the courier of the BKB on the win runner, kills off the courier, forces off a massive fight, and then they themselves get that first Aegis. Because a team that was, you know, somewhat behind, lacking in the game, got that Aegis, it gave them so much more positional confidence. Sure, it kind of got taken away in quite a cheap way, but just those small motions prevent Nigma from accelerating what could have been quite a snow snowboardy draft from themselves, and yeah, they could not find the Shadow Demon time and time again, and yeah, such an awkward game for Nygma. A couple choices, maybe they win this game, but you could see the discipline from PSG Quest. Even under the pressure of Nygma, they, they bide their time. They utilize the infest from the, the life stealer on this, inside the Mars. They get some important kills, and eventually they're strong enough as a team to, to turn the, the momentum of this game. But it is promising for Nygma. Yeah. They, they looked down and out in game one. They win game two. They lose game three. It, I'm at least happy this is more competitive than I think a lot of people are expecting, but PSG Quest, I think, are proving to be 
consistently the the better team but they can drop games so maybe we get to a game five but i still think favorites are to be psg quest so far in the grand finals yeah yeah has to be has to be especially after this game as well the closest one we've seen so far but psg quest able to pull it out of the bag omar with some clutch decision making and the galaxy just not able to match it so we do go into game number four next psg quest now one win away from securing their spot at dream league season at 23 can they pull it out or enigma galaxy gonna fight back we'll find out after the short break
It starts with this A person that you miss Mine draws a blank I wanna go back, back to the early days When life was an escape Now I just wait for better days I lost myself in your reality Lost myself Hello and welcome back to the Dream League Season 23 Close Qualifiers for the MENA region. Egov, it's the Grand Finals time. It is. This might be our last game. It could be. Anything else? <laughs> oh, <laughs> I was waiting for the hook. I was waiting for you to like build up to something, you know, it's like Nick bro, one game away from elimination, two games exactly, away from qualification. Yeah, like, wow. Now on the flip side, PSG Quest are looking in fine, fine form. Um, I think there was one draft of game two that potentially was a little bit shaky, right? They're bringing out the carry Marcy. They um, never really got time into play. So I think at least drafts are super important for these teams. Nigma need a very well planned out draft to cushion the fact that they don't always make the best team uh, calls uh, collectively across the board of all five players. And their draft obviously complements that quite a lot. Um, and on the flip side for PSG Quest, they went a little bit too creative, potentially, you could say, in game two, which pushed it in Nigma's favor. 
Um, so for this uh, for fourth and potentially final game for, like, for PSG Quest, um, it really is just about getting Noob that, that active puck type here and being able to make those counter plays, which he is so good at. Yeah, yeah, and I'd love to kind of like run with the idea that, uh, you know, Naomi Galaxy, like they, they've taken one game and then, you know, why can't they take another? But as you say, in that one game, which they did take, you know, they did run this Marcio thing. It looked a little experimental and it didn't quite work out for PSG quests. So, you know, I, I do have my doubts. But then again, last game, they had opportunities. They had chances. They they looked good throughout, honestly. Like there were some real opportunities for them there. But uh, unfortunately, just not able to pull it together. And uh, some, some really nice team fighting from PSG quests. Some great decision making. That Aghanim's on the Shadow Demon looking absolutely peachy. So uh, yeah, that's going to draw them through to a 2-1 advantage. What is going to happen in the draft for game number three is what I'm asking right now. Apologies to game number four. We're going to find out. I'm super interested to see what uh, Nygma Galaxy do here with their three bands. They only have three bands, so they do take out the Nagasaran straight off the bat. Ten seconds yeah, so what did they ban when they were first picked last time they banned? Lifestealer, Undying Primal. And that, those bands are very much changed for this game, that's 100%. I think at least for Nigma, we did get to see a different type of Nigma in that previous game where they won all the lanes and they got to really own the map. Like it's kind of the same as game two to some degree, but I feel like this felt better where they drafted themselves such a winning position. It really was like, as much as I harped on it in the previous cast, like the fact that that BKB for Miracle died at the Roshan fight, it really just threw everything away for them and yeah i mean it's it's easy to attribute it to a couple of points but i think if nigma i were to shake that off clean up a little bit in game then i really do expect this to you know hopefully go to a game five because they have it in them i would say this is the first qualifier of course falcons not being here helps a lot but it's the first qualifier <laughs> i'm personally watching where i I don't think Nigma will, if they are to qualify here, suddenly burst into we're back, baby, the international stage. You know, it's ass grass, but like I think they're at least looking slightly more competitive than they have in previous uh, qualifiers. Um, not crazily better, yeah, but for sure. I think more competitive compared to what some of the stuff they have shown us. Yeah, they're, they're ramping up. They're getting back into uh, some sort of form. Is it the form we expect from them? Not yet. Definitely not there yet. But uh, yeah. they're looking better and better each time. But it is slow progress for this team. Um, maybe uh, qualifying to a big event is what they need to really kind of shift their, their themselves up a few gears. I don't know. It but is... uh, right now, West looking very good. It just feels like some of the choices that Nygma Galaxy make are just disconnected to the game that they're in like that previous game they were smoking when dk had blink on his courier coming out they were smoking when like the the agnums was coming out as well like they've had or like the bkb wasn't ready like they're making a lot of moves that maybe in previous metas felt good but now it's like you kind of want every early fight to be the i win it overwhelmingly to continue then just annoying you on the map and they they just kept forcing it and like the same thing like with kuroki at the very end like he's he Technically could have had an Aghanims for at least like the penultimate fight, but he just bought a random Yules and then tries to do something else. It's like, then it feels like they're not really zoning in on the, okay, game's getting tough now. What is our fight? Like when you hear the comms of some teams, they really over discuss the idea of, okay, if we're to win this fight, SD has to be core. This guy has to be standard stormed. Then we can win the fight. And like, they really just remind each other of this concept. And in the fight, they execute. It kind of feels like we don't have that from Nigma, where mm. everyone's kind of doing their own thing, and at some point it harmonizes. But I'm not seeing that like real kind of structured. This is our comeback moment. This is our item we're playing for. They're kind of playing around it, but not with the timings of these items being like the number one thing. Like it is so important nowadays that you respect every item timing and use it to its maximum. And that's just one of the things that I really think Nigma are lacking right now. That's a very, uh, very well made point. Yeah. Something which can definitely reflect and, and kind of shed some light exactly on what they can look at to improve. And yeah, it, it's all about timings. It's all about synergies. And it's all about the picks working together in harmony. I feel like even in their victory, there was good team play for sure. But also, you know, it was a lot of miracle kind of turning up at the right times and, and landing like that that big 
focus firing on the right targets, running through the sidelines of the fight. You know, the less tracker as well being the being the kind of damage sponge at the front. You know, it kind of allowed them to play a little bit more disconnected, which did seem to suit them well. I mean, if they can find a way to pull that off every time, then power to them. That'll that'll see them through. But I don't know how reliable that is for their strategy. Doom Disruptor. The D's coming out for PSG Quest to start off their draft. A lot of silence, a lot of control. Of course, not incredible. I mean, it's good versus Leshrac for sure, don't get me wrong. But it's not It's not like some big answer. I'm not like, oh no, Leshrac is countered. He can just press his R before he gets jumped and uh, he's still going to be able to get off a decent amount of damage. If he gets a W off as well, then uh, he's, 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 he's cooking. He's good. Ooh. Great it, it does stop well. the... <laughs> It's a very good Rubik game, but at least going back for the Doom pick, it's like it stops the, the healing from Bloodstone, so now you're going to have to think a little bit about your positioning. You're going to be a damage dealer, but often you're a damage dealer and a damage soak. So damage, uh, Doom does kind of mitigate half of that. And then Nygma Galaxy, they, they got E.T. and Rubik. Ooh, that's going to be some spicy amount of damage. You throw some Rubik spell steals into the mix, some E.T. aura, Leshrac in the middle, yeah, sure he won't be healing, but there's going to be Sounds like a, a lot of uh, a lot of fight potential right now with these three heroes for Nigma. I think PSG Quest. Mm, they could. I don't know if they really want to go like life stealer right now because Nigma do close out the phase with a car like a potential carry pick. But I kind of feel like support plus noob hero makes the most sense here. And then just hold your last pick. Allow TA two thousand to see everything before he locks in his carry. Yeah, that said, I'd, I'd really well, like to see them grab a centaur on Nick the oh. Galaxy before it gets banned out, so I'll, I'll keep, keep that one in my pocket for later, insane. but... Uh, you want centaur? Mm. Okay. Uh, for Nick the Galaxy, yeah, yeah, but yeah, uh, yeah, we'll yeah. get to that one later. Sure. Um, What is an explosive... Yeah. I think, what? honestly, Lena's pretty fine for PSG Quest. Ooh, Ooh. new Death Prophet, maybe? We don't see that too often, but... I, He's I, one of I the mid laners that enjoys is. playing it. Looking like it to me, because I mean, you've already got your Doom Disruptor, so it's not going to be a pos 4 DP, I don't think. So it looks like it'll be, yeah, in the middle lane. PSG Quest, one more Five pick to go. Their pos 4 should come out here. Mm. At this point, you're probably asking for a, a Tiny or a Tusk. I think yeah, Tusk feels really good perhaps. here. Like some snowball save against the the, uh, the the ET spells. If you do give away a Doom, then sure, Tusk can come in to save you. If Lesh wants to go aggressive, you now have... Yeah, I just think Tusk is a really, really good pick for PSG Quest here. BKP piercing yeah, I agree for... with that. Yeah. Is I feel like buff, from what or... I've seen from Quest, their, their preference in draft is usually Batrider, but I think Tusk is just good. Ooh. But they'll go for techies. More damage is what's decided. Hmm. Okay. So they do go techies, and I guess me talking about Tusk is kind of forgetting, not forgetting, but it's not respecting the lane as much. The game felt kind of cool, but for a Doom lane, you probably want to have that ranged here behind you. Like Doom is in the category of Doom, Brew, Centaur, Tidehunter. These four heroes, they do their best Dota when a ranged hero is behind them, throwing in a lot of spells. And of course, techies complements that. And they want to make sure they have laning pressure when they are picking blind. Because Nygma now, like, let's say they did pick Tusk, it's like, okay, what's two, two melee heroes, oh, sorry, yeah, two melee heroes, okay, let me just go Morphling. Now you have Morphling ET, and uh, maybe that's why they picked Techies, because they expect Morphling to be a good pick for Nygma. You can buy Scardi down the line to deal with Death Prophet. Doom has to think about Leshrac, but now we also want to think about Morphling. So yeah, I think Morphling's a, a big, so bad. big pick here. Centaur's very good, up until the point where... PSG Quest control a bit more of the fight and Kinetic Field comes into play, but outside of that, yes, yeah, very Kinetic good. Field will always be that issue, so they will go for the Medusa in the end, go for their carry pick, and now ban out some counters to it. Oh. Hmm. Wow, anti mage ban. Old school. Yeah. Uh, it's I guess against Lash Rack and the Medusa. Right. It's too yeah. good of a game. <laughs> Normally, I'm like, when people pick uh, anti mage into Medusa, I'm always like, "Ugh, come on!" Like it's it's just not that good. And if they do it again to Lashrak, same thing. But both of them, yeah, you're cooking. You could ban. So, carry hero need of PSG quest, but the Galaxy have got their 
Uh, position three still to come out. They're off laner. We'll see the Mars ban. And I imagine they get rid of probably not Timber because it doesn't really make sense for Nick Galaxy's draft. They desperately need a little bit more control. They do oh, ban yeah, the center, center, of course. Is Thank Bruce God. still available? Let me double check the bands. I just want to see an offering like from Nigma that wants to join, like, wants to A, utilize Rubik in laning phase to punch a bit, kill or disrupt if he oversteps the mark, and also want to fight with Leshrac in that early game window. Five and uh, I think Brewmaster does fit that bill. Sure, there's a Doom in the game, but it's like, if the Doom's dooming the Brew, then the Lesh and the Medusa run free. If Medusa's getting doomed, then Brew split and Leshrac run free. It's like, you kind of want to have all three cores be good Doom targets. Of course, dooming Medusa doesn't feel great, but stopping Stone Gaze gives your carry good entry. And Okay, they go for a Beastmaster. So, they all amp up the Dusa. Beastmaster did get, you know, a couple buffs, some would say. Of course, you get gold now when you dominate a creeps. So it's going to help you farm towards Home of the Overlord a little bit quicker. Yep. The famous uh, Midas Octarine Helm of the Dominator build still yet to be completed. And I was wondering about this. See, I was thinking in my head, like, there's no way they go for an illusion carry now, right? You've got Leshrac, you've got Medusa, you've got Beastmaster. But then at the same time, I know TA2000, he, he loves his Terrorblade. And every time I think he's not going to pick Terrorblade, he, he, he bloody does it. He picks a, he picks a bloody Terrorblade. So we've got that coming out for PSG quest here and it is not the same as like a naga or a pl where you know your illusions are in people's faces i feel like you do kind of outrange and i think your scatty timing this game is pretty monstrous as well what, what, what do you think about the terror blade i think because he has such a nice front line with death prophet and doom you can go for this hero beastmaster if he goes ags i think this game's over for nigma there's so much range and kite available for PS Quest, he won't really get to use drums on well. This has to be a Dominator Overlord. I think this Ags build on Beastmaster has been one of the most overhyped and you know, misunderstood builds possible. So many offlaners would rush towards it for no reason, and suddenly they do no damage in the, in the fight. And I think this game is potentially one of those cases. Um, like, sure, if you get to Ags with two or three tanky items to further complement yeah, it, it's maybe a different scenario, but. Thing. The transition there from is... Ags to those items is so much farm. Yeah. There is some crazy timing you can hit with like Shivas and then like a, probably the BKB needed in most games as well. Blink dagger to get in, you blink, you roar, you get the drums going, you're like, oh, yes, I am God. But I mean, how do you get there? Especially in this kind of game. I think it would be a huge bait as well. That's definitely feeling the same way. So we're on the same page. We'll see how uh, FBZ feels about it as well. Prepare. He is a uh, master tier beastmaster, so one would imagine played against plenty of terror blades in his time. You know, going back to your question about the terror blades, like there is a nice amount of frontline. I agree with you that Scardi is going to be very important in this game. You punish a Leshrac, and I think for Nigma, they don't really have the best way to approach a fight cleanly. It's like if beastmaster wants to run in raw, Leshrac wants to get on top. Now, if you throw Doom coming into delete a hero, the tech is jumping over, Death Prophet of Exorcism, BKB running into the middle, Terrorblade is always going to have free entry to, to right click and to, to see who wants to go on. There's a lot of single target go for Nigma. like the ET wants there to go is. on a hero, Beast, the Lesh, sure there's AoE damage available on those heroes, but their main kill threat is like kind of condensed down to kind of a small set of spells uh, that aren't as you know, AoE hungry and, and that's where yeah. I think this Death Prophet should but be. But I also... Mm -hmm. Just whilst we're on the TB pick, like I do want to kind of loop back around and say, like the reason we're bringing up the reasons why they pick TB is because I think most people look at this and go, "This is a bad TB game." You've got a lot of illusion clear. You've got Leshrac, who's traditionally very good against illusion heroes, and you've also got the Elder Titan as well, who has that um, aura which completely nullifies his, uh, his his natural armor. So it's it's definitely not a very conventional pick here at all. Hence why we're kind of. Yeah. Talking about it a lot and, and validating it and trying to understand mm -hmm. the reasoning behind uh, PSG Quest here. Uh, so there's a bit of fighting over the uh, the bounty runes here. Miracle. He's kind of stepping up here and I'm not sure he wants to do this. Mana quickly disappearing. Kuroki trying to get in and get a decent amount of damage off in return, but I think Miracle might just be blown up under the tower. Malik gets first blood. Is he going to uh, miss any creeps? Mm, might miss one. Not the end of the world. 
I was laughing because on the minimap someone drew like the arrow to get back to top planes. Like, why did you walk through a jungle? Why not walk safely behind tier twos? So already a bit of communication <laughs> happening there. I yeah, think, I think it was, was FPZ, easy. but it could yeah. have been techies. I couldn't tell between the, well, the colour on the minimap. I think we know what announcement's gonna be coming out from Ning the Galaxy tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you for your uh <laughs> yeah, thank Your you. Hard work during the qualifications. That one arrow you drew on minimap was the last draw. Yeah, for the for the hope for the Enigma fans, thank you, Noob, for pausing so I could talk about this. There is going to be an element of staticness for PSG Quest. We've often seen them be a little bit more active in how they want to utilize supports to give Noob a game. And this time around, that active nature is very objective driven. Like when DP has exorcism, she's not running into the enemy jungle to go for a kill, right? She's moving towards a tier one tower, making some of these moves happen. And that's where Nigma, at least, there's a, a, a little bit more room to, to farm up, to be ready for that rotation. I think defending towers should be relatively easy because you, Doom and Terrorblade never want to make moves early on. Like they really want to hit creeps and, and farm up. But maximum, there's three PSG quests who want to make a move. If anyone else comes, it's suboptimal to the main game plan. I think if Nigma are able to equally drag their heroes around the map, get some Beast Master level six, bring him for a roar. Sure, it's unconventional from Nigma, but they have to make some of these early counter aggressive moves, and then sure they can ball up and maybe break down the map a little bit. But pacing is going to be really key for Nigma, giving away first blood. But the Doom doesn't help at all. But I am expecting no. to see Nigma bring the Beast and Leshrac into the early game. As we see countless pauses, hopefully there are yeah, no tech issues. A little bit of issues, but uh, you know, there's a lot to establish for this game, potentially the last game of the MENA region, if PSG Quest are able to have their way with it. But I also think it's we haven't really spoken too much about this Medusa pick, but I do think it's a pretty great Medusa game, uh, all things considered. You know, Doom doesn't really do a whole lot to Medusa because she's got that mana shield, so that's always going to be a big kind of counter to consider and just generally like it looks like a game where if farm medusa can kind of just lead enigma galaxy to victory if miracle does get to that position but again it's about stemming the aggression as a tp out from matthew gonna keep him alive very nicely done Exo rotation is also going to be very important in this game as well. Does the DP move to top, bottom, or just try to shove in mid? I think most likely Samel's going to do a pretty decent job on defending mid tower because that's kind of how Lesh rolls these days. He's quite greedy. We'll just stay in his lane. If the DP does go to rotate, then uh, we might see a uh, edict coming down and a tower starting to be melted. So I'd like to see the support come mid for the middle lane. Like when you think about it, a techie disruptor. Going for the Lesh, right? Like, Noob will have the Siphon up, so he can at least tank through some of that Lesh spells. With the Exo running, you get a kill, it's going to feel amazing. Like, ET Rubik, they're very much enabling supports, where they do a lot of control for other cores to do the damage. And where I was saying that PSG Quest is rather static in nature with Doom Terrorblade, they are also very static with Medusa Beastmaster. I just think that Beastmaster, if he has a good lane, can make a move compared to a, a Doom. But pre pre that it really will be advantage PC quest if the levels are in play for them. As they're trying to kill a uh -oh. he is very he'd gone for a wonder and does now perish. Yeah. The uh mana burn creep on the doom gonna cause all sorts of issues. As well as the techies just pumping out damage as well, so I find myself in a bit of an awkward situation there. Oh bottom side. FPZ, kind of getting zoned out a little bit off this bottom lane at the moment. Pass and TA2000. Ready with the Metamorphosis. So it's a really big threat, and you can see FPZ is just really respecting that. He's pulling the wave back. He's just making sure not to give him the opportunity for Metamorphosis into Glimpse. It just leads to a very awkward looking lane for him. Yeah. And very importantly, he is going for the Helmet Dominator. He has made the read that he is going for the, the old school build, the important build. Alice has glimpse if he wants to use yeah. it, but they're splitting the damage in bot lane. Yeah, they really are. Tier 2000 was pretty convinced that he was going for FBZ here, but instead they'll move towards Matthew. Matthew, still surviving for now, and actually just is going to be able to make his way out of this one. So the combo not quite working how they wanted, but 
Q2000 in his powerful demon form with a ranged attack will be able to uh, chase back FBZ. Sorry, I just like that description for some reason. It just sounds so silly. Transforms Terrorblade into a powerful demon with a ranged attack. Oh, hold up. Well, no, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Well, oh, I'm lagging a little bit, but hopefully I'll be okay. What the hell just happened mid lane? Yeah, yeah, my... <laughs> this is this is absolutely it's crazy. What what they they got the you got the kill onto the death prophet. We don't see kills happening in the middle lane solo anymore. This isn't 2015, but of course the male he he, he still thinks it is. And he brings down the death prophet. Very big kill indeed, and that is going to set up some of all sorts of success now in the middle lane. It's because Sumo goes for that point in stun. Like other less right mid laners, they go for three points edict. They they don't really care about that kill threat, but no, Sumo does. And... Oh, luckily my reconnect did fix my uh, my lag issue, so I'm back in the game. Yeah, sports coming in. Omar looking to uh, maybe set up something here. Want to smell, but mm, maybe not. And they're in the air. Sports are coming over. Disruptor as well. Yeah. And Exo isn't play this time around. If Simo thinks. Oh, I can go for a kill then. Uh oh, Miracle getting run down to the top side. Doesn't have the mana left. Malik wants to finish the job and is going to be able to do exactly that. Broki cannot stop him. Miracle, another death room up at the top side as uh, Regen Rune going to spawn over towards the top. It's a Doom on the top and he's, he's getting through the ET and the, the Medusa to, to kill off this Dusa. Meanwhile, the supports are living mid lane. They really want to take this tower. It's what we expected with the uh, the drafts in play that this quest can make the earlier moves. Such defensive positioning from Sumo. He walks all the way to the, the dire triangle, triangle on the bottom side. He cannot protect his tower alone. He needs assistance, and his team's not ready. Beastmaster is, of course, still locked into the farming of bot lane. The Malik. supports are. <laughs> He hits level 6 and just drops the Doom straight away onto Kuro's head. And Kuro, he's going to try and go for the Deny here, but unable to do so. Too much damage coming out from that Doom. Manic's uh, just too Yeah, middle to tower is oh, What the hell? I mean, Mana Burn, dude. It's it, it's unbelievably good against Medusa. Mm-hmm. Like, they have the Mana Burn with the Deuce. Oh, yeah, it's actually pretty grim. I just saw it used once. It's, yeah, it's pretty bad. Yeah, it's like <laughs> a quarter of Miracle's Mana. The problem is it's based on int as well, and uh, Medusa has pretty high intelligence, so... That's why you this pick Bogle a... against Doom. Rue. Dumb heroes for the win. Doom? Uh, sorry. Stomp him to the uh, <laughs> middle lane, but unfortunately, Samel just gets glimpsed all the way out, and Noob is absolutely fine. Great glimpse from Jakalis on the sidelines, and down at the bottom side, FBZ's gone as well. Five kills now for PSG Quest inside eight minutes of the opening match. The opening of it this just match. just can't rotate as one of these supports. It, this grand finals, it really is the, the supports in the early game moves. Omar, he's getting chased down Omar's by just running away. There's no Matthew, thunder trying to finish him off. Oh, stun. the stun miss. Okay, surely, surely TA2000 has to fall here. Yeah, and he will. The male gets a pretty critical kill here. He's doing it all right now. I haven't had both terms. It's top of the side. No, oh, Miracle. He's gone down again, again Malik. Uh, Just will um, not leave him alone. All point scorched earth. The mana burn the veil. This Medusa sitting at three deaths in laning phase to a doom lane. Like you, you never really expect that, but a little bit of RNG on that mana burn. They're gonna get. They're gonna be obliterated up here. And sure, Omo dies, but they don't have a safe lane. They don't have a bot lane. They've lost mid tier one. It's they were already smoking up as four at the eight minute market. They're running to top. They're, they're trying to punish maybe another over aggressive step by Doom. It's somewhat expected. It's off quarter in eight seconds. There are no major TPs in play from PSG Quest. So if they do find Malik, he will easily be dying here. How good of an actor is Malik's Miracle. not aware. Yeah. Does he Miracle's take one down with him in well his final breath? Oscar worthy performance. Doom goes out onto the Lesh Rack, but it's not going to be enough. They're going to be able to grab the kill. The noob is coming in from the side. Omar as well coming to this one. They know that Lesh won't be able to commit to this fight. So Kuroki is just going to get run down by the ghost here, most likely. Oh, they came the Step away. Oh, man. 
The mail does end up going down. Doomed up, killed off. Miracle's going to fall as well. Washley stuck in this engagement tier 2000, of course, turning up just for this fight. Yeah, you lose your doom, but they get the one and two of Nigma Galaxy in the process. FBZ going to relish the small amount of space he has been given. Grab that helm of Dominator and uh, try and just get something done in this game. Going down the toilet so quickly for Nigma Galaxy, honestly. The map pressure coming out right now. They've lost their middle tower and their top tower in inside 10 minutes. All due to the sexism and... When that engagement started, I was like, okay, there's some hope for Nigma, right? Like, the TPs are not available, but they were so close to the Twin Gate that with Disruptor and Terror Blade, within seconds, they poke their head up and that fight not oh, looking so good. The fact that you're four man smoke, you're four man smoking for Beast to go bot, three to go top, but you're dragging so much of your, you know, efficiency, your resource to just kill off a Doom to then also trade away your lives. Miracle sitting at 0 4 1. The worst starts that we've seen him have in the game so far in this grand finals. You know, he has the invis rune. Opts him to go for the twin gate. He sees Terrorblade top. Potentially an easier kill than this tanky doom. And Terrorblade, yeah. he's not holding a point. He just does not have Sunder. They see him, though. They had a uh, sentry up on the oh, Tormentor. Oh, oh Terp, but... Well, he saw him, they... but uh, did not react accordingly. Tier 2000, no Sunder available. It's going to get pulled down. Lightning Storm connects. Quite a yeah. interesting TP. <laughs> that's, a, that's a diplomatic way of putting it. Meanwhile, Kuroki's dead again. Down on the bottom side, going on a bit of a warding mission and punished appropriately. Okay, you know, that's a pretty bad TP. I, 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 you know, I can say it. I'm confident. I will say maybe, you know, it's not super common for Leshrex to go. No, no, okay, we can't. We can't. We can't. <laughs> No, I feel like if if Nigma had made that TP, would have probably said it wasn't very good. So it's only fair that we also say it wasn't very good for PSG Quest. <laughs> oh, hold up, they're back. Oh, they certainly are. So. Doom up in the top side. Oh, miracle. Oh, miracle. Once again, getting chased down up in the top side. Mana boots gonna do a bit, but not nearly enough. Robson, I, I, I think I've, I think I've changed my mind. I don't, I don't think I think this. I like this matchup anymore. There we go. The male being jumped in the middle lane. He's got himself a Yules. It's going to buy him a little bit of time, but unfortunately, there's an Atos out onto him now as well. Nice stop from Kuroki though. That might buy some male the space he needs to get himself out of this one. Certainly will. Mail, nice save there. Onto him. It's going to get him out of danger. Now yeah, picking we... up both the uh, active rune and the bounty rune. It's going to get him all healthy and mannery and all them delicious things again. We we're talking about the static nature of like these farming heroes, but this Doom, the fact that he's taken over the top side of the map, yes, he's farming, but he's farming the entire dire jungle pretty much. And I think Noob's doing a pretty stellar job at showing himself oh. in, in pretty important positions. He might be uh, getting caught a little bit here, but Simon just lost half his HP walking up to the high ground. <laughs> And there is an Atos happen. on new. The turnaround potential, of course, is very powerful if he wants to use it. Yeah, but with no Exorcism, I, th I think they're going to... Oh, well, for now, maybe. No Exo, no Doom. And Malik also Malik went back for the Midas. Like, he's down just to hit some creeps. And... A slightly ambitious ward here from Matthew. Throwing it underneath from the low ground. I expect him to deward it. Yeah, especially with the Kuri getting killed. They, they knew there's vision there now. I have to ask the question though, when is FBZ really going to enter the game? Of course, his farming his way towards the Helm of Overlord, getting that Ancient Creep will give him a little bit more purpose in the fight, but is anyone else ready to step up to the plate for that aggression? They're underleveled on supports, just about to hit level 6 on ET and Sumo. Yeah. And for a semi-aggressive build with the Yule's Kaya, Stomp, it's on the nice shot. Stomp. Yep, just go for the reset. <laughs> It is interesting that they were sinking so much time on three heroes on the Galaxy here, just kind of watching Quest farm their jungle. They can't really leave the area and just like allow PSG Quest to just walk around their side of the map uncontested, because that would just mean Miracle dies again. They kind of have to do it, but they're just kind of standing guard at the moment. Not ideal. Jump in, oh, onto Doom. Matthew, Doom comes down, onto Kuroki. Not the most high value target, but again, Malik's he, he's finished this this hand of Midas, so very clearly 
happy to just throw down dooms to get these uh, these throwaway kills. When Go back to fun of some creeps. Six, one, and three doom. He's being part of nine of 13 kills. I have Midas Veil. He's already got a blink if he wants to. He could go halfway towards Shiva's. Like he, Malik is just tearing up this game. Of course, Nick. Uh, sorry, PSG Quest are one game away from well, fine, to Jimmy Season 23. It isn't a LAN, but still, very prestigious online tournament with quite a bounty available. Nonetheless, as well. Yes. Yeah. Eighth Money and also those all important EPT yeah. points. True. They want to maybe get to rear down the line, then qualifying is going to help them. Be nice to see PSG Quest back on the international stage. They've uh, missed them. never really been good enough to overcome Falcons in four qualifiers, four grand finals they've lost, but this time around might be able to shake off the grand finals curse. And get themselves into the old green experience. Very good read from TA2000 down on the bottom side. Throws out the scan, gets himself to safety, and uh, will not be caught farming that creep corridor down on the bottom side of the map. Radiance the Galaxy trying to be aggressive and not really attack. connecting here. Doom's about to hit 10,000 net worth. Whew. Okay. My goodness. He has 60 minutes complete. into the game. The 15 minute 54 Shivas. Oh my god. You do yeah, not Shiva's want to go near this Doom. <laughs> no, no, I don't think anybody does. I think you just respect Malik and you're like, okay, buddy, you, you, you're a big boy. Instant smoke up. They aren't playing towards the Doom, really. Doom might use the Twin Gate to, to connect on the smoke, and just the vision from Nygma, it doesn't really feel like they're placing good enough wards at this stage of the game. They're committing two wards this terror blade location right the one below the tier two one above the tier two as soon as they get to their own side of the map this is not going to help them defend their their triangle defend the medusa farming and the smoke it doesn't connect yet but they late connected on the doom so he will be able to just be under cover for smoke for just a little bit it will all fade very shortly yeah. Just standing idle in the middle. They're going to be found. Stag it's, it's a little awkward. Stag Storm pretty easily thrown down onto the two of them. Throw in the Techies blast off as well. But Techies taking heavy hits in the middle. But they're not really coming to the fight. Miracle is though. He is in with a Stone Gaze and immediately going to get a Doom thrown in his face. Big pull out. Miracle just wants to try and get himself away. TP is available if he just wants to full on leave this one as Samael gets glimpsed back into oblivion. And dude just off. keeps on chasing. He really wants to just get some extra damage out onto this Medusa, onto this FBZ Beastmaster. And yeah, Beastmaster not going to be able to escape from this one. Will be three dead on the side of Nygma Galaxy. I don't really know what Nygma were trying to do there. They, they walked up into the river. They all started watching Kuroki Dewater high ground spot. And they just got wrapped around on PSG Quest. They're using their smokes. They're making the moves. They're jumping Miracle again. Oh, top. no, Miracle. He doesn't have Stone Gaze. He has a wand. Got a wand and a Manta and a dream. That dream will be enough to keep him alive. And now, running back in with no mana, Who's but here? his best friend here. Malik says, hello. Do you remember me from the laning phase? And Omar comes jumping in as well. And Miracle gets flattened. Dead once again. Malik on the front lines. We not hyper healthy here but also not worried this just team is just not here to, to really punish him as elsewhere on the map FBZ just trying to get mid lane out supports do go down yeah miracle dying yeah, yeah, every single kills. engagement or having to run away is not feeling good like his net worth is the the least of all the cause he of course has had a a terrible start to this game. What is it? Six deaths? The most of anyone on his team. Broki is sitting just behind him with five. The safe lane has 11 deaths in 18 minutes in this game. The FBZ is trying to poke this tower in the safest way possible. Just using the creeps. Being pretty darn careful about it. This is... Probably the most effective thing that uh, they can do on the map right now. Maybe what they were trying to set up for earlier on. Using the Helm of the Overlord to get a bit of map pressure without risking their heroes. That's what it's for. Malik sees his best friend in the bottom side. Yeah, that's the, Mal Malik's just a huge Miracle fan, that's all it is. Omar falls down on the bottom side. 
on the nice support pick off for Nick the Galaxy. They're starting to get a little bit of uh, movement on the map. Yukalis does get seen as well. Grogi just running at the guy. The fear aggression from the Elder Titan. Nigma's strength is in numbers. Beastmaster, Leshrac, Medusa, these heroes like to ball up and hit towers. They are trying to use their strengths. This is interesting, yeah. 5k gold behind, but they're making the call to be aggressive, to be on the enemy side of the map, to push towers. It's that free Scardy timing of Terrorblade. As long as you have some items available, then you can make that group up, you can make that play. The Helm of the Overlord has been in, in Beastmaster's uh, inventory for a little bit. There's a Kaya Sanj on the Leshrac. And... I feel like Nick, but they, they, they can they can be the aggressors. They do have plenty of damage. It's just about setting up the fight, and uh -oh. this is not how you do it. You're getting picked off. You've left them alone. FBZ dies. Yeah, Meanwhile, difficult Doom's one to defend, but they are stolen. going for the Doom onto Malik. Yeah, stolen Doom from Matt uh, from Matthew. I didn't spot that one. Ah, uh, he used because he just used it onto Medusa. That's why. Medusa yep. trying to get herself away once again. Pig pole out. It's going to be tricky though. There comes a glimpse. Miracle once again dragged back into everybody. Stone gaze TP might be enough to get Miracle out. It is. Miracle survives for once. Matthew, meanwhile, does get caught. He doesn't get out with his doom and he is going to get bought down. Steals doom again. <laughs> the miscommunication there from PSG Quest. They used the glimpse and the Aptos at the same time, allowing Medusa to freely TP out. There was no other cancel in play with the Stone Gaze as well. You cannot rely on Doom jumping in. You would just get put into stone form. It doesn't really matter though for PSG Quest. With the Exo running, with the meta running, they are able to go straight into the pit. Blame the Aegis. Yeah, who are they being to? annoying, but that's about it. It's a thousand that's what coming Hell to as well. Yeah. Give it to the real carry this game. Woo. Yes, sir. The Mal sees Malik, but this is absolutely not the target you ever want to start a fight onto anymore. Not with an Aegis, at least. I think before this point, I felt like Malik could have been vulnerable to like some magic damage. I mean, if you ignore the fact he has just 1,700 HP, now 1,800. Perhaps you can just roast him with some uh, with some lash rack spells, but not not anymore. Not with the BKB coming out, especially, and not with an Aegis. The thing with Nigma's draft is it's a lot of damage over time. They don't really have that explosive damage. Like Medusa wants to right click. Matthew wants to die in the river. Um, Leshrac wants to edict you. you know, it's like it's a lot of prolonged the engagement. While PSG Quest, like they they enjoy that, right? DP has silences. Uh, sorry, siphons to heal up. The the Doom naturally will just tank most of that engagement so even if you are to find this this doom what's stopping for techies jumping back in the the disruptor to position nicely there's no explosiveness with nigma's lineup and i think it's why you see psg quest running around them up so freely the time it takes to kill anyone will probably allow for some counterplay to, to occur and sumo he's stepped up in the mid lane that's there you go, up. Doom comes out, Pulse Nova not running right now, so he might just be bought down. I'm not sure he's surviving through this one. FBZ coming in, using the roar out onto the techies, try and bring him down, and will be successful in that. Malik looking in from the sidelines. No Doom available, but still a pretty strong hero without it. In he goes, Infernal Blade comes out onto FBZ, glimpse as well, and his health is just running out as TA2000 cuts him down. Stone Gaze used by Miracle just to get him and his supports out of here. What a cool build from Noob. He's got an Atos for lockdown, some Halberd to, to just annoy this Medusa. Don't allow any kind of potential chance of the, oh wait, she's getting some right clicks off. Oh, nope, none of that. And then maybe even a Blink Dagger just to make sure that positioning. He wow. will love to find the back lines, prevent Rubik and uh, uh, Elder Titan from recasting their spells. Uh, this game has been very fun to watch if uh, you're a PSG quest. Enjoyer. Enjoyer. Yeah. yeah. Or just a good Dota enjoyer. Uh, yeah, that's not a good Dota enjoyer. Mm. Yeah. I don't really mind who wins. I have no favorites here. I don't know, like I had favorites the way I said that, but just to clear, I have no favorites in this series. Sounds suspicious to me. Get him. That was a little Take bit suspicious, away. yeah. Yeah, maybe even do something rare for Nick cause, especially. <laughs> <laughs> Going for the um, healing lotuses as well, which I really like to see. I feel like a lot of cores just don't bother with this, and 
we have those like lotuses just sitting around with like six lotuses on each pool at some points, but noob not neglecting the lotuses. Yeah, hopefully the burst heals right? will be it's... very effective. It's like he's able to actually make these moves and not be away from the team. Yeah. Ooh, the, the scan from Pitchquist connects on yeah. Nick, Like, How many times have we seen this during this grand finals? The support's getting dragged in some, some core movement, not really connecting or anything. Then after the fact, they then draw the circles like, guys, they're here. Like, yeah, well, you just didn't really find the entry. And if you were to connect, you want to connect as three heroes. It's very, very awkward. Beast Master does have the BKB though. He does, yeah. And Miracle has been able to finish off a butterfly some way, somehow. So, you know, it doesn't give him the raw HP to really deal with the Doom, but also a Medusa, you don't really want that anyway. And it will help him a lot versus the Terra Blade. So clearly just looking for the end game items, thinking about in 10 plus minutes time, what is the game state going to look like and what four or five items are I going to want? And the second one on that list is the butterfly. Noob. Be positioned very aggressively, taking this middle wave as well. Right in the faces of Nick McGuire. He's teasing us. Look how much gold he's got. He's like, do I go BKB? Am I going for this blink? Is he going to change it up with a random third option that we're yet to see? Whoa. Nick will casting rapier for the uh, big damage exorcisms. Let's go. <laughs> what? So FPZ is about to get blink dagger. Kuroki, you be careful there. Ooh, 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 it was close, but he gets it. Matthew, meanwhile, will die. Pops also die over the top side. Oh, that's uh, yeah. Top tower being absolutely right. slammed by TA2000. Exism coming through as well. Though. Oh, and they managed to find the glimpse back onto the left track as well. So Zmail's got to make his way back in all the way from mid. That means they don't really stand a chance of defending this. Miracle comes across. All right, maybe this is the stalwart defender off the top lane of barracks. They won't be able to defend the range barracks, but they will be able to chase them off the melee. A small victory, but something which uh, Nigby Galaxy will be forced to take here. Maybe this is a point where they look for a play. Exism will be on cooldown for a little while. Metamorphosis as well. Doom not on... I mean, if there's ever an opportunity, Nick the Galaxy, he, they have to take it. Yeah, they have to go now. They're pushing out top of the illusions. I don't know if they have any smokes available. I'm, I'm not seeing any on Elder Titan. I don't know about Rubik. Okay, they've got one on Rubik, but they need to find something. Both Death Prophet and Terra Blade aren't at full strength right now. When the Beastmaster, he has the blink, but it's such a predictable play, right? Like when you have these lineups that have big cooldowns, as soon as you use them, and these pros are conditioned to want to retreat. And just look at the positioning of PSG Quest. They're all by their tier 3s. So They're not giving a yeah. single chance for Nygma to find a, a, a free kill. And that is just going to hurt Nygma. They, they need to get to towers. They need to force some objectives here. At least utilize this very small window of time. 42 seconds for the Doom. 73 seconds for Exo. And 35 for, for Metamorphosis. It's uh, pretty good for them to do stuff, but... One tier two tower, and that's about it. They've not really been able to achieve anything else. Of course, any farm right now is pretty good for Nigma, so they will use this window of opportunity just to maybe get themselves to one Whoa. more component towards an item. Huge moment here on the net where Miracle very briefly overtook Noob. Pretty Huge big moment. Yep. Well, it was only for, for like a second or so. But... Teammates, right? And Medusa was the bottom of everyone. So it has taken yeah. nearly 28 minutes to overcome her teammates as well. Miracle is back. All right, guys, if you want Nygma to come back into this game, you know what you need to do. You know that the bat chests really empower him. I have no idea how it does, but he finds that energy somehow. Or if you don't, just don't. It's fine. Yeah, PSG Quest are kind of cruising in this game. We'll now see the true Nygma fans in chat. We'll find out who... Who's a believer. Meanwhile, cooldowns are back off cooldown for the side of PSG Quest, so they are ready to rock once again. Exorcism, Doom, Dadic Storm, Metamorphosis, all the good stuff. It's all ready to go. Roshan is up as well on the Dire side. Going to be Radiant very shortly, so... 
That's been a line drawn by uh, by FBZ. I'm not sure what he wants to achieve here. Just getting waves out by the looks of it. That seems to be the case. Request. Hunting forwards now. The 80,000 just picks up his second really big item of the game, which is the butterfly. Each request, though, should just take these other towers. Don't overplay their hand. Take this bottom tier one, take the tier two. If they want, they can force uh, Nigma back to base and then look to do Roshan after, as it's going to be respawning shortly. No crazy items have really been picked up. Like, yes, Butterflies on Terra Blade, I think Octarine on the Death Rocket, but. God, he's not complete on, on Miracle. Like, he is getting back into this game. Leshrak as well. Not the wildest of pickups, but a Blink Dagger. So they're going to have double Blink on Beastmaster and Leshrak. They can be a little bit more explosive. Something that we said that they lacked with their lineup. They have now itemized to potentially deal with that. Scully yeah, with respect, but... Miracle. Yeah. Now running back as uh, these illusions and creeps just shoving in the waves right now. So Miracle will come back to deal with those. Yeah, breaking this high ground is going to be you can... pretty damn difficult. No, I fully agree. Like the fact that Terra Blade, if he steps up into a roar with an ET spirit on top and Leshrac, like he's dying. Like he doesn't have BKB yet. I think that's yeah. why they are playing They're quite disciplined on PSG Quest. Playing in the area but not over overusing their hand, eh? You want to wait for ages, yeah. most likely. It's also, yeah, I was going to say, just kind of standard procedure, waiting for ages to hold this triangle, shove in both bottom and mid waves, and then that way you force Nygma home. And it means there's no way they can really contest Roshan without just running all the way down this bottom wave, which never feels super good. Daytime as well, so Radiant Roche really favors Quest as well. Just everything, everything being very, uh, very careful and positive. The side of PSG Quest. I think the Galaxy, yeah, I have a feeling they might be staying on the high ground for a very long time. I don't imagine they go to contest a Roshan or anything like that, but maybe. maybe? You say that. Man, they're that, that they're they're smoke it out. I think I'm going to test a Roshan. Thoughts? It, if they lose this fight, the game is probably over instantly. If they win the fight, then whoo, we got a game on our hands. The last time they did this smoke in game three, they just walked into instant death. So Yes, it's a bit pretty. better. They've already. I'm concerned. Broke smoke or miracle to D ward award. Actually, no. Then they re-smoked him buff. It's fine. They've used scan. They know they're not in the pit, so it's gonna allow them to position just a bit better. <laughs> but they're pushing the waves from fog as well. Like yeah. The techies mind. Like they know where they are. This is not a smoke of. It's no, not a smoke. It's just it's just not no, a smoke. <laughs> like they're here, but they may as okay. well be under wards. You can may track their well. movements very easily. Yeah. And do they retreat? Do they stay? Or do they want to fight? They're all kind of body blocking each other right now, trying to get back to a yeah, high Yeah, they're kind of lion kinging across the bridge. <laughs> they have one observer, Kroki, holding it until the fight starts. And that's it's over. Both teams have a scan. And that's it. Nick's yeah, attempt of aggression was followed by one proximity mine and a creep wave dying out of thin air. Got some techies mines. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn good hero. Just for scouting out these kind of movements, so. It will be a pretty straightforward Roshan for the side of quest. They play their way into it nicely. Now TA2000 picks up the Aegis. There's going to be a banner grabbed by the techies as well. So yeah, Ooh. I have a feeling we might be seeing uh, a lot of Big Galaxy on their high ground for the next... Five to ten minutes. Will they be able to get back out onto map at any time soon? Yeah, I don't think so. Question is, how long can the Galaxy hold out for? feel like if Miracle forever. gets to MKB timing, then yeah, forever. <laughs> it becomes very difficult to break high ground with that, but before then, I think these Terrorblade Illusions should be able to do quite a lot. 
one it's the battle. fear it's the fear of the beastmaster like fpz he got his beastmaster pick he he saw a lot of heroes before he picked us up but he's found a lot but not really done anything for his team or the game right now and that's any minute that will become very different right the the blink roar into oh my god the pick off like, it's expected to happen at least once in the game he's not going to conclude the game with no real impact i'm, I'm sure it's going to turn around from at some point and i think that alone is giving psg quest uh, psg quest sorry a little bit of hesitation to go high ground they don't want to give this medusa that that one fight protected by a base like nigma they struggled immensely uh in all these qualifiers with positioning with matching the quality of the players they're against in team fight execution but the high ground with this type of draft and all those problems they, they disappear they're gonna be able to to execute the perfect defense because they've got so much time to discuss it so much time to plan it out and it really is on psg quest to, to make sure they know why they're going higher ground and in which way they're going to do it if they don't then expect them to lose a the fight he could be of course is available for tier 2000 that will help him to go up but yeah they don't want to go up this higher ground it's so spooky unless Whoa. miracle gets caught miracle. here Ooh. hold your breath please be greedy not now Oh, he sees a Shiva as he backs himself away. He should be all right here. I just, I, I, I wouldn't care. I just didn't want Mamalik to be the one to kill Miracle again. You know, like the, I like to think that there's some character growth here where, where Miracle's been able to, you know, make himself still be a hero after the horrific laning phase. After Malik bullied him and, and trampled on him and spat on him in the laning phase, but now Miracle comes out stronger than ever before. And is it? And if he just died there, it would have destroyed that whole thing. But he gets away, so it's all good. Malik. Does not connect. And uh, maybe guys will continue holding this high ground. Two minutes left on the Aegis. The map is yes. being uh, absolutely farmed up by Quest at the moment. Feeling no pressure to run up this high ground and force anything out. In fact, they've even taken a barracks. I mentioned before. No, uh, MKB just finished now by the Medusa. Miracle has been able to get himself a good amount of farm. Despite the position his team is in. He's been the only one able to get out on map and get anything for this. So... This should put an end to these illusions on Terrorblade being able to just freely take barracks. As as long as Miracle is home. If Mummy leaves, then they've got issue. That's Mummy Medusa, by the way, not, not Mummy Miracle. Woke up. Name me Galaxy on the run. It's a tier 2000. I mean, it's a it. target, and the amount of dodge is almost nice, but don't forget, this is Aegis. They don't want to overcommit to this kill right now. Matthew has been found on the sidelines. Doom comes out onto the Medusa. Medusa, she needs some help, but with the Static Storm coming out onto her as well, she's going for the TP out. The Glimpse is there to stop it. Miracle's just getting absolutely destroyed right now. Omar will die, but now out of mana, running out of health. Miracle trying to stand his ground. He's getting off That's some Tormenta. damage, but not enough. Tormentor killing a lot of heroes. Actually just killing Miracle at the moment. Noob getting a, uh, a shard during all of this as well. That's pretty nice, I suppose. And quest, I mean, it, it was messy, but they do win the fight. Now 66 seconds without Miracle. Could be I a have... chance. I have no idea why Nigma is taking that fight. I have no idea who's making that call. But that is not a game for 15,000 gold down play to make. The Aegis is out in like a minute 20. Your, your big entry, your big statement, the reason why Peter Quest haven't gone high ground is that raw initiation. See how quickly, yeah, he manta dodged it, but see how quickly he disappeared. Like, why is Nigma smoking up? To kill off a Terrorblade who still has the age, it's like, just wait 50 yeah. seconds, make the same play, and then you're going to be back in, look back in the game, but you're at least going to get the kill, Terrorblade's dead, he might buy back out of a, oh, I can win the fight, maybe he doesn't, you get to progress the game a little bit longer, but to make that call with age is still in, like, you're the one controlling the game, even though you're down by so much gold, the fear of high ground is what's keeping you in this game, and then they just, just kind of waste their, their timings and Sumel. He's pushing top. He gets a beautiful blink, though, but I have to yeah, ask the question. That was clutch. not a good call from Nygma. Smell still might still be in trouble here. Off. They're still chasing. The rest of Nygma coming on through, but they're not going to be here anytime soon. So it, it looks like it will just be Samael going down by himself, trying to buy himself a little bit of time, trying to get back to his team, but never going to make it. And Matthew is the only one really continuing to come over and try and help out there. So Samael will die. Yeah, these movements just not really making much sense to us for, for Enigma Galaxy. 
what I said after the, the in the pregame, right? It's like the same as last there. They make some weird smoke moves that don't seem to sync up with the game's timing. And now PSG Quest, they have Lincolns on the on the Death Prophet, Exorcism hitting the, the melee racks. Too much doesn't really want to buy back, but might be forced to if they want to protect their, their buildings. It's yeah, already if these moves falling are so particularly quickly. Like four head or five head, but <laughs> there was a miracle was dead. Noob going to get roared up. Malik jumping in, looking for Miracle here. Wants to land Team that Malik. Doom, but they're actually making the call to get themselves away on the side of Quest. Samel trying to chase, but it's so much used by the side of Nygma Galaxy and unable to really turn it into a whole lot. But that said, you know, at the same time, x now on cooldown. Static Storm just coming back. And Doom back on the cards as well. So PSG Quest. Something tells me they might just want to wait for Roshan here. Just, just simplify the whole going high ground thing. It's so hard for them to break high ground. It's why I'm, I gave such an honest reaction to that previous play from Nygma. They're kind of holding yeah, all the cards in this game like to some degree, right? There's like a lot of respect being shown and they just get a little bit too excited and because of it, they now forced out Sumo to buy back. Like, uh, the Medusa's dead, so Sumo just beelines it on top, blinks out, then dies. He's dead for like 70. Respawning in 30, Rax are getting pressured, he has to, it's just so awkward. Self-inflicted, uh, you know, pain given to Enigma here as they, they just struggle to, to really make anything happen. And Peter's Quest, like you said, yeah, wait for that next Roshan. It could respawn in 20 seconds. It could also just be a really long respawn. We'll find out shortly. But yeah, the, uh, all right. What's the buyback situation? Feather. Hold on. That's that's pretty important. For the next high ground defense, Medusa, Beastmaster, and Rubik all very close to having buybacks. So it will just be only the Leshrac without buybacks for this upcoming fight. As long as they don't start spending their gold. Don't do that, Nick. But keep your gold. Give us a fight. Everyone I don't know. wants to see that one fight from you. That Void Stone on the Lotus Orb looking real tempting. That this is fresh raw yeah. recipe looking <laughs> real juicy for FBZ right now. <laughs> no, but I, I will, of course, be praising PSG Quest a lot in this game. The way that they moved around the map, the way that Malik broke them down, they, they really do deserve this, this game for win, but I have to say it when I see it, and I will happily spend a, a minute or two exclaiming my uh, disbelief in some of Nygma's moves this game. It's your quest now going. Yeah, the third I mean, that, that torment to play was yeah, very, very odd. I, don't bring it up, man. I'm still getting... I feel uncomfortable yeah. even thinking about it. But Roshan going to be Especially grabbed by Mummy Miracle Quest, just man. seconds before. Like, I was double uncomfortable. No, I said I said Mummy Medusa. Specifically no, not you Mummy, said Mummy No, you specifically said That Mummy never Miracle. happened. It like happened. When, if Mummy leaves home and then just, just elaborated on that. Uh, well... Anyway, Aegis, now belonging to the Terror Blade. Is this the point where PSG Quest break the high ground? How long do we have to wait before they give it a go? Double damage or is it... Okay. I'm actually kind of concerned because uh, wait, hold on. he didn't wait for the bottle for the Amplified damage. Are they going to make the really cool play? No, okay, they're not. Do they have a smoke? Let me check. You have a couple of smokes, so what when you lose your T3 towers, it does allow PSG Quest to make the smoke deep into the enemy base and fight them from their own base rather than going head on. It could allow them mm -hmm. to, to catch the back lines. They were drawing on the minimap, but they, they didn't really opt to do it. Yeah, I guess it's a little difficult as Roar is now out onto the turret. My god, Terra Blade just getting absolutely blasted right now. This first life completely taken. Of course, didn't really use a whole lot there. No meta use. BKB still in inventory. It will be okay, but... Uh, all right. I think for uh, PSG Quest now, you know, you just want to wait for the next Roshan. Um, oh, hold on. Moke up. Unless... Yeah, they're going to find themselves FBZ here. Doom comes down. BKB TP out from FBZ. He might just be okay here. Don't think the Doom's going to do enough damage to actually finish him off. But we'll give Noob a chance to get on the high ground and get the Exorcism going onto those barracks. But 
They might see the opportunity. Now, there is a refresher shard on the Doom, so... While the Doom is completely out of the game, it will still be in play. We could catch somebody out here. Miracle already down to half HP just from these illusions. Got to be a little bit careful. And by HP, of course, I mean mana on Medusa. EHP would be more accurate, but... Noob coming up the higher ground. Raw comes out onto Noob. Noob, he's not going to survive this. He's gone. Another hero taken out by Enigma Galaxy, and now they're going to go towards TA2000. They want to take down the big boy, but they don't have to stun through the BKB. TA2000 will escape. Can they catch anybody else here on the retreat? Doesn't look like it. It's so slow going to get out onto the map for this team, and there's a lot of mines on the floor as well, as Kuroki is finding out, so... They will be able to escape. Still another butchered high ground attempt for PSG Quest. It's starting to look a little bit difficult. This is the strength that I expect to see from Nygma. Like their high ground, it, it is so impenetrable with these heroes, and even with the Aegis, they're just not able to really whittle down any buildings. At this point, if Nygma don't make those random smoke plays, I'm kind of favoring them. Like, I think it's easy to look at network and the kill lead. Right now, if I see Nygma play in their base, not make overly aggressive smoke plays when resources aren't in their favor, then yes, I am currently, I think, a well, well, you know, disciplined team can win this game. Like 60-40 right now, I, I favor Nygma because they just can't break the base on PSG Quest. It is so hard for them to get through to this. I'm not trying to provide any like copium, but... I'd say like, more that's, like 64-36, like, so... you know, just like a ballpark from me. Maybe 71-29. That's why I got so like disgruntled when I saw this like Aegis play. It was like when I see this high ground, I see like the Beastmaster, the ET, the Dusa. It's such a formidable high ground defense and Death Prophet, she thrives before big items come into play. Like she likes to be the yeah. early game aggressor. When when it gets to late game, she's not very good going high ground. Like she has to stand still with Exo running. She's gonna die hundred zero from some split shot and stuff. It's like she can't chase yeah. deep and get siphons off and also there's, there was another thing I kind of noticed in that last fight was a nice little combo between the supports. The Rubik dragging back the Terra Blade, and the Ult Titan just able to Kuroki just sit in the middle, just just sitting on the uh, on the on the Terra Blade when he's dragged deep into the base. That's a real problem for the Terra Blade. Like he he cannot play the fights mm. if there is a uh, big fat Kuroki on his face because it's just all well, your armor's just gone. Natural and they have order, a lot of defensive tools. ability. Yeah. Like Medusa needs to be able to stand her ground, right? Like. He has, of course, the BQB fight prior, but there's a Lotus and Glimmer on the Rubik. There's the Vlads and the Drum on the Elder Titan. The Beastmaster has his Inner Beast Aura with an AC. Like, they've, they've got a lot of utility to make sure this Medusa hits even harder. And now Daedalus is complete. She'll probably backpack her boots, and Beastmaster has the Refresher. PSC Quest, they're smoked up right now. Of course, if they win a single fight... With these big items in, buybacks are not a question for Nygma. Not happening. If Nygma <laughs> mis-execute their high ground defense, then good shot. But the fact they're foregoing oh, buybacks no. as well, they really just leave that their, their defense is strong. I'm scared. The torment is back no, up man. again. I hope this isn't Ooh. the uh, Enigma guys. Like, they no they don't like their torment being fine. taken. They take they that personally. Worry. All right. Stay strong. They're staying strong. Yeah, I think PSG Quest deserves to win this game. Barracks. But I'm ready for the they comeback. It, I mean, yeah. I, I guess deserves kind of the wrong word, but it feels like they should. Nobody have won the deserves game. anything in Dota. No, She's yeah, a cruel exactly, mistress. Yeah. That's a that's a that's a poor use of the word for sure. But... Miracle was trying his hardest on his Medusa. Is the win probability slowly shifting the way of... Mm, kind of, uh, from 82% oh, down to 64, so yeah. Yeah, got down to the 61 at the very lowest, but yeah, we've, we've kind of chilled out at 64. I really like this Wind Waker from Smail as well. I mean, it's an incredibly defensive build across the board. Lincoln, Sanj, and, uh, Kaya and Sanj, and uh, Wind Waker from Smail. I mean, no BKB still, but... Does give him the options, but Jukalis has now grabbed himself an Agadim Scepter and has two Blank Daggers queued up as well to go with it, so... With those Blink Daggers in play, he will be able to get on the back lines and, and maybe punish Samael's build a little bit. Shan it. 
Might respawn in a minute 10 and then, of course, three minute window after that. I also so really like the uh, choice base. from... What choice do you like, sorry? Like, they already have. Um, yeah, I, I like Smell's choice to go for, uh, or to skip out Bloodstone this game for, net, for at least like the first majority of the game. Because it just doesn't really make sense. You've got a Doom in the game, you know, obviously he's always going to be a big target for the Doom, so you don't want to make that even more valuable. And you've also got the Scardi, which is always going to be built on the uh, Terror Blade as well, so just skip out on the Bloodstone in the early game. Go for more big defensive fight items. The Shock Top, of course, has Agonims with Telescope. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. That helps. Oh, okay, Nick, but they're leaving their base. Their base has been their best friend. Oh. It's what gave me so much hope for their defense, and we'll see if they they can get some good vision down to, to replicate their success. They need a One high ground hero without buyback right now, and it is FBZ. What did he buy out for? It's the refresher orb. Still the refresher, yeah. Oh, you gotta be so careful for he FBZ. I mean, he, damage he's... Oh, oh smoke my God. smoke action. FBZ leading the charge. Miracles not smoked though, so they do see him. Malik immediately going in here. BKB comes out. Roar is there onto the Death Prophet. Samel ready to follow up as well with the split up. Medusa running in, doomed up, hexed up, everything used onto the Medusa, but it doesn't matter. They're able to take down Noob regardless, but Medusa just can't get away from this right now. Wind Waker going to be used onto Medusa to try and buy her a little bit of time. Miracle can't stand his ground here. He is going to go down. Not enough damage coming out. Not even trying to turn around and fight that one. Samael, though, he's looking for the opportunity here. Coming in on the sidelines, but once again, these kinetic fields so on point from the Disruptor. Ducal is just breaking this fight in half as they bring down Matthew as well. Three and now they look towards now. the Leshrac. Three buybacks used from the side of Enigma Galaxy. Quest, they see it. They respect it. They back themselves away. Their cooldowns are just not here at the moment. They'll go back. They'll wait for the reset. Enigma Galaxy, I don't think we'll be looking to really punish this. And all of PHC no, Quest no. spells will be up for the next Roshan. It's not as if there's going to be a window where Roshan's up and you know, the, the ages are contested pre-Doom, pre-Exorcism. Of course, Deathrobe also brought back in that fight, but Nygma, they left their base. They went for a fight, but it just wasn't the clean initiation that they needed. The clean initiations that they get at their high ground, it just wasn't found. FPC, he walks down the mid lane, through the bottom side, into the mid lane, Blink dodges back, and at that point, there is no high ground advantage, there's no vision that gives Nygma nice entry. They're roaring up the Death Prophet, the Medusa's kind of on the southern side of the fight. It's pretty split up that that's not the type of fight that Nygma want. And of course, PSG Quest, they, they excel in these types of engagements. They are instantly smoking, though. They want to try and control this Roshan pit. And Doom's up in 25 seconds, Exo's up in 10. This is going to be a full force PSG Quest fighting into Enigma that just used their buybacks to survive the previous fight. Vision is key. There's a ward here. This is... They're going to see the smoke. Oh, they know, they know. The bomb goes off. Yeah. Brokey. He reveals everything, and PSG Quest just continuously backing, backing away. They don't want to fight just yet. Three seconds on Doom, and all of a sudden... No, yeah, maybe we do. All spells back available. It's a completely even fight now. Top but meanwhile, lane. creeps just pouring into the yeah. base. Bombs exploding. Nigma Galaxy, they pull the parachute cord. They are done. Yeah, she quests so good at reading these movements. I mean, sure, you could say it's a little obvious with the cooldowns all going on the side of PSG Quest, but even so, to keep up this discipline all the way through this series between four games, every single one, they've been able to keep vigilant about their timings, about their weaknesses, and excellently reading so much of what Nigma Galaxy has tried to do. Another Aegis, another attempt for PSG Quest to try and break down this base. They're going to have to think of a different route in. They can't just blindly walk up the high ground and hope to take buildings. And don't forget that this is a Enigma lineup there. They, they can deal with a Lost Rax or two. Well, for PSG Quest, they're going to need to do some smoke shenanigans. Utilize that ninja, ninja gear on the Doom. Try and wrap around and... Of course, they have so many mutes in play. Disruptor Ags, Doom 25 talent. They can delete heroes. The lack of buybacks. Only Leshrac has one. I think Sumo is going to really have to enter the fight with a lot of noise. You know, soak up some of that. So the Doom or the, the Static Storm and allow his team to, to play with a bit more confidence. Something we don't see that often is uh, Leshrac's going for the Pulse Nova Trigger's Lightning Storm talent. Is this just an answer to the kind of TB extra illusion clearing -ness? Yeah, these fights are pretty... Uh, 
chaotic in nature, so Diabolic Edict isn't the best. I think it's good when you're ahead and you can get to buildings. When there's no buildings to fight for, you need to get as much damage as you can, so... Yeah, I can... Yeah. Also, can see very high armor, looks nice. I yep. suppose. This Edict quite, not quite as tasty. Oh, no, it's pure these days. God, that was a throwback. Remember we'll give physical credit. Edict? You wanted a 16-minute game this Grand Finals. And game Woohoo! Four, <laughs> life on the line. Yep. This could be the best time for it. Might be getting tier 5 neutral items. If PSG Quest are to eventually fail at this high ground, you might be waiting Just for another this is, guys. This is game number 4. Yes. And PSG Quest, two games up already. If they win this one, they are through to Dream League. And Link the Galaxy are splinking out of yet another qualifiers. Their high ground is very hard to crack. And Rapier on Miracle, queued up now as well. We'll have the money for it very, very shortly. I'm not entirely sure how he gets his courier out to uh, get it, but... This is what plan. item does he drop? Does he? He needs the mantle for the wave clear. He kind of needs. No, I think he can drop the scar. You can get rid of. Uh, for the... I guess it is manta, but Oof. he does want the modifier exactly for scar. It's just, just awkward. I guess it is manta, but yeah, we'll see which one he goes for, or if he even goes for it because he might want buyback. It is on cooldown for for three minutes. Yeah, we shall see. Such yes, a tense quest. ending, though. What is their, what is their choice? I mean, I'm, I'm wondering who they're waiting to show. You know what their fight condition is. Ooh, top lane, Malik Dooms doesn't find him though. Looks looks to go for some ale, but doesn't connect. And they got to be careful, Nigby Galaxy as well. Like he, you could see him turn around. What Malik was about to do though was refresh and blink back onto uh, some ale, because of course. It would have refreshed Doom and it would have caught him out, but Smell caught himself and, and backed himself away accordingly as now they go the on to the Medusa. Nice lift. The lift up throwback. BKB out from Miracle. Matching the BKBs coming out from Quest. Smell backing him up. Quick glance to the left hand side of your screen, we'll show you. Only one buyback available on Nick Megazi. It is Smell, so he has to be always in the front, always baiting out these spells and. Done a great job so far. Doom wasted. Exism wasted. ESG Quest yeah. just not able to land that finishing blow. They have a refresher shot on the Terrorblade, and they have a refresher on the Doom, so Mana and Doom will be back available if they want to go again. Make Galaxy didn't expend any Actually, of their spells, though. Refresher shot well, handed over to the Death Prophet. Okay. A bit of item does trading have going the, on right now. The Terror Wave, so we'd be able to use 10 seconds of that if he wanted to. It was a little scuff to force yet. the game like that, but I think they just want to be ready. You know, give that shot over to mm -hmm. the Death Prophet. If you do find yourself in the situation where you can kind of blow up Miracle, then you can commit. Otherwise, no. And Aegis, 30 seconds left. I believe we will make it to that fabled 60 minute mark. Will Nick Galaxy be able to get out and get themselves some neutral items? I think we just farmed our way through that Aegis and the buybacks from Nygma are only a minute away. Beastmaster, he had a refresher for so long and only now he's entertaining the idea. He did get Lincoln as well, but yeah, he's entertaining the idea of buyback once again. Thousand going away. Here's the quest. 60 minute items. Another Roshan on the cards. They're not rushing this game. They know the severity of their misinitiation. Oh. One Static Storm, one Doom Mist, and they will falter at the high ground. Matthew as well. This shard on the Rubik is doing so much work. You might get hit by a Static Storm, but if Rubik's sitting back, he can just telekinesis you out of the Kinetic. It's such a yeah, hard that's counter. Been, that's been absolutely key here. The uh, lift over the Kinetic field is always really, really important. Matthew's been absolutely brilliant at getting that off. And that's the thing, like Quest, the way they've been approaching these fights, you know, they haven't been going for any deep dives or anything like that. So, been very much just frontliners and backliners in their positions. So, catching Matthew out seems very unlikely. And now, buyback status is suddenly looking very neat indeed. In fact, it's just as usual FBZ buying up, not saving for his buyback.
hasn't been punished for it yet. And we'll be getting it somewhat soon. Malik. Malik and Matthew. Laying eyes on each other just to, just for a second there. Leshrak very far forwards here. Samael, the Doom's out once again. Malik trying to close the gap here onto Samael. Samael, he can't get off the Wind Waker due to the Agnans on the Disruptor. And the rest of the team, they're not coming over to help him out here. They were going to go if Kuroki could get off like a decent Astral, Echo Stomp, something like that. But in the end, just not worthwhile. Long time dead on this Leshrak. It's far more way through the buyback, so they are back in play if he wants to. But we've seen this before, right? The Samuel buyback to defend top Rex into the chase down from Nygma. Mm -hmm. A poke a little bit in both lanes, but that's oh. just about it. 60 minute mark like going insane what for tier five are we going to go? We can Miracle cover your insanity was, uh... in a sec. Okay, what, what's the insanity? Oh, well, I, no, I was going insane because uh, Miracle had just lost a bunch of gold and I didn't understand how, but he bought the um, the Aghanim Yes, he bought Aghanim Shep. Upgraded it. Gobbled that yep. up. Got the shard as mm -hmm. well, so full combo of that online. That's an extra layer right. of protection. Here five time, may we please entertain yes, Radiant, if we can look at the shop and see what they are going for. They have the Book of Shadows uh, on the uh, techies. And the Death Prophet is yet to the side. Mirror Shield on the Terror Blade, so he can help reflect the roar. Very good, very good. Giant's Ring, now on the Death Prophet. Helps make him just a little bit tankier as he is soaking up quite a lot of that aggression and force boots for an additional kite on that disruptor. Relatively uh, good neutral items here. I think mainly the mirror shield is the big win or PSG quest to counter that Beastmaster. Yeah, that's a pretty big deal. Mm. FBZ will have to play to accordingly. Get out of base. Oh, FBZ's Ooh, out of base yeah, right now. FBZ. He's farmed one. Nice. He's getting it done down on the bottom side. Hawks giving him a little bit of extra safety. He's just going to go and try and grab him, get his team some neutrals. Oh. He's only got one so far. No access to ancient camp, so it will take a little bit longer. These ready creeps not really giving him what he wants. No. Come on, FBZ. Get the Come tier on. 5. Need to do a little spin first. Mirror Shield Medusa. Ooh. Wow. Mirror Shield plus the Ags and the Shard. <laughs> do not target Medusa with any spells. Yeah, luckily for Doom though, he has this like self-cast AoE Doom, yeah. which he can utilize. Mirror Shield, as much as it's nice, it's not the ha, gotcha type uh, type play. And FBZ is just AFK bottom as he waits. Doom also opts to go for the uh, Giant's Ring. I kind of feel like Ninja Gear holds so much value still. Of course, it's why it got the nerf in previous patches, not allowing you to hold yeah. that smoke effect once you put it into your backpack. But I think we might see this Doom still hold the ninja gear with the giant's ring and then toggle them through the fight. Ooh, another neutral item found by the Beastmaster. This one should go to the Lash. Certainly does. And another mirror shield. Okay, two and mirror shields. There's... Yeah, there's... Great. there's not that many targeted abilities, right? We're looking at... Uh, there could glimpse. be some Sunder, there could be Doom if you try to target Sunder. it. And you don't really know what the other options they're getting. Like, they don't, they're yeah, going to take unwavering condition, right? Ooh, let's go to 95% <laughs> magic. No, it's not going to be a fun way to lose. Yeah, exactly. Ten attributes and also provide some reflection. In these type of fights, they're so chaotic that you're not going to be able to manage the does he have mirror shield up but there's the link to the play oh he's got something you know it's like it's just oh i guess hex is probably the big thing as well right i did spells no matter spells, hex mm, does that not, not not count as a spell all right well in that case i just don't really get i don't really understand why they're getting it but uh i guess we'll see in the fights how it pays off it's been so long since i played a 60 minute game i kind of forgot if it takes hex or not I'll just make it, I'll keep an eye on I the fight. I feel like it but... must. There's, there's, it's the only thing that explains the mirror shield to me, otherwise I can't understand it. So, uh, CS Stone out from the Rubik. That's going to be very nice. The vision, the cast range, especially on this Rubik, who's got um, this lift, which has been so critical throughout the fights. And uh, by the way, he's got a, he's managed to get quite a few mines down in the base, which is certainly helping with the high ground. So, bottom side, Roshan's being taken, by the way. Hooray, another. I mean, Russia Shard's pretty key. Ooh. Noob has one, uh, Terra Blade actually has a Refresher Orb, Doom has a Refresher Orb, so uh, I guess this one goes to Disruptor.
Very nice, you, Callus. I mean, that is a very, very key refresher shard as well. Yeah, on the uh, on the disruptor, that's going to be absolutely massive. Mm -hmm. They have a refresher shard on Taki. It's a ref Wait, no, it's still on disruptor. Sorry, I thought he was carrying it already. I was like, oh, they got a couple, but no, they don't. My bad. Oh no, it's on DP. That's okay, they right. do. So they have two refresher shards. Yeah. They have a refresher on Doom, a refresher on Terror Blade. This terribly has too many items actually. He's got boot pods, two ages, a refresher, the MKB backpack, BKB backpack. And they still can't end the game. They have 46,000 gold and they are struggling. It is classic for PSG Quest though to be in these positions. Like, even when they're back, you know, years back, I say years back, like a year ago when they were playing internationally in these tournaments, it often was the. They have the big lead, but wait, they're not ending the game. They're not being dec decisive, they're playing too much, they're farming for next Roshan, and they have given us a couple uh, moments where they let their team or their opponent back into it. This time around though, with the tier 5 neutral items, and they break the base. Of course, Mega Creeps aren't that important at this stage of the game, there is plenty of wave clear. No. Yeah, and Book of the Dead on Kuroki also going to help out as well. Middle Tower has fallen! <laughs> They did some building damage! PSG Quest, they break the high ground! First building to fall in a very, very long time. What a game though, Nick, but just playing with the, the heart of all their fans right now. It's a... Yeah. One game away from elimination, but they are sticking it out. They're trying their yeah. best to, to keep themselves in it. What else can they do in this situation? Just hold to the high ground, hope for the best. Still not really committing in for any rapiers or anything, which, to be honest, not sort of making sense for me because their buybacks are always going to be really critical, especially against Doom. Can't really help someone just getting doomed down. So, and Rubik, he, he you know, temporarily stole the proximity mine, so there is some soft covering for his base. But Jukalis enters the fight, the immediately getting blasted down by Miracle, though. He's going to be able to take him out as Malik on the sideline finds Matthew. He's Matthew's a pretty him. critical kill. FBZ locked down, forced away. He's trying to get himself out of this while Refresher Orb comes out from him. Miracle going so damn aggressive. Looking to bring down Omar. Looking for TA2000. TA2000 on the run. Turns around with a reflection. Malik in deep with the Doom. Takes down Omar. Miracle. He's not going to be able to save his Rubik for the time being. But now the Doom needs to get himself away. Malik, very low, roars out, finishes the job, and now they're looking for more. Meanwhile, on the sidelines, TA2000 is actually stunned up for the time being. Of course, has the Aegis, so it's not the prime target. They'll go for the DP instead. Stuns out, no more BKB available for the Medusa. She's taking hits that. right now, out of mana, running out of health, but look at the damage coming out. Will it be enough? It will not. Medusa goes down, buyback available. She's gonna use it, immediately trying to come back into this fight right now, as Samael charges the front line with his team. The buybacks are getting limited right He's now. TA2000 going on to the last right, last right drop in. Of course, he has buyback on the left, by the way. Miracles in deep, brings down the Death Prophet. DB has the buyback. TB about to come back from the dead. Samael times it beautifully to blow up TA2000 again. Dead with buyback on the Terror Blade. They make the defense happen again. Nigma Galaxy. They are not giving up this high ground. They are not giving up this game. They are not giving up their hopes of getting to Dream League Season 23. Oh, so many things went somewhat wrong for PSG Quest in that fight. The techies, he had to book his shadows, but he just didn't use it on himself. And on top of that, in his Terror Blade, when he died with the Aegis, he wasn't able to get his BKB back in his backpack or you know, his inventory quick enough. So he wasn't able to protect himself after that. His refreshers also been backpack, so he couldn't get the you know, new wave of uh, spells available. And on top of that, yeah, Enigma so quick to to get Miracle back in the fight and zoom out. This is a little scary though. Nigma Galaxy running down the middle lane. Rapier in the back, hands yeah. of Miracle. Yeah, buyback's very much available for PSG Quest Head, but they need to force it and they feel like this is the only way they can do it. FBZ under the cover of Shield Rune here, very critical. Standing up at the front lines. Has the buyback available on FBZ, so he's happy to take to the front. Buyback also available on Samael. He never ended up going down in that last fight. Somehow he they're, survived through it all on the front lines. They're all in. Like the, they have the rapier. They're not going to leave this base. They're going to try and do everything possible. The, the tier 1 and tier 2 still alive top. So if they want to stay here, it's, yeah, they're looking for, for bottom side. Well, right now they're going for the barracks and they fall very quickly indeed. They Will stay? this be they enough for them? 
Fake back. The old fake back. No, they're actually no. getting back. Yeah, I feel like if they if they stay too long here, if they try and go for a a zealous play, it will just net themselves a a dead Medusa. Rapier drops no buyback. Thanks for playing. We have our our winner yeah. of the qualifiers and I don't know. They, they have, have such so a huge discipline. Wait, wait, wait. I mean, you say that, but they're still out on the map right now. They're looking for they'll something. Samael linking around. Yeah, there's just very little buybacks available on PSG Quest. So if Nick Galaxy can find the entry to the fight and get their players back with the buybacks, you know, it needs to go perfectly. The Medusa has to be safe. Wait, but is, they is can. Is the line being drawn? Right. FPZ is drawing the line down mid. He's. he's Surely just he a naked mid push, blink, mid push here would be kind of crazy. You didn't see it, you but have the, to be the so careful and the beast miracle. Just ran past each other. <gasps> yeah. Is there jumping on? Uh, Raw! He doesn't have buyback. Comes in on the disruptor. It's a huge pickoff. Dead for a hundred. No buyback. That is a critical ultimate taken out of the inventory of PSG Quest. And now they're looking for another one. Omar's going to be that target. No buyback on this. Techie's here. Nobody coming to help him either. He's gone as well. Two no heroes buyback. dead. There is a real chance here, but he it's so hard. It's in the fight tier 2000. He's getting run down as well. He's down in the high ground. Buyback Nick, available. Doing it. They very might well may be. Refresher Orb used by TA2000. He's going to have everything up, but it's a three on five. Surely they can't defend this PSG quest. Now it's their turn to defend, and I'm not sure they're going to be able to do so. Both teams Here have fortification. they come. That's going to be critical as well. Both teams having fortify right now as Doom comes down to the back lines. They're looking for the Medusa. The Medusa is a key target hit, but the damage. Oh my god, the damage from Miracle. It's That's over. way too it's much. Tier 2000 has gone. GG is called. We're going to a game five here. Nick McGalaxy, hold on and come back in the fourth game to take us all the way to. They were like 44,000 gold down at some point. Every single A just went the way of uh, PSG Quest, but they just couldn't break the high ground. After Nygma faltering a couple times, they fortified their position. They held each other tight in the high ground. I don't think anyone expected Nygma to win this game. <laughs> uh, I had a little bit of relief, but still, they I... win the game. They, they, oh. Dude, we, we, I mean, we were saying like several times, we were talking about how bad it's going to feel and like this game's over and they've lost. Like, I mean, it was... It was looking closed out, but eventually the, the high ground, they're able to hold it together for just such a long time. PSG Quest, I mean, unable to break it. And yeah, wow, in, in, in incredible Ooh. stuff and great decision making in this super late game here from Nygma Galaxy yeah. as well. Like a miracle just not committing to the rapier early on, knowing how important mm -hmm. these buybacks are against the Doom and going for it at the exact right moment. That's something which is pretty rare. Medusa players, they love rapiers. They seem to pick them up very quickly, but Miracle holding out for the key moment to buy it and using it to end the game, using it for the all-in at the exact right time. Like, absolutely incredible stuff. Yeah. That's PSG Quest. They had three, four ages opportunities to break that high ground, but every time they did, they just took it in the same way. They didn't try and change up the script. It was just barrel in the high ground, see what they can break, and I think Nygma, they... They were able to calm themselves down in this game and I think just much better at utilizing their buybacks than PSG Quest who were pretty excited at using them at points and yeah, we have a game five. I don't think many people expected this, but yeah, we're going to have a game five. A single game decides if PSG Quest, a team that has been second place for four qualifiers in a row, not good enough to beat Falcons, hoping to be the top contender this time around, or Nygma who haven't been contenders at all in any of the qualifiers. No can actually maybe do it this time. It's like two teams want to get to the international stage. A single game yeah. now splits these teams after an incredible 40,000 plus gold comeback from Nygma. What a perfect way to go to a game five. It's, yeah, it's, it's it. beautiful. <sighs> it really is exciting. And one more thing to mention as well, PSG Quest, you know, they've been in this situation before, not just in the long games, but also, you know, in the grand finals, two games down. Now the pressure has to be getting to them. Are they going to get well, not reverse sweeped, but, uh, you know, are they going to get beaten with one game away once again? I mean, whew, the pressure's got to be getting to both of these teams right now. Who's going to rise above it and claim victory and get to Dream League? We're going to find out after this short break.
starts with this A person that you miss Mind draws a blank I wanna go back, back to the early days When life was an escape Now I just wait for better days I lost myself in your reality I lost myself the score one more game to decide who is going to make it through these qualifiers enigma galaxy they've been stopped at every point every single qualifiers psg quest has taken them down or falcons have slain them and they haven't been able to make it through even winter bears have had a shot or two but finally they are one game away from qualification but psg quest they want it so bad so many times they've been one game away from qualification before and they haven't been able to get that remaining. that spot which team's going to take it, T? Five seconds remaining. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and try and say, oh, I think one team should or one team should at this point. I think the fact that we have got to a game five is you know, a testament to both teams. I think the journey here has been very turbulent for both. Um, it isn't a grand finals of the, the best Dota that we've ever seen, but it's so close that we are getting competitive games each time, and it is a treat to watch. I think for PSG Quest, it, it will be hard for them to swallow if they don't win this qualifier because if it wasn't for Val falcons they would have been at four different tournaments already right it's falcons have just kind of gate kept them a little bit and then you think for enigma it's they've just struggled for so long they have just been a team that no matter what roster change they make it just isn't working out and they would love to get some some international experience especially inside tournaments that they get you know they qualify for rather than potential invites down the line and stuff they, they, they want to kind of earn their place in these tournaments and this time around, yeah, it's like I think both teams, it's like the journey to be at this event, like they both in their own right really want to be there, but only one can make it. And this game is going to obviously mean so much for the for the five players if they are to win. There's definitely two ways of looking at it for, for both sides. For PSG Quest, you know, they've been in the situation before. Surely that means they've learned how to deal with it. Or maybe they've been in the situation before and it's not gone well because they don't know how to deal with it. They can't deal with it. There's no way to know until this, this game is over. You know, we'll have to see what their mental state is like and how they're able to play up into it. Nimi Galaxy, meanwhile, you know, they're at this point for the first time and 
got to be exciting, but they've got to keep it together. And, you know, also looking back at that last game, is that the way you really want to kind of get to this point of being one game away is kind of turtling for a very long time and, and waiting and biding your time and playing your way back into it eventually? Like, it's it's really difficult for both of them. And I think both of them have potential things they can ride and potential things that can hold them back. So, you know, it all comes down to how are these five players talking to each other? How What is the mentality like in these teams and, and how are they going to approach this final matchup? So, um, yeah, we do have a few bands for us to talk about here. A DK pick to start. And I still need to try and get over the fact that the last game was so intense. Like, we went from the... Just, to, just trying to re remember that roller coaster. Like, Nygma tried to make every move possible to not win the game early on. And then it just suddenly clicked. And they were like, this is what we must do. And then they stuck to that perfectly for the rest of the game. And I think, I'm hoping in this draft at least, for Nygma, we get to see a bit more of a of an early game presence. I mean, so far in this series, it has been, other than I think game two, the early games have been very, very difficult for them. And then it suddenly kind of clicks down the line. Um, we were first pick Terrorblade. Ten seconds remaining. And I'm going to say it early. And just five to get it out of the room, remaining. I don't want to see this as a position five Terrorblade for Kuroki. I know it's in meta, like we, but we. Let, do you think this is just a statement carry pick? Or are they actually flex links to five? I'm a little bit uncomfortable seeing this. Mm, unsure. I yeah. Think it, I think it could be. I mean, what's, what's, your, what's your beef with Pulse 5 Terrorblade? Speak your truth. Five seconds remaining. The truth's going to be very awkward, but I think Kuroki, of course, has his hero pool. And unlike other five players where I think they have that depth to be able to pivot in the moment i'm just my gut feel doesn't inspire me to say kuroki is a terribly five player i think it takes a real specialist type of player to really understand its its potential of course kuroki will be able to do that on a you know on like surface level but i just don't know in game if he's if he's going to be able to pull it off to the same level as someone who's maybe played it you know, 50 times so far in a pub or something it's i'm a little bit skeptical um but I, I easily could be wrong. Like if they've been practicing this in their scrims and stuff, then that flex remaining. easily can survive, but or be alive. It's just I already think support terribly is very volatile. You're trading off your kind of lockdown on your position five, your ability to uh, kind of just gank the mid lane. You're kind of just a reflection, illusion, vision giving hero, and it doesn't really fit the play style that I see Kuroki play. So a lot of things give me a gut feel that I'd be uncomfortable. Uh, for Enigma, if they were to put it there, again, they have Miracle on their team. This could just be a statement. We are picking Terrorblade. This is our carry type game. We want a best of one win. Let's go for it. Yeah. Yeah. Very comfortable if it is the case. Old school hero Terrorblade. Been around for a long time, just like Miracle himself. Brewmaster can come out as well. FBZ. Very, very happy with uh, the Brewmaster pickup. The Zero, which... Uh, he made quite a name for himself back in uh, SEA with playing it even off meta. So it'll be a fun one to see. SG quest. I am opening up with the Dragon Knight. Of course, uh, decent flex potential in this hero. For them, I always feel like they feel a little bit more comfortable when Noob is on a high mobility hero or something like a little bit cheesy, which he can kind of play a gotcha with. So wouldn't mind this being flexed to the off lane. Of course, that's totally their choice. Quest esports turn to Titan. Oh, grab Titan. Titan. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Incredibly strong against the uh, Terrorblade last game, so no surprise to see it coming out this time around in Mirana as well. How does the support duo look to you? I think more laning focused than the game. The early skirmish, they don't really synergize with each other uh, outside of hitting the stomps. It's not as simple as. I hit stun, you go for arrow. There's a little bit more you know, setup required. You need to get in position. You need to make sure you channel and hit it. But if they do hit them, of course, it can be devastating. It is simplified by Dragon Knight being in the draft. As soon as he gets a blink dagger, there's very simple smokes to be made. Smoke with the Mirana AT behind you, get the DK initiation, double follow-up damage, you can get kills. And I think that's mainly probably why PSG Quest went for it. Laning-wise, they can do some good stuff on lanes into most matchups and in the game. Smokes are now a key thing. Enigma Galaxy, 
They don't really have any map movement right now in their draft. Their support duo will be very key in that, and they already know what they're going to be playing into. They are going to be able to really understand what they want to do here. ET most likely five position for PSG Quest. So some range position four to play with the Brewmaster. When ET wants to step up, one stun, one bit of control with Brewmaster, ET can die. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, wondering what that looks like though, because popular options, yes, Ekis, uh, not really enough stun there for me though, so that doesn't really work to, out too well. I mean, Bat Rider could be pretty cool, but maybe not quite enough initiation. Tiny, a little waiting for the blink there. And I like a Willow here and Enigma Galaxy if that's something they want to try playing. On Matthew. That's a bit more old school for sure, but yeah, it can work. Yeah, not super popular right now. Maybe a little bit off meta, but I feel like with Brewmaster, it always feels like a nice combo, which complement each other quite well with a prolonged they engagement. Could just do, like Rubik plus five position here also works out quite nicely. Like some Rubik four, you can yeah. still Dragon Tail, you can still Marana spells. Good lane for Brewmaster. If E.T. steps up, you can lift him back into death. It's... Ooh, okay. Airblade 5 is off the books, boys. We're in the clear. Dive relief, everybody. Yeah. And also we get Kuroki Ench, which is also a treat in itself. Like, one of his best heroes of all time, right? And Yeah, that's hype. What a way to go into a game five. Five seconds remaining. Are you going to be leading from the front lines of this game, utilizing those creeps? Of course, fully expecting the uh, the Max Enchant build. It's it's pretty much staple on inch five, but I'll rule with that. And next up will be the Coddle. Okay. Ooh. So, Sumo Coddle, this please. A flex, or well, you reckon it's going to be mid for sure? It is a flex, but I like the intensity of this pick. You now need to respect the idea that Kotal, with last pick on Nygma, can go to the mid lane or four. If it's in four, you're shoving in waves of brew with illuminate. It's just in your face. And if it's mid lane, you've got a vessel by with the early orchid, the ET and Murano. I said that it's difficult for them to take their spells. You throw in some high move speed hero, you're rarely going to connect on on the stomp into arrow. Here's your quest is responses going for that storm spirit. Make sure you have some jump. So if the Kotal does go mid lane. You can push out waves as well, and you can always find the Keeper of Light. So I like the fact that PS2 Quest yeah. did, you know, tip their hat to this Keeper of Light flex and I'll uh, protect themselves a little bit. What will be the carry for TA2000? I, think, I really, really like the Storm Spirit pick, I just wanted to say, because I, I think this solves yeah. like a lot of the issues which I was seeing for PSG Quest and really answers the uh, the Enigma Galaxy draft. Like, it's rare you get a pick which works really well in your draft and also answers pretty much everything the enemy draft is uh, kind of presenting, but I think the Storm Spirit pick does that. Absolutely. Um, yeah, would be very happy with this one if our PSG quest. I have time to think um, about the TA2000 carry. They're banning out Lunar and Weaver. A couple tier 2000 heroes. Was also very good at its Bruin lane. But Nygma's telling us that they need Brew to have a good game. And they don't want him being shut down. Because if Brew's shut down and Terrorblade's farming, they just have two ranged heroes and their last pick, it would be quite difficult. But maybe there's some lane winning carries available still for tier 2000 to, to pick up and apply some pressure to, to Nygma Galaxy. Is there. What is available? I'm going to think about what's around. I mean, so one thing which comes to mind could be Sven for PSG Quest. Quest Esports. A little bit pick. meh against the Terrorblade and the Brew, though, but it, did, it kind of completes their team and gives them a tempo to play with. Not sure, though. I mean, they probably want something ranged. Either something funny. with a ton of mobility or something ranged. Ten seconds remaining. Yeah, it's, I'm trying to think of the, the pick here. So they also lack some damage in the early game. and oh, Okay, yeah. I was considering Pretty good, Void, but I didn't really want to talk about it because I was worried that they it would open up for Enigma Galaxy to put the Keeper Light mid, right? Like, the idea is 
you expect Cottle to be super active early on and avoid, yes, you have control, but like DK has control, ET has control, Void has control, but they just don't have the damage. And now, yeah, Nigma Galaxy. Okay. Game five, Miracle Anti Mage, position four Terra Blade. So we don't are do seeing it. a support Terra Blade, but. Well, okay, we're already drafting. Stop, bait. stop yeah, yeah, yeah. bat chesting. Stop. I see you guys. I see everybody out there. Stop it. We're not. Ooh. We're not doing that. Okay. We're here for a serious game of Dota Two. Put no. your bat chests away. Fill that chat up. Like what a way. Game five. If Nigma are to finally qualify to a tournament through either Falcons or PSG Quest this time around, is PSG Quest. It isn't just a qualifier where they're the only notable team in it. Like for them to qualify against other notable teams. And like get rid of the shackles that have locked him in the region on a miracle anti mage potentially. That is that is hype. After a 44, 45,000 gold comeback in the previous game, truly a poetic way to get themselves into Dream League season 23. Yeah, PSG Quest, they story have some about... big specialties as well. Like this is not gonna be an easy game. But what a game it will be. This whole story of Enigma Galaxy, you know, like reinventing themselves for the 2024 era, but then you know, they still nod back to their roots. They're still ready to say, like, hey, you know, Anti-Mage, Enchantress, we're still the team we used to be. And, of course, the Smell Keeper of the Light is a pretty fun one as well. He, he's he's pretty good on this hero. This would be a good match to watch, I'm certain. Um, that said, I do prefer PSG's draft. I, I really like PSG Quest and what they've put down this game. I think this, this Storm Spirit is looking excellent, I think. There's almost part of me that wants to say this anti mage was not a desperation pick, but not not something I love. It's it's definitely not something I love. They've got a ton of catch for him. They've got the uh, the Chrono Spear available as well. So I feel like it's it's, it's a hard anti mage game, and I don't like this hero at the moment anyway. So I, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna speak speak my bit. That's what that's how I'm feeling. Am I wrong, T Gov? Um, yeah, a little bit, but it's fine. Okay. The We'll see if there's a bit of aggression here. But like this anti mage, <laughs> is... I just not elaborate on that point. <laughs> no, I'm going to. I'm going to. I just wanted to see if they fought first. Okay. Elaborate the sound. Okay. You're looking at it. I mean, it would have been a... kind of chad to just be like, "No, you're wrong," and continue with the <laughs> the cast. I mean, Twitch stats already given you reasons why you're wrong, and it is only bat chest. But anyway, uh, no, I think so. Anti mage. The reason why you don't see it often is because. There's a lot of pressure in early fights right now. And PSG Quest went for a very low map progressing lineup. That gives anti mage room to farm. And also Keeper of Light is so obnoxious early on. He makes so much room on the map. Like his level six, the solar binds, the, the fights he can take. Like we're expecting Nigma to be in the lead based on their desire to fight early on, which will always buy time for Miracle to get that Battle Fury, to get that next item. Of course, the game can get weird if Void and DK are always jumping Anti-Mage, but then are they going to always be finding that perfect jump with a Brew, Ench, and Terribly kind of running around in front doing just random shenanigans, Cottle orchiding you and stuff? Like, I think Nigma have the tools to make the fights rather chaotic, but in a scaling game where PSG Quest control all vision and control, you know, an item advantage potentially, then yes, so yes, this Anti-Mage could just feed and game's over, right? But I do see a world where this Anti-Mage is uncontested and getting to pick his battles. Also going Aghanim's very important in this game, being able to poke out from a distance, wait to see where the Void or the DK are, and then initiate. Now, these supports will not do anything to Anti-Mage as the game progresses, so I... I really have the hope that this game goes the distance. I want to see some epic clashes of the Void versus Anti-Mage, and yeah, we'll see how who comes out on top of it. I really do hope this is a close and competitive final game five, and not just a Anti-Mage never had any items. It's a it's a walkover. It's always a threat, but Malik taking a lot of damage here. Miracle as well. Gonna have to use a parry fire, but he gets first blood on him. And now looking at Omar as well. Kuroki should be able to take him down. The Anti-Mage will fall, but will it be worthwhile? Omar losing his life. Kuroki, they're both gonna die. This game starting exactly how he wanted it to. Everybody's dead in the top lane. Four kills going every which way. But uh, critically, critically, the highlight here is that Miracle did get first blood. So a nice little cash injection for him to start off the game and to start off his lane. 400 golden for PSG Quest. The gold went the way of Mirana. Of course, Omar not gonna be complaining there, but Malik. Wishes he could be able to complete a bracer or something. Miracle with level two will start. Never so much more aggressive. Like this is a pretty strong lane though, right? Some edge gets three, uh, two points in enchant down the line and bring a creep here. And 
Miracle keeps wanting to burn mana. It's uh, it's quite a potent lane. I do expect Nipper Galaxy to be very happy with their lanes. You've got Epsy Brewmaster playing into an ET. Like ET's not going to really do much to him. You've got some evasion. Matthew can also reflect and be a nuisance. So I am, I am leaning towards three lanes having probably economic advantage for for Nipper Galaxy. A good start. And in the mid lane, noob looking pretty happy to start things off. We'll see what happens when uh, Smell starts to really lay in the hurt. Now he's at level three. Back is going to start to blast on down. Matthew not really trading super well against uh, Ducalis here. In fact, Ducalis getting busy with it. He has got himself a blood grenade. Not going to throw it down for the uh, for the terror blade there. Backs himself out. Top once again, Malik getting pretty low. Miracle this time. He's just sitting with the uh, with the double wraith band. Double wraith band anti mage is kind of interesting, no? It's very aggressive. He wants to play for the fight. He wants to go for the kills, and I like that killer instinct from this lane. Kuroki, he's going to be able to keep the, the HP on Miracle. Sure, if this was a different position five, then he's half HP tangling up. But as you have that nature attendance, utilize that additional HP. Keep trying to throw your body into the fight. And and click down your opponent. So yeah, I'm liking the way that Nygma are approaching this top lane right now. Rookie, very close to level three. When he gets a better creep, we'll continue to help find punishment. But me and Malik, not really getting shut down on net worth. Both the DK and the anti mage, very even on their their gold gain so far. Yeah, what uh, Miracle managed to get from the kill, Malik's been able to make up for in CS, pulling ahead just a little bit so far. A little bit easier for him in these Keterick lanes to be able to secure extra CS here and there. Being that tanky lad. I haven't spoken so much about this bottom side, just uh, kind of watching Ducalis and uh, Matthew kind of battle it up on the sidelines, but over here, FBZ and TA2000. I've just kind of been trading it up. Not so much aggression down here. I mean, they don't really have the stuns and slows to work with quite as much as the other lanes. Yeah, ET is always such a weird laner. Like if he's against like double melee with uh, like a level advantage, sure he can go for a fight. But against heroes like Brewmaster that have a innate tankiness to them, with disengage, he is never really the strongest. Same thing with Faces Void. Kinda does damage, but not really. And that is why uh, this terrible is able to make moves on the map. Sure, he might get di dilation slow, but yeah, the evasion of the Brewmaster really just gonna help him exist in this bot lane. Yeah, Brewmaster's evasion is very silly as well. So high. Especially when he's all uh, brewed up. Pretty much untouchable at that point. On the top, talking of untouchable, Kroki on the top side has hit that level 3. Gets himself an Alpha Wolf and start to lay a bit more harassment down. These crazy high armor, high damage and creeps are super annoying for anybody to deal with. Luckily, you do have Marana in this lane, though. So the arrows are potentially there. Yeah, like, Kuroki might be able to micro them away. He is still going to be kind of tricky to punish as he's coming down to the bottom lane here, Kuroki. Looking at TA2000, I mean, there's a time walk available for TA2000, so it's just going to force him back off the lane and probably just return to top, I suppose. But... In the meanwhile, they've gone to the mid lane, and uh, Samael's actually going to fall here. Omar makes a rotation. Noob hits level 6, and they're going to bring down that Cottle. Yeah, that's why they picked the Storm Spirit. You're always able to gap against this Cottle in tier 2000, yep. Yeah. Getting jumped a little bit in bot lane. One more time walk, just about available. Going for the TP, the damage. It's not going to be there. Oh, he gets away. I mean, it's still a little bit painful for TA2000 having to walk all the way back to lane, but better than dying. This is why this anti mage pick is going to feel pretty good. Miracle's going to love this 1v1. The noise that Nigma are creating in the bottom side of the map. These three heroes, dude, he's going to rotate down. He's going to get a couple kills, most likely. Yeah, looking that way. FBZ going to be the first like one to first. drop eventually. But yeah, Ducalis is gone. So they get the trade. Uh, Matthew and Kuroki going to be all right here. I mean, Noob's kind of just bursted all of his mana into killing off FBZ there. So. Yeah more pressure applied away from the top side of the map. Enigma. 
Continuing to keep his foot. Super actually even rotated top for a brief second on his keeper of light. Didn't pop his ultimate though, so well, that won't be on cooldown. Walking back towards mid lane. Noob having a very good start. I think top of the net worth of everyone. 600 kill uh, gold ahead, sorry. 600 kills. That'd be incredible. Oh, like that's what last game was, but uh, <laughs> maybe not quite. Noob just finding himself a couple of stacks here and there. The male not playing super far up anywhere, respecting the fact that there is this still spirit in the game. Although, uh, Hiroki being very obnoxious, taking that Warpine Raider and uh, just kind of chasing Noob down here. Noob, he, he does have mana to work with. He's got himself seven Magic Wand charges, so we'll just have to uh, use that Ball Lightning to get back to base even quicker, get that mana back. And now, look over towards Ducalis. Give me some L. He turns up, he's got the Urn of Shadows. Blood Grenade available if he feels like he needs it. Matthew coming across. Reflection on cooldown. Kuroki can't quite get in range for Enchant right now. Astral going to return to the Elder Titan. The male. He's not giving up the chase here. Not at all. A second urn available. Right click's coming on through. And will not get the deny. So the male gets the kill. And that's a nice refill for his urn. Exactly what you want to be seeing as Coddle in this game. This Void is just not hitting any creeps. The aggression from the supports of Nygma are really just... They're choking out their opponent. Ooh, interesting. Noob's actually looking for the Orchid on this uh, Storm Threat. He jumps mid. He's looking to go on Matthew. Certainly is. Matthew Aaron doesn't have that much health, although Lotus plus the Magic Wand buys him a bit of time, but not quite enough. Omar going to be the next target here. No more Leap Charges available, but the Vision just not there for FBZ. Walks out of range of the Sentry, and they'll get themselves back here. You know what annoys me with Brewmaster is the fact that you can just like perma toggle this thing. Yeah, like, there's no cooldown on it, like so you're just kind of always just cooldown. spinning round. You're just like, evasion, crit, armor, status, evasion, crit, armor, it's like, come on. <laughs> Pick a lane, dude. FPG going for the Radiance build. I think most brews we have seen that from so far. Mm -hmm. Nice to get to the void. Get any minute if you get caught off guard, get caught by a chrono. Having that innate evasion is going to help you out. Not getting 100 to 0. And Kuroki is being so annoying in this game. He is. I don't want to jinx it, but like in regards to early game, this is the best from Kuroki so far in the Grand Finals. Like, it's in the game 5 on his Enchantress. He is just constantly being a nuisance. Yeah, same thing for Matthew and his Terra Blades. They are really just doing, you know, there's putting a shift. Malik getting jumped on a little bit here. I mean, absolutely no mana to speak of because he is laning into this anti mage. And now that he's drained, that slow is going to come in huge. Throwing in a chant at him as well. It'll take some time, but he will eventually go down. Oh, Miracle would have really liked that kill, but uh, a little early and excellently gives it to Matthew. But all good. Kills a kill. Freeing up and Miracle's lane even more, so he's just been able to get whatever he wants out of the map at the moment. Going to be heading for a very nice timing on that Battle Fury. He is fully squatted. And now. Oh, whoa, 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 hold on, Miracle. Almost walked into that arrow, but now blink out, but in comes a storm. They're looking to go on Tim here. Noob doesn't void into the. Counter spell and now TA2000 comes in with right clicks and they will be able to bring him down. He has been, uh, the anti mage has been officially contested. It had to happen eventually. They did get a kill. Very it's important to do it. Pretty big force nope. though, and uh, Kuroki is ready to go. He's got an army of skeletons gathered in the middle lane to start this push going, and Astral Step into Echo Stomp. And Ducalis is going to slow things down. Top lane. Slowly being taken, the tower's about to fall with those catapults. Two lanes are pushing and make it through actually as FPZ is getting pretty busy in the top the bottom lane as well. So maybe Galaxy pretty happy about this one, especially with Ducalis just getting blasted in the arse in the mid lane as well. One tower full, two tower full, and make it three. FPZ takes out bottom. Very favorable trade for Nick Galaxy. Isn't. I just keep clicking on these heroes. Like, damn, they got so, much, so many items. Like, FPZ's closing in on his uh, relic for, for the Radiance. That is such a quick time for him. Like, all three quarters of Nigma are at like 5,000 uh, net worth. 
What I'm can sure PSG what Quest do? Specifically, it yeah. was the PSG Quest to like open the map up so much for nipping guys. It might even be that rotation onto the anti mage at the top, which yeah, they use so much to go to the top left. Man. That yeah, exactly. They use everything top left, which means just they don't respond. Right, thanks, mate. Uh -oh. You died, but it's all good. And you know, terribly it goes down. That could be terrible in a different cast, but again, it's a support, so not too bad. <laughs> yeah, last game, that would have been bad. <laughs> Very bad. Now, Noob does have a regen rune to play with. Maybe we see Noob kind of playing up with that. That said, he is kind of waiting for this Orchid. But it is a kind of more traditional Storm build this game, where he wants to be online, he wants to be finding this Anti-Mage, finding this Brewmaster, preventing splits, preventing blinks. It's such a nice item build, I think. If he goes for Witchblade, he's just going to fall off on damage and his game will get pretty miserable. Orchid gives him points of pressure to apply and Anti Mage pre Manta. It's going to feel so good. He needs to get there as quick as possible. He's frantically running through the jungle. He's trying to get it as, as soon as possible. 600 gold away. And you know, Storm Spirit vs. Anti Mage is always the race for the early game. How quickly can Storm get the awkward? How quickly does Battle Fury get online for Anti Mage? And he gets to hide away deep into the jungle, getting that Manta for his own protection. And so far, Noob is top net worth. He is doing a stellar job. 3 0 and 2. Closing uh -oh. in. Ducalis has been seen by Samael. He's ready. Spirit form down, along with the uh, Illuminate. And Miracle comes in and lands the solo kill. No, oh, very, very close to that battle for you. It was a nice little uh, cash injection for him. Do they have I mean, something. Go on. I said, do they have smokes available? Storm's about to get his orchid. Oh, okay, they insta smoke. And Miracle will yes, be showing to top your lane. Question. Thank you very yeah, much. They might not be ready for this. It's 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 very quick. And Storm hasn't Kuroki's really shown though, with gonna... his ingredients quite that often, so. I think Kuroki's just going to tank it. He's walking through the jungle, and they're not really Some smoking towards the open edge here. Mid. This might be punished if, if they go on some mail under the tier 1 tower in the middle lane. I'm they're not baiting sure. the shield rune. Oh, okay, shield rune would be a big thing. Oh, now they're going to use it. Shield rune on the storm, going to absolutely free them up, but they go for Matthew instead. Looking at the Terrorblade right now, moving across the Kuroki, suddenly this don't look so hot anymore. ESG quest. Antimage turned up. And FBZ. Oh my. Well, so, not the awkward reveal you're really looking for, to be honest. It was a very awkward reveal instead. They they couldn't really find Antimage because they would have bumped into Enchantress. They didn't want to jump the Cottle because TV was there with Sumner. So if they do jump Cottle, it will just be you know, fully back to life. And there's no real follow-up. Noob announcing his orchid to the game without a kill. And Malik, what's, what's happening down here? Oh, ooh. Uh, oh, just... Uh, okay. Quick little three-man chrono TP out. Sometimes uh, you just need to get yourself out of there as quickly as possible. So no aggressive potential with the uh, first chrono of the game, just purely using it to escape. It's absolutely fine for a faces void though. I don't know. U usually it's fine. I think it's fine. How bad his start went? If he's using that chrono to not die and to continue farming some medium camp, He's probably pretty happy. Yeah. And Battle Fury complete into immediately going for this Ancient stack. Miracle is going to start to shoot up that net worth chart unless Quest can do something about it. And of course we are looking for that Manta that would make Miracle a wave cutting machine. Feel much freer in the map to be able to just do what he needs to do. The Quest. They're looking for a bit of pressure here. I mean even tier 2000 coming up to this middle push. I mean, no Chronosphere, so Tier 2000 kind of just hanging out for the tower kill, and he is going to get it as Matthew goes down. Noob goes in for the freebie onto the Terrorblade. I think we'll get that kill, but all the while, they're farming off an FBZ. They're farming off a Miracle, and FBZ just hit that Radiance timing, so next fight we might see him TP in and try to make the difference happen. Kuroki, he's going for a very ambitious build here on the Enchantress. He's not looking for some Dragon Lance or Drum. He's going for the Agnums. That's going to be the little friends. He's going to be able to get two enchant creeps. And it does provide a route based on every unit that it hits. So, I mean, against some Storm of Void, if he hits some 
it's like a really shit nature's profit build basically and like when you know how they buy ads and get root <laughs> this is like his version of it i don't know I it's a it long something. long route that's the thing about oh, this ability like miles as, away. as yeah. long as you have a few creeps nearby yeah but it'll be keep an eye out it, it could be a, a very subtle game changer if he does actually pull it off i don't think psg quest will be ready for you know the little friend route to really play a part but every little is going to help in in these bigger fights and we'll see if Kuroki can even get there. There's a lot of gold required, and he's not really taking a lot of farm off the map. No. I mean, he'll have his creeps pushing out waves, which is going to help boost his income quite a lot. Yeah, man. Mm. He's had the battle through for some time. This orchid timing from Storm. One smoke, and they went quiet. It's a miracle. He's living the Antimage dream right now. Battle Fury, uncontested. Farming up his uh, his ancients, going up the the bottom lane, just yeah, totally uncontested at the moment. I am getting the feeling that PSG Quest are maybe not really playing at the tempo I'd expect them to. But they're feeling the pressure up, in this series a little bit, but not Think playing up at all at the moment. Yeah, this could be big. FPZ, great target if they can silence him up. Of course, he has got that Radiance, but they don't do it in time. They see them. Instead, they go in the back lines, look for the Terror Blade again. Malik, though, just getting blasted in the front here, and FPZ should be able to kill him off with his Brulings. Not much to be done about this. Malik falls. Here, 2000, just trying to get himself away. Wants nothing to do with this one. Chronosphere is available, but doesn't really have the targets, and there's a lot of things they can throw out into that Chrono to reduce his damage, realizing there's no opportunity. TP is a way to go farm up somewhere else. Now you're in that really awkward position where you're just trying to play a farming game as a faceless void versus an anti-mage with battle fury. It's not going to be pretty. You think PSG Quest right now, whilst they're playing the game, in the back of their minds, they're thinking, damn, this Terra Blade, we didn't expect it to be flexed. You know, the Kroki won't play at five. It has to be the miracle and in reality. Oof. Might be sitting on their minds just a little bit. Maybe at least the coach who's watching uh, in the back room right now. No more influence can be applied to this series. As soon as this, this game ends, it's qualification or not. Hindsight will be very powerful, and yeah, at the moment, it's looking like Nygma are just doing exactly what they want to do to win this game. Here's the quest out there. I think they, they understand the severity of the situation of this game right now. Like one bad chrono, one forced extension will just allow Nigma to break open onto the map allow this miracle anti-mage to have even less cares knowing that he can survive a big fight and showing a lot of discipline showing a lot of reservation they do not want to give more to Nigma. net worth lead kind of fluctuating between one and two k gold and against an anti-mage that feels really bad ran to 500 gold away Manton yeah, already looking like soon it might on the be. horizon. In they go onto the brew down to the bottom side. And the damage is coming through thick and fast. Nigma Galaxy, they're nearby they though. The and they are forcing them back. Great coverage. More Nigma Galaxy, and yeah, complete lack of damage in this team. I mean, I feel like that's kind of the Storm Spirit's issue here. He's gone for this Orchid build, but, you know, you don't have that Witchblade, you don't have the Kaya, and you're just kind of lacking in oomph. Yeah, it hurts. As well. and, right? He throws out an Orchid, he throws out a Luminate, he gives just a little bit of something yeah. to give Bruce some life. And... True, true. I really agree. This The big Illuminate heals, making the difference. And then once they realize that the Brewmaster's not going to go down, they realize that uh, Primal Split very, very soon available. Yeah, that's uh, not something you can dick around to find out. So once we hit this uh, Manta style on the anti-mage, you know, is that just is that just go time? He feel pretty uncontested in this game. I suppose there's still the Chronosphere issue. Yeah. I think Miracle has done a very good job so far at being present for engagements that could become bigger than they actually are. Like a lot of these pickoffs, he's been on the, the fringe of that fight if you've been looking at the mini map, but he never commits. With a but, uh, butterfly, sorry, with a manta, he will be even more tempted to join a fight, but I wouldn't be surprised if he continues to farm up to get that butterfly. A lot of damage from PS2 Quest right now comes from the right clicks. So DK needs to right click you, Void needs to do it, Storm as well. It's not a lot of damage coming from other sources. 
and that is why Butterfly into Aegis is Nigma's we're gonna win this game moment I feel and until then I'd like to see them at least play aggressive but take a fight under your control don't just wildly go aggressive just because you have the item they are smoking up as five as long as they have wards they can do this but it needs to be FPZ starting the engagement getting that split and from there letting Miracle Ooh. decide how he wants to fight Amp damage juicy, juicy, well. amplified damage, but the astral spirit is doing work right now. Beautifully scouted from Ducalis, sees the rune, sees the heroes, under the cover of smoke. And they this should be avoided by quest. Yeah. yeah. It also was the the river ward as well, so multiple forms of vision enabling PSG quest to dodge this. Maybe they can find storm spirit. They jump on in. He can be just yeah, getting delivered. out though, out. so. Oh. What a timing Very fortunate courier. timing. <laughs> Give that courier a raise, goddammit. It's a they go DVD Rosan express right service now. right there. Ooh, Looks like it. Okay, of course they got the amp damage rune, so why not? Dom just Absolutely, revealed his BKB. that's gonna help out. Yeah. PSG Quest might not quite be ready for this one. And they have the tools to contest it, but again, like it's not a Roche lineup. It's not a lineup where you're going, ah, these guys are going to look to take Roshan early on. Like, not really. Manta, Anti Mage, good, but it's not amazing. Ucalis, once again, scouting it all out. Oh, did he do the. Oh, yeah, he did the um, portal trick. Oh, what's happening with the old Roshan? There we go. That's uh, so slow. It's slow. Uh, it's extra slow because uh, Ducalis did the portal trick where you uh, send your astral spirit through the um, portal gate, sand into the bottom, into the yep. pit, stomp, and then it flies all the way across the map again. So. Miracle cool mechanic. blinked out, but that's what, that's what I was reacting to. Miracle blinked out of the pit after that as well. So like maybe they're coming. It's like, oh, wait a second. It's just the ET. And you asked about going aggressive. I expect maybe Roshan to be post butterfly, but with that amp damage, they have accelerated the timings just a little bit. and. I really do feel that this is Miracle's window to, to just blink on in. Be crazy, go crazy. You know, in the words of Troll Warlord, soak up a Chrono for your team, open up that fight, and maybe they find someone here. He's posturing behind the trees. He's pinging up Noob. They have the ward. They found him. Orchid's out, but BKB comes out just as quickly from the Storm Spirit to try and get himself away. TP is out and is successful. Miracle looks over towards the Delta Titan, but can't bring him down. Look at that coddle with the ridiculous range with the spirit form. Yeah, it's, it's so much. Like, 250 cast range on your ultimate, going up to 375 when you get to higher level, it's it's a lot to deal with. And to be fair, Enigma, the way that they're playing it, it is a lot to deal with as well. Also, he had such an incredible start. It was, what, 3 0 2, and since then, he's only found two assists. His Orchid timing netted zero kills for him. His BKB timing has only been used to run away. And, because of that, of course, Anti Mage is a great matchup into it. If he ever uses too much mana at any minute, he just becomes. You know, he has a massive target on his back to <laughs> pop. Yeah. They're trying yes. to use They are going to take it. Ah, I can't wait to see Kuroki with his little friends. Yeah, me too. I want to see if this pays off. The thing about this is instant as well. There's no, there's no chance of dodging it. It's just an instant route on the floor. So. Very tricky mm -hmm. one to avoid for a storm. BKB on void. No BKB. They jump him. They're looking to just try and bring down the anti -mage. They will be able to do so. Can they get him on the respawn? I mean, they've got the Chrono Spear available. BKB very early from TA2000. They just want to try and bring the guy down. And Miracle, he's not surviving through this. Matthew tries to come into the sideline and get on the Sunday, but can't do it. He falls. Noob looking for more. Everything being used to keep this chase going. Samail's going to be the next target here. Samail on the run. He's very fast. Coddle. Do Noob chasing. Looking. He's got the electric vortex. Should be enough to allow Malik to connect. And they get another kill on top of it. All right, we got a game on our hands. They have the ages, they have the timings, but he just gets, you know, hundreds of zeros and then perfectly laid with the chrono on top. And Matthew, he tried to run in, he tried to get the Sunder off, but there just wasn't enough room for him to get around that little gap, not get hit by the chrono, just running into it. And... It was really hard. Miracle, very, very close to his butterfly. The TF2000 after a pretty miserable game. 
He already sees the components. He's rushing his way towards uh, an MKB. I'm over here. And at some point in the game, we are going to have the, the narrative of will anti-mage show? Will Void just hit the chrono? Can the MKB Void just 100-0 to zero this anti-mage? Depending on where he places it, if he does it in a nice way that the chrono always blocks the kind of advancement of Nygma, you're never going to get that Terrorblade into a, into a Sundering position. You have to be careful. You've had an incredible start to this game, Nygma. But they have the tools to kill your anti-mage. Something that we did raise, the, the Void, the DK, they... They can punish a farmed anti midgets, but it's just the pacing that you set yeah. that can punish it. And yeah, we've we've seen both sides now. Yeah, very, it just, very just even. being a massive, massive bait, unfortunately, for Miracle because he, he feels immortal. But if you've got Chrono available and you kill him without mm -hmm. it on the first life, then you're just going to go down again. Matthew almost almost managing to be the difference maker in that one, but not quite. And now TA2000 has a game. He he was really kind of out of the runnings for a while. He was just 0-0, zero, zero, trying to hit jungle creeps, trying to outfarm an anti-mage. Never going to happen, but there you go. Second Chronosphere of the game, and it is absolutely massive. Secures the anti-mage kill, gets them the Terror Blade as a plus one, and then he's able to run down the remaining kill for them. ESG quest. Very, very happy that they've been able to uh, kind of stop the pace of the Galaxy. So, what items are we looking for now? Of course, Butterfly queued up for Miracle. This is Void. Looks like there will be a window where there is a Butterfly, but no MKB. But a very small one. I kind of thought he already had the components for Butterfly, but no, he didn't. He still was waiting for the Talisman. I thought he was one away, but... Yeah. Not to be the case. 700 gold away from that. 2000. He's desperately yep. trying to get the 70 He's like, please, guys, I'm trying to farm as quick really as I can. Good time. Yeah, it's a really good time for Nick Nagazi to go fight. Kuroki's just picked up this Aghanim Scepter. Little friends plus double enchant. Really nice. Do you think there'll be an argument that Nigma took Roshan like, too early in this game? Like, the idea that they forced the fight a little bit too early, delayed the butterfly. And now when they have the butterfly, the next fight, Void might even have MKB. So the next Roshan fight, this butterfly is fully removed from the game. It's something to think about. They are smoked up. They're trying I to find the I will answer your question, but uh, yeah, so after FBZ runs away from everybody. Um, I think the answer to that comes down to the spells on the side of PSG Quest, because they do have the Elder Titan and the Faces Void. Incredible Roshan fighting potential. So the fact that they're able to just get in early and sneak the Roshan without PSG Quest really being aware of it, is probably the best you could have hoped for. Mm. At least in the first like, kind of like even 30 minutes of the game. Yeah, it's just like second Roshan, and it's often so pivotal. And the Void is one component Dyer's off of this MKB. What if I now compete on Miracle? Yep, picks it up and TA2000 trying to look for him right now. Invisible. Under the cover of Moonlight Shadow, Miracle though did see it. It's sprinting away. away. They yeah, get me out it wasn't of here. a subtle gank, I'll be honest. No. Running past the creep wave with Moonlight Shadow just being cast is uh, <laughs> not usually the way you see this one done, but uh, Quest very desperate to try and convert that void kill. I'm hoping he's really focused on that hard camp. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. Oh, Matthew's actually looking for a blink dagger. I like that idea. He needs to get around this chrono. He needs to be able to hit a sunder. We're yet to see the full effect of the support Terror Blade. And if you can get the blinks off, if you can actually make that move, on sunder is potentially all it takes to deal with PSG Quest. Right now, it really feels like lens? can they kill in the moment? I think it, blink gives you commitment. Yeah, it's like a little bit of cast range or free choice in every fight. Like, the April is still... No, I think Blink is just far superior. Especially if he gets like an Aghanims down the line. Then he's got some like Blink Fear. Like it kind of backs up into future items. And April is... It makes a build, yeah. Yeah. Just a bit, a bit shit, I'll be real. <laughs> he's fine. I can take criticism. No, no, it's, it's okay. I'm not crying. Again, I'm here to, you just... know... I sweat my mind from watching Dota for seven hours. 
Yeah, Mansa done by uh, FBZ, so that's going to give him the break for the Orchid, which is really nice. Kind of the only way beyond uh, Chronosphere to stop him from getting off these Primal Splits. And uh, the ability to shove waves with these uh, Radiant Illusions, honestly. Back okay, here for it FBZ. is. MKB is online. You got Blink, Manta, BKB on Manic. If she quests, they have all the tools to win a fight. It is just, can they stop the Terra Blade from Sundering? Can they 100 to 0 Anti Mage within the limited stuns that they have available? If yes to both, then they're back in the game. We'll see if they can execute on it. And the Brewmaster open up the fight, tank up a spell. All the little friends of Croak that we've yet to really see do something, do something. FBZ is seen. The arrow, it's not going to connect. Does he get a chance to get it off? He doesn't. The bashes are in. The damage is there. And they'll kill off FBZ. And now they look over towards Matthew. That's going to be another clean kill for PSG Quest. Did he just like the that. Sunder? He just sundered a 4 HP Nicola player. This guy is oh. using Dota Labs. West Valve player. gave you the ability yeah. to interact only with <laughs> allied units, and you're not Teammates. using it. They just misclicked that, and I'm not saying it would turn the fight, but Brew would be able to split and, you know, maybe run away. I mean, it would have at least forced out the Chrono Sphere if he'd done that. Yeah. Nothing. It had like more than nothing. <laughs> yeah. Alright, hopefully Matthew doesn't misclick again in the future. Especially if it's an anti-mage in a game-deciding fight. Actually, not having the, the best game so far compared to his previous one. He walked into a Chronosphere, he just sundered an enemy. And now Roshan, it has respawned. We already spoke about the fact that PSG Quest are in their timing to be the aggressors. The MKB simplifies the team fight. This anti mage isn't unkillable now with this butterfly. And I like the fact Miracle's looking at the Agnims, but. Scans out, they're already in the pit. Where's Nygma? Oh, it's going this down so quick, ages. what the hell? Matthew it's going really quick. Illusion. And Illusion gets killed off before he gets in there, so they don't know how low it is. Do they realize the urgency of the situation on Nygma Galaxy? Don't... I don't think they do. They're slowly trickling in Illusions, but it's already too late. T2000 grabs the Aegis. And once again, PSG Quest grabbing this game and dragging it back in their favor. This is such a nail right in game five. Like, Nigma with the early game momentum. PSG Quest now sniping away that second Aegis. And it looked like Miracle Antimage was just going to take over the game, but his impact has been case. stalled. Yeah. He is looking for the now, items, though. Whoa, he sees whoa. the faceless void. Blink up in one. Yeah, he's able to get away. Oh. Deep breath, deep Thank breath. God that TA2000 didn't know that the blink was on cooldown. He wasn't willing to make that gamble. As much as picks are fun, I would like the game, like the big moments, to be actual team fights. Like this game does not deserve like Miracle to die by himself and PSG Quest to take momentum, or Void to die by himself and Nigma to take momentum. Right? Like this game deserves the full five on five, the the Chronos, the Sunders, the the splits and all. Indeed. Hopefully, we get it. Oh, but, I mean, the pressure's got to be going to the players as well. Especially Miracle, who has to play on the map. He has to be pushing out. He has to be active. But at the same time, there is always that massive threat looming over him. Off the face of Void Chronosphere, catching him out. I mean, even without it, Dragon Tail, Arrow, Echo Stomp, it could also be enough to just seal his fate with Electric Vortex as well. So, always just kind of cognizant of that as he moves around the map. Got to be aware of his own positioning, the enemy's positioning, what they can see, what information they have. It's a tough game for an anti mage. Never going to be free not... this one. Oh, identify this as well. He's rushing the uh, Wind Waker. Often you see like a hex build on, on Keeper of Light, but he's quietly just in the farm in the top side of the map during all this uh, PSG quest timings, right? And in doing so, he's you know, relatively close. Matthew, let's go down. I need to remind myself that he's a support. Every time I see TB dying, even though it's been a support for about three weeks in pro pubs and a couple times in pro play, I still get better. Oh, okay, it's fine. Yeah, also we did just witness like 75 minutes of TB being the most farmed hero in the game, so I think it's true. 
is what we did sort as well. of ingrained right now. We need to be power washed clean. Antony very, very close to that 25. Unspawn magic resistance or mana void cooldown? What, what are you saying? Resistance? Void does do quite a lot of magic damage, right? The the monkey yeah. king bar procs, the maelstrom procs, the bash procs, so it makes sense. As long as it says multiple mana void targets, so yeah, I'd probably <laughs> lean for magic resistance. Oh, it's here 2000 and Team Age on the same part of the map again, but uh, they're all backing themselves out. Very, there is a well where... vivid line scribbled by noob. Each guy has to be careful in this game. Right? Now Mirifrod is uh, Aghanims. Uh, he's going to be able to send out these blink fragments you know, in his place, and it only takes one you know, mishap where you, oh, I think he has the real Manta Mage, you instant chrono because he's such an elusive hero, and now it's on cooldown, game gets difficult. I'm going to need to see a lot of discipline from tier 2000 and really just understand the fight before he, he goes in. Miracle, he's playing so aggressive, so far pushed up, and they see him. They're pinging it, I'm out. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, indeed. Uh-oh. Miracle, did he send something's wrong? I mean, he's just running right now. Gonna send a fragment out to uh, attack the Tormentor to cancel any blinks potentially or anything like that, but of course, no Dragon Knight around here, but cute idea nonetheless, but Miracle gets himself out to safety. Takes so no, much to be able to make these moves. Just like Miracle's always walking that line. <laughs> it's so, so uncomfortable to cast. <laughs> His job is to push out the waves to, to keep the game going, right? There's an Aegis in play. Yeah. He actually quests exactly. to stay. If they had all waves, this DK would be putting illusions on the tower. Oh my they god, a thousand pings on the map. <laughs> They're looking. Did you see the amount of pings that just came down? Yep. Oh, Storm it's... jumping deep, looking in for the Watcher, looking to cut off Miracle once again. He's Miracle, just no TP them. available. Wait, he doesn't have a TP full stop. He just TP back from his previous endeavors, right? Like. 80,000. Let's see the blink fragment and didn't use it, but they have a creep wave. And it has the Aghanims there. They're hitting on the tier 2 top. Miracle, meanwhile, is skipping the wave. The Bowser has, yes. I believe, a Bissell. I feel like we do need to talk about Malik a little bit because I don't really think we've mentioned him at all. Um, he had the really second know. richest hero in the game. He's got BKB, Manta Style, Mage Slayer, Aghanim Scepter. This is a fat Dragon Knight, another core, just ready to roll the side of PSG quest and this hero is a beast in the late game so he's now knocking on the high ground miracle though going to cut all the waves possible I'll get the tower but that's gonna be it for now because they don't have a wave to work with at least not yet the next one is coming in miracle finishes off the abyssal blade which means no buyback available but maybe able to turn up to the next fight Aegis is gone on the face of boy but he's picked himself up a Lincoln spear so he's got another layer of protection what well, if he dies right now no buyback at their base and Malik Sure we've not spoke about him, but like you said, he's scaled beautifully into this game. Because of him, the Void doesn't have to show at the start of the fight. The DKB will be the one that will progress the towers all. They force Antimage back to base, and Miracle, he continues to play this game with just no cares, only plays on his own intuition, skipping waves, but you know, dancing along the tree line. On the other side is the enemy, on his side, he's farming the jungle, and he fully buys out for the Abyssal Blade, not even caring about the buyback. He wants to make that jump. He wants to find that that Void or Storm and try and get that kill. Sure, you need to pop a Lincolns first on both of them, but if they do, they can die solo to this uh, Anti-Mage. There's so much scaring to come out from both teams here. I don't even know what these late game fights are going to look like. New bouncing around. We We've not really seen a <laughs> yeah, fight, have true. we? No, we haven't. It's 15 and 8 right now, but it doesn't really feel like it. I think like a lot of these kills happen in the laning phase, and it's, like it's kind of been a chill time. I, I have not seen Little Friends, full stop. No, I have not, no. I mean, I'm sure Croaky has some Little Friends, but right now we're not seeing any oh, of the Little Friends. Oh, wait, no, never mind. I just figured out what's going on. He's, what's he, going he, on? he doesn't care. He doesn't even, I don't even think he, he cares about Little Friends at all. He just he just wanted to play Chen really badly. So he, he picked ah, Enchantress, built an Agdom Scepter, got himself a little creep army. Yep. If it had two charges, that would be pretty cool because he'd have been able to like steal both illusions from DK instantly. But that's not the case. It's just two total. Oh my god! 
the moment they see a, the anti-mage illusion on the bottom side of the map, they just draw immediately. And actually, they're biting him now. Oh, Matthew oh and God, Miracle, God, they're going to catch him. The Chronosphere comes down. Noob is nearby. Matthew, can he do anything? No, he cannot. He blinked away, so he's just going to TP himself out. Miracle has been caught 100 seconds out of the game. It was always going to be a possibility. But now, Enigma Galaxy backs against the wall. He doesn't have buyback. Surely if they click on him, they'll see the Abyssal Blade. There's no way he's that far. Here's your quest. They've, they've got to walk down the lane. They've, they've got to at least you know, poke out the potential idea of uh, does he have buyback or not. Again, we see everything they don't. So maybe in their eyes, they're like, he's farmed quite freely. Maybe he's that rich, but surely, surely really? they punish this. Crucially, um, the, the Brewmaster Illusions on the top side are actually able to kill off the wave, so... Yeah, bot wave. They're gonna have to wait one more wave coming through. It's, it's just slowing things down just a bit. The Terror Blade illusion as well, and no urgency from Quest at all here. Doesn't look like they're gonna force this, which is mm. Malik's giving it a good little tickle. But yeah, Magdor is up due to that illusion, and now it finally falls. Yeah. Right. They're walking up to the high ground, dead for 33. It's a long He's time. In the game. Bot barracks are gonna go down. Amy Galaxy starting to sweat just a little bit. Little Barracks. Now going to be the next target. FBZ could pop the Primal Split here and just slow things down, but he really wants to wait for his anti-mage to have a chance to get back into the game. But if Quest aren't careful, and they do let FBZ get off that split, throw someone up into the air, they might be able to buy enough time for the anti-mage to just naturally come back into the fight. Alec, Manta out, gets himself back. Oh, Dragon and Dragon action. Usually you've got to pay good money to see that. They do go down. Roki's dragon is stronger. Now we can shove that down the middle lane. ESG quest, 10k gold up. A lane and a half of barracks also going in their favor now as well. Chronosphere, 10 seconds so it's back up again. Oh, oh, the Galaxy are trying to force hex, something here. Hmm? He went for the back for the Hex on Sumo. He didn't go for the Wind Waker. They might have a Hex rule. They have the jump. Abyssal. Yeah, they are going to be able to catch the Storm, but there is a Chronosphere available, but he jumps away on Miracle, but TA2000 still chasing. Oh, Another Chronosphere oh is available. They're going to try and bring him down. Matthew's here, though. Lands asunder. Will it be enough? It won't. Miracle. Oh. He's gone again. TA2000. He has his number. He has his address. Dream League Season 23 is calling, but for PSG Quest, like, anti he farmed for everything. He got the first oh, stages, he died no. by his top. He then farms the entire map, get picked off by one Chrono, picked off by a second Chrono. Here's 2000, he struggled in the laning phase, but he itemized beautifully. And Noob, likewise, struggled just a little bit, but... Buy back on Matthew. What's gonna stop them? He means a whole lot. Uh, Sproink, that'll do it. Samael getting jumped right now. He's going to go down as well. No buyback. No buyback on Samael. They're going to keep on pushing. They're going to keep on pressuring. FBZ, no ultimate available. Looking like he might just go down as well. Nigma Galaxy. They farmed. They farmed. They looked so good. And now they call GG. It is yeah. over. It is over. But PSG Quest, they finally managed to pull it off. They get their spot at Dream League. They fight it out of Nigma Galaxy's hand. They earned it. And they will be your MENA team qualifying to join Falcons in Dream League Season 23. Huge congratulations to PSG Quest. They battle the way through and they absolutely deserve that slot. So many qualifiers. PSG Quest have just struggled. Falcons just holding down the region, not allowing anyone else to showcase the potential strengths of the MENA region. But finally, PSG Quest, they break through. And even when Falcons weren't here, Nigma they put on an absolute battle going straight all the way to a game five. And if only Nigma was just a little bit, you know, maybe cleaner in the executions. Of course, hindsight, it's easy for us to see all the big picture things, to see the things that maybe weren't going so well, but for the, the discipline for PSG Quest after how aggressive Nigma were being, the just the general position of Kuroki, the the miracle being ready to join fights, and they take away that Aegis, they continue farming, they play the map beautifully, and just two chronos on Antimage both both times in a row, not getting baited by this Aghanims and booking their way into Dream League season season 23. It is yeah, impressive impressive stuff from PSG Quest, and I can't 
speak because this grand final has been so long and convoluted, but <laughs> they've done it. They've qualified. Of course, bittersweet for, for, for all the Enigma fans who probably wanted to see them qualify, especially after that game four, 45,000 goal comeback, but it wasn't to be the case. You can come back in game four, but it doesn't matter. You need to win game five. And yeah, once again, PSG Quest, congratulations. They are going to be playing in the next Dream League and yeah, we'll finally get to showcase what they can do on the international stage after what nearly half a year of just being locked away in their region. Yeah, yeah, hidden away in a, in the Falcons' cupboard, but uh, finally get to come out and show what they can do. So uh, very exciting for this team, and I'm excited to watch them get some proper experience, you know, in this new stack and try to really cement themselves as a five man team, find their their footing, and start to bring some real games to the uh, the international uh, stage. So yeah, so very very happy for uh, PSG Quest, of course, to make it way through. Enigma Rock Galaxy also, you know, pretty sad to be so close and uh, get get knocked away at the last chance. But uh, yeah. that's how it goes. And, you know, mm -hmm. it was a volatile draft. And then in the end, which they tried to rely on, didn't really work out for the miracle into the faces void was just too difficult, too, too hard, such a big threat. He just couldn't keep it up for long enough. And uh, yeah, that will, uh, will result in them going down. Anything else? Anything else left to say? Tgov, it's, it's, it's been a long old day. So, uh, you know, I, I won't mind if you want to keep it short. Oh, I mean, it's been a long day, but again, Excited to see some new teams from the region showcase their stuff on the in the stage and uh, looking forward to season 23. That's it for, for us casting. We won't be probably doing anything else for this. So thanks for having us. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see you next time. Absolutely. See you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching, joining us for Dream League. And uh, big congratulations to PSG Quest for winning out the MENA qualifiers. Goodbye and good night. According to a friend, we're all shrinker wrapped in families and making ends meet stuck in jobs we'll never leave. I never want to be like that, so I hide.
you.